ready to match the stars. Bert Convey. Brett Summers. Jack Carter. Lucy Arnett. Richard Dawson. And then at Fabric as we play the star studded Big Money Match Game 73. And here's the host of Match Game 73, Gene Raver. Hello there. Oh, I see you all. A little goofy at this time. I think so. But it's going to help a lot. I hope so. I greet you, and I wish you well, and I know you're going to do your best. You have your bar mitzvah suit on, you <laughs> little <laughs> Yeah, I have my bar mitzvah suit on. Okay, let's say hello to this pretty lady, our current champion. Here's Georgiana Guy. <laughs> Georgiana has $100. She's won one game, and she did that just about as time expired last time. So now, in a moment or so, we're going to have a go at the big money, Georgiana, the super match where you could win $5,000. Are you ready for that? Yeah. I'm okay, ready. we're ready for that too. And we'll get to that right after we get to this. Okay, Georgiana guy here has won one game. She's got $100. Now she's going to have a go at the big money in the super match where she can win up to $5,000. Ready? Ready? Okay, here we go. Ready. We polled a previous studio audience and we got their best response to this air. Blank or air blank. Give you both accents. The answer given most often by that studio audience is worth $500 if you can match it, Georgiana. The second most frequent response, $250, and the third, $100. Now you can get three celebrities to help you, so start choosing one at a time and get their answers. Bert? Um, I would say um, airplane. Airplane is his. That's Jack? one. Who? Jack, Jack? Carter. I okay. was thinking of, uh, of uh, Airedale. Airedale is what yeah. you were thinking of, but what's your answer? Air gun. Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Only kidding. You want to say Airedale, you say? Airedale. Airedale is Jack Carter's Airedale. answer. All right, one more celebrity. Richard. Airport. Airport oh, is his. Biggie. Okay. Let's go there and get hijacked. So you've got Airplane, Airedale, and Airport. You can choose one of those or give us one of your own, but now we have to have an answer. Airplane. Airplane. Okay, that's the one that Bert gave you. Let's see if it's up there. Can we I are looking for airplane. For you no. want to give one for the heck of it? What? Air pollution? Well, that's, that's your opinion. Who knows? I have friends there. out there. That's right. You do have friends out there. Name two. The die <laughs> is cast. We are all set. We are looking for airplane. May we see the $100 response? Ah. There it is. Right off the bat. Airplane. Okay. So, you've got it, Georgiana. Now, may we uh, just check these other two answers. May we see the $250 response, if you please? Ah! Air pollution was up there. The one that the next said was uh, her answer. See? All right, let's see if the $500 response shows up on that board over there. May we see it, please? Air conditioner. Actually, you did very well, Georgiana. You really got it. All right, now that means you're going to play for 10 times $100 or $1,000. And to collect the money, you got to match one celebrity on a head-to-head -head basis. Please pick one now. Jack. Okay, Jack. You get ready to write? Right. You face me if you want. Here is the $1,000 question, Jack. Please write your response to this. Blue blank. Blue blank. Okay. Jack is ready. Now we call for your answer, Georgiana. How do you fill in the blank? Blue. Blue Danube. Blue Danube. The well-known song. Okay, Jack, for $1,000, may we see your answer? Oh, it's a shame I was never in the old Vienna. No. But if, but if my character flew over the Danube, it'd be a bluebird. Bluebird. Bluebird of happiness. I'm so... Didn't bring any happiness to you, but your <laughs> cash total is up to $200 now, Georgiana. You're still our champion, and you're going to play against another player. Let's meet that player right now.
partner wishing Tom Garnell a luck. Nice to have you with us, Tom. Good luck to you. Would you please tell us about yourself? Yes, I, I will. I'm married to a wonderful girl by the name of Judy, and I'm an elementary school teacher and a graduate student at Cal State Northridge. Okay. Now, you know what happens here. You and Georgiana will be answering questions, trying to match our six celebrities. You'll have two chances at that at the end of the second round. The one who's done it most often will be the winner. Gets $100 and the right to go on to the super match where you can win over $5,000. Okay, here we go with round number one. Tom, would you please make a selection? Yes, I'd like to choose B. B it is. Here it is. Everyone plays. John said... This party dip tastes awful. And Mary re replied, That isn't party dip, you dummy. It's blank. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like me to repeat it for the West Coast? Oh, I don't know. You all understand it? Yes, you do. Do you understand it, Tom? Yes, I do. Okay, we'll just wait until they're finished and get a response from you. I wish I did. <laughs> John said this party dip tastes awful, and Mary replied, that isn't party dip, you dummy, it's blank. Go now, give us an answer. These people down here are all finished, they're ready. What are you really? doing? Well, the they're parties? smarter in the that first row. That's a long, love. I'm hurrying, I'm hurrying, I'm hurrying. Okay, they are now all finished, so Tom, we call for your answer. This Let's isn't try. party dip, you dummy, it's... Glue. Glue. <laughs> glue. Okay. Well, yeah, you know, some of that white glue, that could look like mayonnaise or something like that. That's uh, not a bad answer, Bert. What do you say? Well, I said sour cream. Sour the cream. Yourself. I thought it was well, nothing. All right. What's no that? match there. We're looking for glue, Brett. What? I couldn't think of anything at all. I put cat food. Cat My food. My husband once ate cat that's food. That's a good answer, I think. Yeah, that's okay. good. But he wasn't smart. That's why I left him. How dare you say ex-husband in front of a Klugman fan? <laughs> Go ahead, Jack. Well, uh, the only uh, party dip I ever dipped into and was a mistake it. was when it went to mayonnaise. 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 Plain yellow and blue. Okay. No match yet. We're looking for glue. Lucy, may we see yours? I don't know, Tom, but have you tried any of my cooking? I said glue, too. Glue! Great. There it is. Okay. Mr. Dawson. It's not dip, it's shoe polish. Shoe polish. With that, the guy died. Yes. Sad end, but a beautiful finish. Go! <laughs> Go! Oh, if you please, we're a friendly no, what party. What did he say? He's going into business for himself. <laughs> Lynette, maybe <laughs> see you. No. No, no, no. Oh. Nobody said it. It's getting anything. hostile with the audience, but it's oh. all right. Go right ahead. Well, I just have a simple, plain old, everyday, or, everyday ordinary... Why don't I be quiet? <laughs> Dog food is yours. So you scored once with glue, Tom, and now let's see how Georgiana does with this. Everyone participates. Are you all ready? Present. Yes. Ready. The Sultan had 200 wives in his harem, and they all blanked. Sultan had 200 wives in his harem, and they all blanked. I understand you went blanked with an E-D. Does that mean our word has to end in E-D, too? Yes. Oh, it does. It past tense. Past tense. Past tense, exactly. yes. Exactly. And they all... Sad yes. end, but a beautiful finish. <laughs> You thinking about that, Georgiana? Yeah, I'm thinking. Okay, you think about it. Sad end, but a beautiful fit. <laughs> Sad end, but a beautiful fit. I got it. The more you think about it, the nicer it becomes. Right. Are you ready to uh, insert? Okay. I guess. Everybody all sit over there. Okay, now we get your answer, Georgiana. May we hear from you? Uh, danced. And they all danced. The Sultan had 200 wives in his harem, and they all danced. Okay. All right, Bert, what do you say? I said he had 200 wives and they all ran away. All ran away. <laughs> yes. All right, Brett. Do you realize that every time Bert Convey and I open our mouths, we reveal our deeply personal relationships with our mates? What is that? They all hated him. They all hated him. I didn't say that. They all hated him. Ran away. Him. Well, yeah, ran away. Is same that thing. It is not. You want to fight about this? <laughs> no, not, no fighting. Let's get to Jack. Cotton. He used to send for them, you know, and there was a guy who used to bring the wife to him, and he died from running back and forth. Uh. So, you know, it's not making love that can kill you. It's the chasing after it. <laughs> but they all loved him. They all loved him.
Bob did. Okay, oh, no match yet. We're looking funny. for the word okay. dance. <laughs> and his harem all the... Uh, yes. Oh, um, it took me a long time to come up with this, so I hope you appreciate it. They all ate like horses. <laughs> they all ate like horses. <laughs> Big lady. I'm really sorry. 200 wives. Lump of sugar in the afternoon. Yes. She's on a diet. And a carrot thing. every three miles. Hey. So they all cheated. <laughs> and. Yeah. And. 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 And what? And. and he threw them in a vat of varnish and they died. A sad end. But, but a beautiful oh, finish. Had 200 wives in his harem, and they all blinked. They all cheered because they loved him. They all loved him. Oh, so, Georgiana, you didn't score with that. At the end of round one, it's one and nothing in favor of Tom Garnella, our challenger. We'll go to round two right after this. Here we go on with match game 73. We've concluded round one. Tom Garnella, our challenger, is ahead. Now let's go to round two and uh, ask you to make a selection, Tom. Let's try B again. B again. Now, last time you matched Lucy, so you'll be trying to match everyone but Lucy this time. Yes, thank you. Oh. Julian said, if there's one thing I can't stand, it's a fat blank. I hate fat blank. Julian said this. Julian said, if there's one thing I can't stand, it's a fat blank. I agree with him. hysterical lady in the third row. Okay, the net is now ready, so we'll call on Tom and get his response to this. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's a fat girl. Girl. All right. He's straightforward and... Go ahead, Bert. Much straighter than I. I said a fat broad. I believe that... Girl, girl, okay. one more. girl is his answer. What did he say? He said girl. And what did you say? I said broad. Broad. Well, I encompassed everything in life. I said hooker. <laughs> a fat I, that, that, I thought, figured that was what the lady in the third row was like. <laughs> what did you say, Jack? Well, far be it from me to fool around with a fat lady. Because a friend of mine married the fat tattooed lady from the circus. And now he's got heat in the winter, shade in the summer, and moving pictures all year round. <laughs> Dawson. Present. Yes. A fat head. Uh -huh. fat head. Oh. Or a plump toity. Uh, all right. You were saying. Yes. Well, I'm on a diet, and my mind runs in one direction, and I wasn't as specific. I was more specific than he was. I was just thinking of a fat. <laughs> you were. Oh, that's a comment. Yes. No, that's it's just in the That's the buzzer. Oh. The buzzer. <laughs> so, what do we do up there? You got uh, two more, Tom. You're you're up to three now. It's an echo. In now, as we go to the end of the uh, round here, Georgiana, I remind you, you must match three celebrities and achieve a tie to stay in the game. Four, however, will win it for you. Everyone plays. Everyone plays. Mike said, <laughs> Enid's laugh drives me crazy. Enid's? L-A-P? <laughs> no, no. Laugh Mike said, Enid's laugh. Oh, laugh. Oh, laugh. Drives yeah. me crazy. Yeah. It sounds like blank. <laughs> His laugh sounds like laugh. 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 Her laugh. L A U G H. Enid's laugh. And it's Enid's her laugh. Yeah. Enid is a girl. Oh, thank you. I didn't know Mike that. is the fella. Is Mike the, is the fella. Enid is a girl. And Mike says that Enid Enid's the girl laugh, laugh drives me crazy. It sounds like blank. It sounds like, okay. <laughs> Would you repeat that question, please? <laughs> There's an album coming out on it. <laughs> okay, the bottom tier is ready. We're waiting for Burton Jack. I can't go. Go along. Now we're waiting for Burton. Oh, this is all about. Well, well, no, maybe silly, silly. silly. All right, they had a little trouble thinking of one there. Did you have any trouble thinking of one there? Yeah, a little you bit. You did? Yeah. Did you come up with one? Yeah. What is it? Hyena. It sounds like a hyena. Okay, that's your answer. You need three to achieve a tie and stay in the game. Okay, Bert. That's a very good answer, hyena. Very good laughing. I, I said Woody the Woodpecker. How Woody about? the Woodpecker. <laughs> there. You know that one. Yeah, right. Brett? No? 
No, I have something, and what? I don't want any quibbling about how it's spelled, and okay. I don't want any remarks. Spelling doesn't matter. And I here. don't want any. I don't want to have the board come it's up. It's only a half-hour show. Sure. 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 When you get to it, I don't know how anybody spells Iena, but that's how I spell it. Hey, you got one there, Georgiana, Jack. A hyena is an animal that laughs all the time and has sex once a year. And what he's got to laugh about, I don't know. That's me, that's me! <laughs> so there it is. Three Why to two. One her? more. And you stay in the game. Lucy. Well, I know her a lot better than all the rest of you, and she has a laugh just like a foghorn. <laughs> a foghorn. Okay. Richard? She has a laugh just like she's laying an egg. <laughs> all right. Now, you must match the square one to achieve the tie. Lynette, may we see it, please? Oh, well, I've been sitting next to Richard too long. A cackling a hen. A cackling hen. So we've got a new winner. Congratulations, Tom Darnella. Okay, Tom. Congratulations to you. We've got to say goodbye to Georgiana. She leaves with $200 together with our thanks for being on Match Game 73. Goodbye, Georgiana. We'll get back to you, Tom, right after we finish this. Okay, here we go. This is the first time you've been up here, right? Right. Now you've got the $100. You're going to have to go with the big money here in the super match, Tom. Fine. Where you can win a lot of money, $5,000. We polled a previous studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Raw blank. The answer given most often by that audience is worth $500 if you can match it and the second 250 third 100 Now, you're allowed to get some help from celebrities, three specifically, so start choosing one at a time. I'd like to start off with Bert. I'd like to start off with Bert. Never mind. <laughs> uh, let's start off with raw meat. Okay, fine. Let's uh, try Richard. Okay. Raw vegetables. So we got raw meat. Call me in the morning. Raw. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? And because Lucy got me off to a good start, I want to include her. Oh, thank you. I say rawhide. Mm -hmm. Rawhide. Okay, so you got raw meat, raw vegetables, and rawhide. You may use one of those or one of your own if you like. But we need the answer now. Yeah. Let's go with rawhide. Yeah, that's good. Rawhide. Yes, that's right, Tom. Good. Are you letting the audience influence you with that applause? No, rawhide is one of two that were mentioned that I had thought before I called on anybody. And that, with their help, though. You're a very thoughtful guy. Okay. We're looking for rawhide. May we see the $100 response? Raw carrot. One thing that audience said. Haven't found it yet. We're looking for rawhide. May we see the $250 response? It'll be here. Raw meat is up there, and that's one that Bert gave you. It's gonna be nice. Okay, third and last chance, Tom. Look at the rawhide. Here is the $500 response. Yes. Rawhide! That's the one Lucy gave you. And you've got the $500 now in the audience match. Uh, now you'll be playing for 10 times that amount, or $5,000. And in order to collect it, you've got to match one celebrity on a head-to-head -head basis. So pick one celebrity now, please. I'm sure you know who I'm going to choose. Lucy. Oh. Okay, Lucy, you get ready to write. Hard Tom, failure. you face me. And I'll get the question. Here it is. Worth $5,000. <laughs> write down your answer to this, Lucy. Oh. Bob blank. Bob Blank. Uh. Okay, she's finished hers, Tom. Now we ask you to fill in that blank. Bob Blank. Smith. Oh. Okay, Lucy, for $5,000. May we see your answer? I really, I don't believe that. Because I wish I'd said it. I said Bobcat. <laughs> Bobcat is her answer. I'm sorry. Well, I really Smith. didn't think of Smith. Bob Hope is his up there. They're right off really the top of my head. Okay, Tom, you've still got your $600. And you're going to meet another challenger and be our current champ and play another game. Here comes your challenger now. Elaine Benner. Hey, Elaine. Step back up there. Bob. Uh -huh. All right, 
Wait, Elaine, would you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, I'm from Woodland Hills. I'm married. I have two beautiful children, and I'm a real estate salesman. I bet you have beautiful children. We'll get back to you in a moment, but first, we've got to get to this. Here it is. Hello there. Oh, <laughs> all right. We don't have time to start a game, oh. but uh, Elaine and Tom will be back with us next time, and uh, you're two good players, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. As we will, you beautiful people, we thank you very, very much for being with us. You gave us a grand time. Well, really nice. enjoyed it. Thank you, Gene. When we get together thank next you, time, Gene. we'll have this galaxy of stars. Maury Amsterdam, <laughs> Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley. Loretta Swift, Richard Dawson, and Ruta Lee. Team Rayburn saying so long for match game 73. Today's consolation prizes are a West Block, direct reading digital dial light alarm clock, wood grain finish lighter dial, backed by years of experience, West Box, Italian Industries Company, and two St. Croix fishing rods. This four and one rod easily converts for spinning, spin casting, and fly fishing, made of lightweight tubular fiberglass. And a generous supply of frosty root beer. It has a delightfully refreshing taste. It's cold brewed. That's frosty. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 73, a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. Stay tuned for Secret Storm next over most of these CBS stations. Get ready to match the stars. Bill Daly. Brett Summers. Jack Carter. Judy Carr. Richard Dawson. And Fanny Flagg. As we play the star-studded big money match game 73. And now here's the host of match game 73. Okay, thank you very much. Got a lot of friends there, haven't you, Johnny Olson? Thank you for showing up today or any day. Hello there. Hello there. Hello there. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what? Are, where, yeah, where did that right. come from, and why are you doing that? I don't know. I I thought I'd go somewhere else and start all over again. <laughs> Oh, gosh, it's him. Oh, it's him, yes. Yeah. He is the one. All right, is everybody ready to have a go at it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I mean the game here. Let us welcome our two players here, Sandy Dickinson and Brian Bradford. Hello there. Brian's the current champ. He's won one game. He has $200 to his credit. And uh, we just had a chance to meet Sandy last time as uh, time expired. You want to tell us a little bit about yourself all over again, Sandy? Okay, I'm from Riverside, and a mother of two, and my husband goes to college. Your husband goes to college? Yeah. What's he studying? Sociology. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, that's Sandy Dickinson. We're going to start this game right after we start this message for you. Here we go. I'll push a button, reveal two questions, and ask the challenger to make a selection. A. Sandy wants A, and if you're all ready, we'll begin. Ready. Oh, yes. Tied one. <laughs> Marvin said to the acupuncture specialist, <laughs> Dr. Wong, you can do anything you want, but don't stick any of those needles in my blank. <laughs> I say if I were in your position. <laughs> well, I'm not in your position. <laughs> all right, we're waiting for Brett. Oh, you're always waiting for me. I'm sick and tired of this attack. Very well. Okay. 
Everybody's ready, and now we'll call on Sandy Dickinson, Marvin said to the acupuncture specialist, Dr. Wong, you can do anything you want, but don't stick any of those needles in my... Eye. In my eye. That would hurt, wouldn't it? And it would sting and be very bad. All right, Bill, what do you say? Well, I mean, to clarify this, uh, meaning the doctor sticking in the doctor, I say, don't stick anything in my Wong. <laughs> It takes two Wongs to make a white. That's right. I think I turned the Wong way on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with the, with the, uh, I said, don't stick anything in my navel. Oh, that would be bad. Would you? Would let all the salt out. Do you want to catch my dimples? Yeah. <laughs> we got it. Okay, Jack. But, uh, it was Marvin at Dr. Wong's, right? Marvin. It was Marvin Schwartz said, don't put a needle in my tushy. <laughs> Than a hey. White and Judy Card. Well, this could mean Tushy Two in my prize. In your prize. Yeah. Oh, okay, kind of all right. Whatever it means, it means. Richard? I think that's from the film The Prize and the Passion. I said ear. In my ear. Because they'll okay. break your earrings. I, hate I is Sandy's answer. What's yours? I said, please do not stick a needle in my wonton. <laughs> Wonton. Wonton. That's right. Okay. That's wrong, wasn't it? So, Sandy, that was yours, and now, Brian, this is yours. You listen carefully now. Uh, you listen carefully, too. <laughs> when the astronaut's wife touched the strange rock he brought back from Mars, she became blank. <laughs> Astronaut's wife touched the strange rock he brought back from Mars. She became blank. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now we'll call on Brian. When the astronaut's wife touched the strange rock he brought back from Mars, she That's became wild. turned on. Turned on. Brian says turned on. She became turned on. Uh, what do well, you say, Bill? <laughs> I say uh, limp. Limp. Too, Bill. That's true. <laughs> I won't say it. <laughs> All right, Brett. Well, I had two answers, but I'm only using one, actually. Sexy. She became sexy when she touched well, the rock. Well, what about, what's his name? Yeah, it's a turn on. on. Sexy's oh, a turn on. on. Yeah, you have to fight every that. step of the way, Brian. Okay, it's not easy to do this show. Strange chemicals on the moon. When you step in a rock or a crater, one becomes sterile. Oh, I see. Judge oh. how old he is. I ain't going there. <laughs> Well, I, a strange rock. She became strange. So, she became strange. Yes. Yes, a strange Whatever rock. Whatever that means. Maybe <clears throat> weird. Okay, Richard. Well, I agree with Jack. Uh, sterile, which is never having to say you're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> How about it there, Fanny? Well, I don't know. Fine minds. I said sterile. Well Ooh. done. Yes. Okay. So it's oh, one to nothing favor the champ. And we'll go to round two right after we go to these messages for you. Here we go with round two. I'll push the button, reveal the two questions, and ask Sandy to make a selection. A again. A again for Sandy. And since she matched no one last time, everyone will play this time. Yes. When the ventriloquist retired from show business, he blanked his dummy. <laughs> Don't think too long, Bill. <laughs> Trust your first instinct. I can't. <laughs> when the ventriloquist <laughs> retired from show business, he blanked his dummy. Come along, Bill. All right. Now, do you want to be wrong again? And don't cry either, Bill. Try for this week, sweetheart. And you think I'm slow. He's dreaming of Jeannie. All right. I don't even know. Ready over there? Means. Put it in the slot. <laughs> there. Just put Whatever it you want. Put, put, put it in the slot. Yeah, there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sandy, when the ventriloquist retired from show business, he blanked his dummy. Stuffed. He stuffed his dummy? <laughs> you sure about that? I can't change it. <laughs> I thought the dummy was already stuffed, but that's your answer. It can't be. You put your hand What's in. What's that? Well, no, you know, they, 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 they're already... Okay. Uh, she didn't give us... Well, what is your answer there? I put the... Uh, 
What did I put? I can't read my own writing. Oh, it's upside, upside down. down. That's right. why I can't read it. That's fine. I put he sawed him, right? He sawed his dummy. Yeah, sawed him. I sawed my dummy. <laughs> All right. I sawed, I uh, seen, I saw. Why don't you take it out of that side? Very good. Very good. What do you say? Actually, uh, I thought you stuffed your bird. <laughs> but you, he killed his dummy. Really? Very hostile, and a dummy was so good to him. Jack? <laughs> I'll just leave it up there. It was a lady ventriloquist. It was? The dummy was looked like Cary Grant, so she married the dummy. She married the dummy. Why not? You can't talk back that way. Yeah. I've heard that phrase. She married the dummy. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, Judy? I put packed. Packed him away. Packed him? Yes. All right. For a moment, I thought in that oil. had match. Yes, he what? Packed him in oil. Packed him in oil. Very exciting. <laughs> Kept swimming up. No, he buried his dummy. Buried the dummy. Do you uh -oh. clap for a burial? You disgust me. Yeah. <laughs> Poor devil. Works so hard. Almost had his own show. Now, I don't want to talk Sandy, about. you must match Fanny Flagg to stay in the game and achieve a tie. Fanny, stuffed is the word she's looking for. Yes. Well, actually, to kill a dummy, you must burn a dummy. Burn them. So, burn. Brian wins another game. Congratulations, Brian. Come down. Okay, there you are. Stand by for a moment. Congratulations to you, sir. Sandy, we've got a gift for you, together with our thanks for being with us on Match Game 73. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Sandy Dickinson, ladies and gentlemen. Goodbye. Goodbye. Now, Ryan, you're up to $300. You just won another hundred for winning that game, and now you're going to have a go at over $5,000 here in the Super Match. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. We polled a recent studio audience, Brian. We got their best response to this. Snow blank. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 to you if you can match it. Second most frequent response, $250. And the third, $100. Which three celebrities would you like to get a little help from? Fanny. How do you feel in that blank? Snow... Flake. Snow flake, she said. Um, Richard. This is nothing personal. I know you White. Right. Snow white. And Judy. Can I say the same? I, I'd say Snow White. Do you want a different well, no, one? We, we you want, want, want a different one? Snowflake, yes. Snow, <laughs> Snow, Cake, Snow White, uh, Snow Cap. Snow Cap, okay. So you've got Snowflake, Snow White, and Snow Cap. You may uh, choose one of those, Brian, or give us one of your own. What would you like to do? I would choose Snow White. I would choose Snow White. All right, he's chosen Snow White. No, no, That's the answer we're looking for, the one that uh, Richard gave you. Here we go. May we see the $100 response? Snowman. Hey, that's a very good one. Snowman okay. is an island. Is that your, yeah. Snowman's an island, right. Uh, let's see what I have to put up with. You only come here once a month. But I'm here every day, practically. All right, we're looking for Snow White. May we see the $250 response? Snow White it is. There you go. You're welcome. A little help from Richard. What do you think is under the last one? Snowball? Blind, blind. All right, here is the $500 response. Snowball! Oh, okay. Snowball in hell. So now, Brian, you've won uh, $250. That's yours, irrevocably. You play for 10 times that amount, or $2,500 now. Uh, to collect that amount, You've got to match one celebrity on a head-to-head -head basis. Has to be exact. Which one will it be? Uh, I'll stick with Richard now. Going to stick with Richard. All right, would you stand over here a little closer to me, right there. And Richard, you're ready to write, I see. So here's the $2,500 question. Pocket blank. Pocket blank. All right, he's finished. Now, Brian, we need your response. How do you fill in that blank? Pocket book. Pocket book. You think he's right? They think you're right. All right, Richard, for $2,500, may we see your response? Uh, for that amount of money, that's what I wanted you to have, and you would have had pocket money. Pocket money! That's a good answer? Okay. Oh, now, just a minute. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, Brian, you're still the champ. You're going to play another game, meet another challenger. But first, we've got to meet these messages head on. Here we go. We're ready to start another game. And to do that, we have to meet a new player. So let's say hello to Lisa Zarr. Hi, Lisa. Hi. 
Who are you looking at out there? Oh, anyone special? No, just waving to all the nice people. Oh, that, well, we wish you all the best of luck, and they wish you well, too. Where are you from, Lisa? I'm from San Pedro, California. And? And, and, and I'm married for almost two years, and I have a wonderful husband, and I'm a service representative for the telephone company. Okay. Well, you sound very happy. I am. Good. All right, you know how to play this game, so let's begin. We ask you as a challenger to make a selection. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to pick A. A is what she wants. This is a new game, so everyone will play here. Here's a little poem for you. You ready for a little poem? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's sweet. String beans are thin, tomatoes are fat. Rose was a stripper who danced with a... What? <laughs> it's still a sweet poem. Yes, it's a sweet poem. Would you like to, <laughs> like to read it now, yourself? don't take as long as you did last time. I'd be glad to read it again, Bill. Awesome. No, it's okay. I don't know what we're going to do with him. <clears throat> I like that song. That's what it takes me so long. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now they're all set. Lisa, all right. string beans are thin, tomatoes are fat. Rose was a stripper who danced with a... With a strap. With a strap. Right. Pow, 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 pow. <laughs> okay, strap is her. And that's all just a strap. Uh, well, isn't that enough? Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 All right. What do you say, Bill? Uh, dance with a cat. Rose is a cat. Man who's dancing with cat dancing. Yeah. Right. Man, the girl who loves cat dancing. Brett? String beans are thin, tomatoes are fat. Rose was a stripper, I wanted to say it properly, who danced with a cat. Who danced with a cat. So we have two cats in a row, Jack. Yeah, no man. one will say kitten, <laughs> pussy, feline, little warm things, so I said cat also. Okay, so we got three cats for you, Lisa. What do you say? Well, <clears throat> I'm truly weird. I said boa constrictor. A boa constrictor. Oh, that's good rhyming. Listen, there is a lady who does that. Right. Zoria. Yeah. I know. You that's what, what made me think Cat. of it. Just, I just have to tell you, failed poetry, but otherwise... <laughs> yes. <you're laughs> doing wonderfully. Dance with a hat. With a hat. A see-through job it was. Okay, I got the idea. All right, Fanny. It took me a long time because I couldn't figure out how to spell it, but I finally did. Cat. Cat. <laughs> Is that right? Strap was hers and she didn't now. match at all, so now we'll go... To Brian's question, which is, Snow White screamed, Help! An elephant is blanking on my seven dwarfs. <laughs> Did you hear Snow White scream that? I heard, I heard Snow White scream. She was Something. in pain when she screamed it. I would imagine. Help! An elephant is blanking on my seven dwarfs. They're ready over there, so Brian, fill in the blank. I'm ready, but I'll say sitting. Sitting. <laughs> he says sitting on my seven dwarfs. What do you say, Bill? Uh, well, Gene, I said an elephant is uh, tinkling. <laughs> See, I always say we get new players, <laughs> and Brett rips them up. You! Let he among you who is without... Let he who cast the first seat <laughs> never know. That's right. You've been now sitting next to Brett too long. <laughs> All right, Brett. I said sitting. Sitting. Oh. Yeah, let's hear it for Brett. <laughs> Two mice used to play with an elephant. Straight. One day, one mouse comes to the zoo, and the other little mice is crushed and bloody. And he says to the elephant, what'd you do? He says, I only wanted to trip him. <laughs> I said sitting too. Sitting. Not that Brian will ever pick on me. I'm up here, Brian. Okay, Try to remember that. For you, Brian and Judy. What did you say? Um, stepping. Stepping. It's an S. No, it doesn't match sitting. No, it and doesn't. Richard, here we go. Said the elephant's sitting on my dwarfs. And <laughs> said, well, I'll just slide them under the door. <laughs> sitting. Sitting. Another match, Brian. Yeah, of course, if you don't like flat warts. And Fanny. I'm sorry, I thought you said sitting on my warts. I, I, I said stepping. Stepping. <laughs> well, stepping and sitting did not match. Did and uh, Brian, you've done three there. And now we'll go to round two. At the end of round one, I point out the score is three to nothing. Favor the champ and ask the challenger to make a selection. All right, I'm going to pick A again. A again. A Here it is, Lisa. 
Smokey the bear got careless one night and set his blank on fire. <laughs> Smokey the Bear got careless one night, set his blank on fire. Come along. Why don't we tape it and give him a version of it? We don't leave any family. <laughs> you notice that Daly works weekly? Okay. So, they're all ready, and Lisa, we call on you for your response. Smokey the Bear got careless one night and set his... Wife on fire. His wife on fire. What? I didn't even know he was married. I'm... Never seen his wife there. Wife is her answer. Bill, what's yours? Uh, <laughs> can you read that blanket on fire? His I don't know what that yeah. means. Slept with a blanket. A security blanket. Yeah. Okay, Brett. Don't try and explain it, dear. But I don't get it just myself. Just go right. Just put it in the Throw slot, sweetheart. Are you sure these two are married? I said, well, give us a little time. I said hat because it rhymes with cat. But smoking bear does wear a hat, you know. right. Yeah. Set his hat on fire. Hat. Yeah, he wears a little... Uh, Hat there. I was in the woods with Brett when it happened. <laughs> <laughs> she thought I was Klugman. That's why you'd never tell. That's right. So he rubbed two Boy Scouts together and he set his little smoky hat on fire. All right. Now, uh, Lisa, you must match the three remaining celebrities to achieve a tie and stay in the game. Judy. I said set his tail on fire. Tail, that does not match. So, Brian, you win another game. Congratulations. Sir, and to you, it's been a short meeting, but a very pleasant one for us. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. Thanks good. a lot, everybody. All right, Lisa, yeah. a gift for you backstage. Many thanks for being with us in Match Game 73. Goodbye, Lisa. Now, you know how this goes. We polled a recent studio audience, got their best response to this. Blank free. And, you know, the 500, 250, and 100, and a little help from the celebrities, choose them one at a time. Okay, let's see. I picked Jack Carter this time. Uh, born free. That's enough. Somebody called on That's me. Enough. I don't believe it. I he thought it was out picked. of town. Okay, okay, another one? Um, I picked Bill. Bill. Uh, carefree. Carefree. Okay, that's good. And Fanny. I think home free. Home free. So you got born free, <laughs> carefree, and home free. You may choose one of those or one of your own. Oh. Born free. Born free is the answer he's chosen. Let me see the $100 response. Home free is up there, the one Fanny gave you. Here we go, looking for born free, the $250 response. Tax free is a, a pretty good answer there. Looking for born free, third and last chance, Brian. Here is the $500 response. Born free! Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Okay. So that puts you up to $1,150, and you got to stand by now because we got to do a little business here, and we'll get back to you. That's all the time we have today. Gene Edwards saying so long for Match Game 73. Join us next time. Today's consolation prizes are Mr. Coffee. Makes filtered restaurant-style drip coffee in less than 30 seconds. You'll love the coffee Mr. Coffee makes. And paper-made executive pen and pencil set featuring the paper-made PowerPoint pen that pumps ink into the point so it writes at any angle. And rice aroni, the big flavor side dish is so quick, so easy, saute and simmer to flavor perfection. Rice aroni, the San Francisco treat. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 73, a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. This is Match Game 74, production number 0183. Air date to be announced, VTR 32974. Get ready to match the stars. Alan Ludden. Brett Summers. Charles Nelson Riley. Joyce Boulevard. Richard Dawson. And Fanny Flagg. As we play the star stud at Big Money, Match Game 74. And now, here's the host of Match Game 74, Gene Rubber.
That's well, we're ready. ready. Yeah. Yeah. That's an epic. Brett. Okay. Brett is not ready. It's going funny. Have you noticed? Go I heard they were going to do a remake of Gone with the Wind. Yes. So I had Edie fix my hair this way. Looks pretty Does she look like Mary Ann Morgan to you? No, I yeah. look like Vivian Lee in the good days. <laughs> <laughs> you look like Clark After the Gable fire. on the bad days, right? <laughs> what did you say? I th he said you look like Clark Gable on the bad days. <laughs> 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 No. Nice. He's sweet. He's okay. Well, you look to me as if you're all ready. So we'll greet our celebrity over here on this life. side. Here's our current champ, Robin Barrett. Yeah. How are you, Robin? Yeah. Robin won one game, and she's got $100 to her credit, and she's about to have a go at over $5,000 in our big money super match here. Are you ready for that? I sure am. Okay, we'll do that right after we do a little business with you, so you stick around for that. Here we go. Robin Barrett. Let's see how you're going to do here now in the big money super match. You know how this goes. We polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Blank Arthur. Now, the answer that audience gave most often is worth $500 to you if you match it. If you match the next one, you get $250. If you match that bottom one, you get $100. A little help is allowed from our celebrities. Choose three, one at a time. Richard. Richard Dawson. How do you fill that in there? King Arthur. King Arthur, he says. To the king. To the king. Let's fight the level of horse. All right, sir. Right. Don't get carried away. Yeah, he is British, you know. <laughs> All right. Alan. Alan, what's his name? After King, President. Right, Let's try President. All right. President? Who was President, president Arthur? Arthur? Well, he was president of the Rotary Club in Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> president Arthur. Poor Betty White. I never president. thought I'd feel sorry for her. <laughs> That's your answer, President, president Arthur. No, I can't. I only that. He voted for her. <laughs> Me, I was so convinced it was King Arthur. Yeah. I haven't got a, a Lord Arthur. I'm afraid a president. that won't yeah. wash out. Yes, yes, sir. President okay, Arthur. President Arthur is the answer that <laughs> we have to go with. Yeah, and that's, that's it. All right, one more. Kinds of Arthurs. Joyce. Oh, I'm so glad you asked me because I have two children named Mary MacArthur and Charles MacArthur, so I have to go with MacArthur. Well, as in general, not Mary and Charles. MacArthur MacArthur is what you want to say. <laughs> yes. Any MacArthur. Any MacArthur. Yeah. Could be like Sam MacArthur, MacArthur or Sam. President How MacArthur. How about my dear friend B? Okay. President okay. MacArthur. All right. right. <laughs> so you've got uh, King oh. Arthur, MacArthur, and President <laughs> Arthur. <laughs> 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 now that's a great set of choices. Uh, you've got two and a half yeah. answers there. <laughs> you can choose one of those or give us one of your own if you like, but we call for an answer now. King. King. All right. We are looking for King Arthur. May we see the $100 response, sir? President! B. Arthur. B. Arthur. That brilliant actress, B. Arthur, who plays Ma. And a friend of yours, yes. All right, we're still looking for King Arthur. Is he under the $250 response? President. No, MacArthur is, though. No. That's, that's the one that Joyce gave you. Very good. Well... You're getting close, so this may be it. Hold on to your hat. Ready? All right, King Arthur, Sir Lancelot here calling. Are you under the $500 response? Yes! yes. Think of the president, Arthur. I don't know. That audience was They've never been to Seattle. That's right. <laughs> okay, so it's King Arthur it is for $500 for you. That means you're now playing for 10 times that amount or... $5,000. Now, to collect the $5,000, you must match one celebrity head-to-head. -head. It has to be an exact match. Choose one now, if you please. Richard. Richard again gets ready to write. You face me. Here is the $5,000 question, Richard. Happy blank. Happy blank. All right, he's finished. Now we want to know how you fill in that blank. Happy blank.
Birthday. You say birthday? Okay, the audience seems to think that that is a good choice. We'll find out if you match Richard now by asking him to expose his card. May we see your response, sir, for $5,000? There's a big hit TV show. <laughs> yeah, I mean, called Happy Days, which was, of course, before I was born. So I wrote Born Day or Birthday. <laughs> Congratulate you, Robin. You now have a total of $5,600, and in a moment or so, you'll play another game after we pass along this message of interest to one and all. Here it is. GSN presents... Gene Rivers! Someone showed me a single-spaced, typewritten list of all the celebrities who had been on Match Game, and it's a formidable list. Betty White, Burt Reynolds, Kitty Carlisle, Joe Garagiola, Steve Allen, you know, we had them all. <laughs> Stay tuned for more of that 70s hour on GSN. Everybody came and bowed and paid their respect and kissed my ring. Today's Constellation Prizes are the Gemini All Four Sweeper by Vistel. It sweeps any surface you can walk on right up to the baseboard. No cords or attachments required. Brown Vistel. And the Incinerator Hot Water Dispenser gives you 190 degree water at your kitchen sink like having a tea kettle always ready from Incinerator. And Profile with its own great flavor from a special formula of cracked cleaning wheat germ just right for toast. Profile, it's a matter of taste. There will be more challenges to the stars when Match Game 74 continues in just a blank. Now, we're going to start another game. To do that, we've got to welcome a new player, and we do so with a great deal of pleasure. Here is Michael Herbs. Thank you. Hi, Michael. Pretty good, Gene. Where are you from? From Los Angeles on the local phone. You are? Yep. Michael is a local fella from Los Angeles here. Tell us a little more about yourself. Well, I'm a communications consultant for a Fortune 500 company, and uh, married, have two kids. Yep. Angela and Kenny, and they're probably watching. Angela's nine, and Kenny's eight. Yeah. yeah. Hi, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Do they like this show? Love it. They watch it often? They think you're the greatest. Well. How many matches? <laughs> <laughs> well, I thank you for that. Good luck to both of our players. Shall thank we begin? You. Why not? All right, I'll push a button and ask our challenger, Michael, to make a selection. A. He wants A, and this is a new game, folks. Here we go. The president was President flab Arthur? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I told yeah, you that he would be yeah. around, yeah. <laughs> the president was flabbergasted when he saw Blank streaking across the White House lawn. <laughs> <laughs> flabbergasted. You got your own game going out there in the audience, have you? <laughs> the president was flabbergasted when he saw Blank streaking across the White House lawn. I've got my answer I in my head. My I've got my answer. Yeah, we're all finished here. We're waiting for... Charles gets Charles. slower and slower. Let's I think go he's on getting without. old. I think it's premature senility. <laughs> he's not that old. I'm 26. <laughs> you win a terrific liar. Okay. All finished over there, Michael. So we ask you. The president was flabbergasted when he saw Blink streaking across the White House lawn. I'm, I'm really embarrassed because um, um, I want to think of uh, President Nixon's wife, and I can't write off, but his wife. Uh, his wife, Pat. Pat. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> yes. How quickly they Must forget. A reason. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people are trying to forget too well. 
He says Pat was streaking across the White House lawn. What say you? Well, Michael, I tried to think of Pat streaking across the White House lawn, but I couldn't think of it. It I really was a picture I couldn't conjure and you live with. You thought a president but, author. Why wouldn't you think of But I can't <laughs> think of another lady who has been in the White House, not much lately, but she's been there, Martha Mitchell. Martha Mitchell. Excuse me, sir. There's a little logic to that. A little. Then. Okay, Brett. Well, you know he sounded just like President Nixon when he said, uh, I can't think of it. Not only can she streak, honey, I've seen her streaking all over town. Pat. Pat oh. Nixon. There's one for you, Michael. Uh -huh. Charles, you drew a picture. No, this is the new Polish uh, President Arthur Stamp. <laughs> Our beloved President Farquhar P. Arthur. <laughs> well, I, I don't know their names either. The Supreme Court streaking. <laughs> I think that's more fun. <laughs> Can those nine old men streaking their <laughs> Is that the way? Oh, is that jo oh, that's Justice Douglas. Well, he's in good shape. That's, called, that's not called snailing. That's that's streaking. It's called snailing. That's right, snailing. snailing. <laughs> it's called Show Jim Conway, answer. really, isn't it? Uh, uh, I also, I think that uh, Pat's been seen in my neighborhood lately too. Streaking. Oh, Pat, it is. Look at that. President is flabbergasted when he saw Blank streaking across the White House lawn. Richard, there's only one answer, isn't? <laughs> Just a minute, my secretary must have erased this. <laughs> <laughs> and now the good news. <laughs> okay, now Fanny. Before I give you my answer, <clears throat> it was a first lady. It was Lady Bird, and she was interviewed by the press after she did it, and she said, I streaked first to a bush. <laughs> then I streaked to a tree. And then I ended up behind a shrub. <laughs> first lady. Yes, there it is, the first lady. Another man. Four out of that. Very well done. I like my friends. Okay. I love it when you do that. Now, here we she go doesn't. with your end of the not people, not many people know this there, but Julia Child got expelled from cooking school for blanking the galloping gourmet. <laughs> Julia, wherever you are. when I went streaking to show you about Justice Douglas and all them other kids. Well, it'll be, we'll find it. It's around Everybody here somewhere. Everybody finds a solid gold earring worth a million dollars. Would you mind dollars? playing the game oh, and not yeah. stop talking about the earrings? Did you read in the paper that most airline pilots find it, you know, have a problem about President Arthur Airport? <laughs> <laughs> they can't find it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why nobody ever heard of President Arthur. I was wonderful. Julia Childs was doing what to whom? Uh, galloping, galloping gourmet. gourmet. I know. He freed the white from cooking school for blanking the galloping gourmet. Okay. Please take your time, though. Your attention span is getting shorter, <laughs> Alan. Well, it's well, he's only three and a half. All right, I'm 26. <laughs> okay, they're all finished, so we'll call on. What's that? I didn't hear the question. You didn't hear the question. <laughs> She's I'll give you a, a very a personal, close reading. Okay. Not many people know this, <laughs> but Julia Child got expelled from cooking school for blanking the galloping gourmet. Cooking. For cooking the galloping gourmet? Go ahead, go ahead. Hmm. Well done, medium or rare? How do you want your galloping gourmet? Don't according to how old you are. As if that lady were a little weird to think of cooking a galloping gourmet. Well, that's a possible answer. And she is a little weird, I guess. Yes. But aren't we all? Ah, there it is. She's got cooking. One for you. What do you say? 
Well, I don't know what happened to me, but I just kept thinking about uh, Alan and Betty's marriage. <laughs> so I said, resting with. <laughs> resting with. <laughs> And they expelled her. Okay, oh, Brett. Your hair just dropped. Yes. I love it. Yes. Uh, Charles. I said, and I hope it matches basting, the galloping <laughs> Is basting cooking? Yes. Ah. Okay. Yeah. You couldn't baste without cooking, could you? What, uh, what did you say she got expelled for? <laughs> expelled for? Well, uh, I think since he's galloping that she probably was riding him, piggyback. Piggyback. You said that? Yeah, piggyback. piggyback. Oh, piggyback, piggyback. Riding. riding, I see. What you think? The galloping gourmet, okay. Very interesting. <laughs> All right, Richard. It's okay, I boys. happen to know. <laughs> Why? She was expelled for assaulting him. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> All right, Fanny? Julia Childs served him with a wonderful tomato sauce <laughs> and a flaming banana, and she cooked him. <laughs> cooked him. <laughs> This has been one of the most interesting round ones we've played in a long time, and with an interesting score in addition, four to three in favor of the challenger. Round two coming up in a moment or so, but first we've got this for you. Can't find the earring, but we'll, we've been looking for the earring all during the commercial. Did anybody find it? Wayne, is that your earring or? <laughs> well, our cameraman wears an earring, but what the heck, it's a... If someone's found it. And they haven't turned it in. No. <laughs> Listen, what? Give her the hearing, will you? Is that it? I can't oh. hear what you say because of the earring in my ear. <laughs> there. I hope that's it. Very happy. Is that one or that's two? One. They're my earrings, Brett Bartum. We still I'm lost Bartum. one, is that it? Well, we'll find it Who during lost the next his contact one. lens. No. <laughs> with the game oh, now, yes. folks. Oh, it's a serious show. Okay. Oh, okay. Now, first I gotta push this button. Oh, look at that, it works. Now, Michael, would you make a selection, please? Try again. A, all right. Last time you matched four celebrities, and that means you will only be playing now with Alan and Charles. Oh, God bless her. <laughs> Well, we could look for the earring. Then. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> With all the shortages these days, robbers no longer say your money or your life. Now they say your money or your blank. I've lost my watch, too. <laughs> Thank you. There's a thief among us. No, it fell off. <laughs> Well, I don't have that watch, but you're the earring. I don't see the earring. Either. All right, the two gentlemen are ready. Michael, with all the shortages these days, robbers no longer say, your money or your life. Now they say, your money or your blank. Because of the shortages of various things today, now they say, your money or your... Shh, no help. Well, we appreciate your enthusiasm, but you may be giving them a rotten answer, you know. <laughs> We have to call for an answer now, Michael. Why don't we try wife? Your money or your wife? Yeah. Are there, uh, I guess, uh, well, I uh, right. There's no yeah, shortage, is there? you'd get to that question, yeah. honey. Yeah. <laughs> Alan, he says wife. Your Michael, money or your wife? Michael, you didn't hear about the shortages. I There's heard no it, but I didn't get it. Yeah. I see. All okay, right. gasoline, I gasoline said. Gasoline would be a good answer. Charles. Gas! Gas is the answer. Okay. Easy. All right. Now we'll go to this uh, question here. You must match one celebrity to stay in the game. Two, however, will win the game. Charles, we got, we we got Charles' answer. He had gasoline. Okay. Don't take any notice of him. Okay. What do they know? Forty-two score. There we go. Hey, what about Charles? Audience, oh. let me run the show, all right? <laughs> we'll scream and holler and laugh and do all that, and I'll keep the show going. Here. <laughs> Thank you. You're all right. 
Last time, Robin, you matched Alan, Charles, and Fanny, so the, the, th the three of you will lay out. All right. <laughs> Sir Lancelot ate so much at the royal banquet, he needed blank to get out of his suit of armor. <laughs> All right. Sir Lancelot ate so much at the royal blank uh, banquet, he needed blank to get out of his suit of armor. Finish, Brett. Yes, yes. Finish, finish. Richard's finished. Oh, thank you. See how good he is in his heart. Okay. Even though he did steal Fanny Blank's earring. Robin, <laughs> Sir Lancelot ate so much at the royal banquet, he needed blank to get out of his suit of armor. Oil. Oil? She says oil. Grease him up a little bit and get him out of his armor. Brett, what do you say? Everybody I know has been greased up for years. I said help. Help I to mean, get out of his suit of armor. Well, we won right. the tie, two to win, Robin, and Joyce. Oh, I said that he needed a, a jack saw. Is there such a thing? Hacksaw. 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 <laughs> it's a loser anyway. That's like Richard. President Arthur's <laughs> favorite tool. Richard, you stay in the game, Robin. What do you say, Richard? I said help, Don. Help. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. So Michael Hearn wins the game. Congratulations. Come on down. Because you have, to your credit at this moment, a total of $5,600. Goodbye, Robin. All right, we'll get back to you in a moment. Now this for you. Gene Mabry and Mash Cape 74. See you next time. Bye. This is Johnny Olsen speaking for Match Game 74. A Mark Hudson, Bill Todman production. This is Match Game 74, production number 0192. Air date to be announced, VTR 41374, is take one. Get ready to match the star. Rosie Greer. Brett Sommer. Charles Nelson Riley. Loretta Swift. Richard Dawson. And Kay Stevens. As we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 74. And now, here's the host of Match Game 74, Gene Rivers. Thank you for the warmth of your reception, and thank you for being here. And I hope you're all set to have a go at it, are you? Oh, yes. Right. Did you all, did this being Monday, did you all remember to watch Charles Nelson Riley last night oh, on the Tony yes. Ward show? Oh, oh, he was wasn't he terrific? Yes, sir. Yes. It was just splendid. Thank you. How was it to be back in the old Schubert Theater again where you and I worked well, together? Well, I, I used to be your understudy there. That's right. That's he was the star of Bye Bye Birdie, and I was his understudy. Yes. And now you're a star. Yes, and... And, and you're well, his understudy. And I'm his and understudy. And you got the jacket. Look at it that way. <laughs> you know the reason I haven't seen the Tonys yet? We're taping this two ah. weeks ahead. <laughs> Tell these white lies once in a while, just for the expediency be of the good without work. you lying. All no, right, no. okay. Let's say hello to it's our two players here, Jack canceled. Holton and Barbara Figueroa. Yeah. We just had a chance to introduce Barbara last time. Jack, of course, our current champ. He's won twelve hundred dollars. And uh, would you repeat uh, the things or some of the things you told us about yourself yesterday, about how you're married and you have two children and uh, and all that sort of thing? All right. I have two sons, and they're angels. <laughs> oh, really? Not sure, and <laughs> I am married, and I'm trying to be a singer. You are? Yes. Oh, well, good luck to you in that. Good luck here. We'll begin this game right after we pass along a message of interest to one and all gathered here in the hall today. All right. <laughs> Shall we go? Where would you like to go? Oh, I'll just push the button here, reveal two questions, and ask Barbara, our challenger, to make a selection. I'll take B. B. Let's see what question is in here for Barbara. 
Buell Gibbons has oh, eaten so oh, much man. natural food that he has blank growing out of his ears. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's good, my dear. Thank you. Yes. Okay. That's <laughs> yes. another good one. Oh, oh isn't oh. that funny? I started putting it away instead of putting it in there. You got it. I'll see you. After tears ready, we're waiting for Kay Stevens. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Now, Barbara, Yule Gibbons, and you know who Yule Gibbons is, don't you? He's eaten so much natural food that he has blank growing out of his ears. How do you fill in that blank? Green beans. Yes, you're They're friendly, owing you James out Don there, so apparently <laughs> they don't think green beans is too good. Let's find out if we got any green beans growing anywhere over here. Rosie, what are you growing out well, of you? Collard. Wood. Wood. Oh, that's good. I like that. I believe it was Ben. I want to know what college he went to, much less graduated from. I thought it was a terrific answer. I did, too. Did he say I wrote it. Okay, Brent. I see. Well, of course. Grape nuts. Grape nuts. <laughs> All right, she's looking for green beans. Grape grape Have you noticed beans. Barbara's dropped one of her flowers since yesterday? Yes, she has. So tomorrow, well, she's she'll... now available. <laughs> <laughs> no, by the end of the week, it should be dynamite. No. <laughs> I said dandelions in honor of Barbara. Dandelions. Okay. you. Are they right. dandelions? Yeah, no, they're it's supposed a, to be gardenia. It's a gardenia, yeah. What did you say? I said weeds. Weeds? You will give me so much natural food. He has blank growing out of his ears. She says green beans. What do you say? He ate so much natural food. Yeah. <laughs> has moss growing out of his ears. Moss. The moss big the old frog guy. every three days. Now, I'll bet we have a totally different answer from Kay Stevens. No, no. No? That took a little different. Green beans is what she's looking for. Green beans is what I'm looking for. Nuts is what she gets. Nuts. Because I've seen him, and he okay. definitely has nuts growing out of his ears. All right. I've seen him. I've watched So, him. here we go with Jack's question, and everybody plays. The whole audience cheered when Richard Dawson blanked Gene Rayburn. <laughs> Two answers? All right, Charles, ready. Yes, sir. Okay, Jack? The whole audience cheered when Richard Dawson blanked Gene Rayburn. Kissed. Very nice kisser. All right. I think there's so <laughs> Oh, all right. That'll His answer you. is kissed. You Rosie? Know, I figured that you had to know Richard Dawson, so I figured it was kiss. Kiss. <laughs> One kiss. La -da, la -da -da -da. Oh, let's no. do a musical, darling, okay. together, just you and I. All right. We'll do I do, I do. Okay. Why don't the two the odds, fella? Jack, get the uh, <laughs> lipstick that Dickie left off your face. Uh, kissed. <laughs> okay, there's two for you, Charles. No, you guys, say, no, this, no, before the show, you two guys were talking about your needlepoint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now guys are going around kissing one. <laughs> Get ready, Gene. Boy, it rubs me. A guy like me, it rubs the wrong way, Gene. That's right. <laughs> My reputation is ruined? Yes, because I said kissed. You said kissed, too. Well, at least it kept me out of the army. <laughs> Holy kitty. I'm a veteran. I was in three years. <laughs> One this way? You're ready to get you out of the army, dude. Who's what do you side? say? No, I baby. am shocked. Shocked that she would say yes. that. Yes. Indeed. Really? Because I'm not that sort of person. However, the audience did cheer when I married Jane. <laughs> 
and made an honest man of it. <laughs> All right, Kate. Oh, I loved it. I was there at the wedding. It was marvelous. You were and the best man, as I, I remember. I was the best lady. Right. And I saw them kiss. Yeah. Yeah. Kiss. What a kiss. Okay, so it's five to nothing at the end of round one, and we'll have more fun and games right after this. Tune in, turn on, and blank out with a... Today's consolation prizes are Lava Life, the exotic land of a million moving shapes with the soothing glow that intrigues and entertains from Lava Simplex Corporation, Chicago. And Tiger's Milk Protein Bars, a nutritious all-natural snack, high in protein and vitamin A, plenty of nutrition in this snack of a different stripe from Tiger's Milk. And Profile, with its own great flavor from a special formula of cracked wheat and wheat germ, just right for toast. Profile, it's a matter of taste. Learn how to fill in your blanks as Match Game 74 continues in a minute. All right, here we go, folks. I push a button and reveal the second and final round questions. Ask Barbara to make a selection here. Take A. She wants A. You got to match five celebrities to stay mm -hmm. in the game, Barbara. The surgeon said, boy, is King Kong big. When we took out his appendix, we had to use a blank. <laughs> Surgeon is speaking. This is boy, oh boy, is King Kong big. When we took out his appendix, we had to use a blank. Oh, Gene, you know those toughies always throw me. That is a toughie. Fortunately, it's a medical question. And it was easy for you. Yes. Right. Well, what does she know? She doesn't That's cry. That's right. She... Hi, Loretta. Hi, Give my love to your mother. All right, Barbara. Surgeon said, boy, is King Kong big. When we took out his appendix, we had to use a saw. A saw. saw. A saw. All right. I would have said butcher knife if I were playing. What did you say, Rosie? Well, yes. if you see a, uh, well, I use crane. A crane, yeah. All right. We got to match Brett and all the others to stay in the game. Barbara, Brett, may we see yours? Well, saw. Rosie's finally catching on in a kind of half, uh, well. No, he's well. doing very well. No, he's not doing very well, but he's got... I said wheelbarrow. So there's no match there, and these Jack wins another game. Congratulations. Okay. Another hundred dollars for the pound. Cranes came up all over there, you see. Crane seems to have been the answer. I would have done very well for you if you'd said that, Barbara. It was a real pleasure meeting you. I had so you. much fun. Good it was luck nice to you meeting all of the stars. Singing. Well, thank you for that. She's a, we've enjoyed meeting you. Good luck in your singing career. Barbara Figueroa. All right. Well, Jack, here we are again. Again. You ready? I don't know. Well, you've been here before. You know how it goes, so I'll get right to it. You've got $1,300. You're going to try for over 5000 now. We polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Electric blank. You know the answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. Next, $250. And the third one, $100. From whom would you like a little help? <laughs> Look at Brett. We must give her another chance. Isn't he a perfect person? Yes, he is. How about electric chair, which is where they should have put me after I didn't say Electric pickpocket. chair, okay. And Richard. Electric light. Electric light, all right. And Loretta. Ah. Uh... Oh, they took all my answers. There's one more good one, Loretta. Keep yeah, thinking. Yeah, electric light bulb? Well, uh, electric light... That was light, a question. The, it wasn't an answer. Is that okay? All right. Electric light bulb. Well, you, we have to accept the first okay. thing you say, so it's electric light bulb. So those are the three, electric chair, electric light bulb, and electric light. You may choose one of those or give us one of your own. What do you want to do, Jack? Electric chair. Chair is what he oh, wants. God, I hope I don't do We're looking for the electric chair, folks. Let's see if it's up there, and if so, where? First, may we see the $100 response? Chair it is, right off the bat. Congratulations. I thought it'd be up there a little bit higher. What was the other good one you were thinking of, Brett? Blanket. Electric blanket, electric train, electric bling. Well, let's find out what's under the $250 response now. The Electric Company, a yes. marvelous TV show, is a very good response. And the $500 response, Train. Light. Light. That's the one that Richard gave you. Okay, so now you've got the $100. That means you're playing for 10 times that amount, or $1,000. Bing. And to collect, you've got to match one celebrity head to bed. Which one will it be? I'll go back to Brett again. 
Oh, oh my right. God, wait till I put my glasses on. Maybe it'll help me to think better. All right. That's a better, that's the two seats for the Titanic are here, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shut up, Nicky. Right, you ready? Yeah. Please write your answer to this. Silk blank. Silk blank. <laughs> Oh, all right. Did you get one? All right, she's finished now. Jack, how do you fill in the blank? Silk blank. Sheet. Sheet. <laughs> all right, well, I don't know. Incoming. Never can tell about this show or about this game or about the celebrities. Brett, he said silk sheet in order to match you. What did you say? It sure lives a lot higher off the hog than I do. I said silk stockings. That's the only answer. Silk stockings. No, what are the other good answers? Silk, worm. silk, worm. silk, silk pajamas, silk, silk worm. worm. Yeah, I guess there are a lot of good choices there. Does he want to tell us about those silk sheets? Or no, no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. I don't think that's any of your We want to tell you about this dandy product which we have been saving for you. GSN presents... There was a very attractive young woman contestant on the show. I was trying to compliment her on her beautiful smile and I looked right into her eyes and I said you know you have the most beautiful nipples I've ever seen stay tuned for more of that 70s hour on GSN I really wanted the earth to open up and swallow me right then and there because I was embarrassed All right. now we're ready to start another game to do that we have to welcome another player we do so with a great deal of pleasure here is Lynn Lawson all right Lynn Lynn will tell us a little bit about herself. I'm married, and yeah. I have two children. My son's name is Aaron. And Aaron? Uh-huh. And my daughter's name is Melissa. She's just a baby. Uh-huh. Okay. Old. And where do you live? San Pedro. All right. Nice to have you with us, Lynn. Good luck to you. Oh, it's great to be here. Good. And good luck to Jack. And here we go. Lynn, would you please make a selection? B. B it is. New game everybody plays. What a great smile. Yeah. She has a Marvelous. smile like Pat Neal. Yes, yes indeed. That's yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. 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 You've got a smile Neal. like Tom Dale. Now let's get on the way. <laughs> Very pretty. <laughs> In the big gambling casino at the North Pole, the tables smell funny because the Eskimos use blank as chips. <laughs> <laughs> In the big gambling table of the North Pole. I wish you were in the big gambling hall in the sky. Man. <laughs> 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 All finished, and the dummies up there are going to do nothing. Oh, oh, Quickly don't now. Don't say things like that. Oh, don't, don't say that. Especially All right. not to him. Don't <laughs> ever make Rosie on no, he could fall on the show. That's right. He could <laughs> fall on the lower <laughs> tier and destroy the whole audience there. All right, Lynn Lawson. In the big gambling casino okay. at the North Pole, the tables smell funny because the Eskimos use blank as chips. Bones? Bones. 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 He says yeah. bones. Save okay. the bones for Mr. Jones. Because Henry don't eat no bones. meat. <laughs> He's an egg man. Henry don't eat no meat. Go. I'm a skin man myself. <laughs> skin. <laughs> All right. He is skin, man. He's skinny, man. Yeah. <laughs> Brett, what'd you say? Can you imagine a man so big being called Rosie? Yes. <laughs> I said fish. Fish. Oh, yeah. Well, a fish does smell funny after a while. You know a song uh, named Rosie, don't you, Charles? Yes, we do. We sang it together. <laughs> yeah, right. Rosie, That's right. Rosie. Show me up. No, not that No, now. this is, uh, I said fish, but it's a historical answer because they used to say, did you bring the fish and chips? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Uh, up in the North Pole, yeah. gambling casino, the North Pole table smell funny because the Eskimos use blank as chips, and she said uh, bones, and you I said, said uh, walrus teeth. Walrus oh, teeth. Oh, big oh, oh, chips. See, a fish yes. is right. Okay, yeah. All right, all right, all right, Loretta. Back to surgery. Your mother must be so Again. disappointed yeah, in you, this Loretta. Time, you're the patient. <laughs> Go ahead, okay, Richard. Santa. Richard, you're on. Pardon? Yes. I heard yes. every word. What? <laughs> <laughs> I just dozed off. <laughs> Smells so nasty. They use blubber. Blubber. Yeah, yeah, blubber. Where am I? That's what I have around here. 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> like a little gamey there. Okay, yes, what do you I've say? I've been there. I've been there. I've, I've seen them do it. Really? I've, it's definitely, they use bones, but I use fish. Fish. Uh, okay, so oh, well. it is scored all of that. God Let's knows see how Jack right. does with his. And here it is. Oh, here's a little scene that takes place in a psychiatrist's office. Oh, this is, is charming. Play? Yes, it is charming. It's the now, story I'll of my play life. one part. I'm going to be Miss Levy, the patient. Yeah. And Richard, you're going to be the doctor. Okay. Ready? You did yeah. kiss each other. <laughs> well, no, this is we your are part. You know, if we go okay. slow, this could be right. a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are you ready? Okay, here we go. Doctor. <coughs> Doctor, I've decided not to marry the duck. Very good, Miss Levy, very good. But why have you decided not to marry the duck? Well, Doctor, because when we have children, I don't want them blanking around the house. <laughs> Down, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you make a terrific girl? Thanks awfully. Thank you for no nominations, good. please. Just Don't worry, simple sweetheart. applause is all we ask for. Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready up there? I've been ready for three and a half hours. You play Miss Levy, all right. <laughs> Are you ready over there? Yeah. Oh, we've got to do it again. We have to, we have to repeat it for him. Oh, next time. How about her? No, no, no. <laughs> you, 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 you do be all right. Go, ahead. Go a little more quickly Doctor. this time, will you, kids? Doctor, I've decided not to marry the duck. Hmm. <laughs> That's very good, Miss Levy. But why have you decided not to marry the duck? <laughs> well, Mr. Barrymore. <laughs> Yes. Because when we have children, I don't want them blanking around the house. Get out of my office, Miss <laughs> Levy, and pay your bills, That's too. Tough. All right, what do you put in there, Hunter? What, blanking? I don't want them blanking around the house. What do you put in there? Quacking around the house. Quacking around the house. All right, let's see if we score with that, Rosie. Beautiful answer on his part, but I said ducking around the house. Ducking, ducking around the house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> Ducking is splendid. <laughs> Brett, maybe see your answer. <laughs> he is a big little devil. He is big. I said quacking. Quacking is Good wrong. to have you back, Brett. Oh, Good God. to have you okay, back. Okay, and Charles? Being a famous acting teacher, I said the acting stunk. No. <laughs> <laughs> quacking around the house. Quacking is <laughs> What did you say about that? I love Rosie. <laughs> I wish I had said ducking. I said quacking. Quacking. Good. Well, that's another match for you. He's happy about that. How about you, sir? Miss well, Levy. Please call me Miss Levy. Yes. yes. <laughs> waddling around the house. No kids waddling around the house. That's what ducks do. Okay. I think ducks waddle too. So they waddle. Oh. All right. So at the end of round one, it's five, uh, three to nothing in favor of our champ, Jack Houghton. And uh, we'll get back to this game and the acting and all that right after this message from... I thought we'd have time to go on, but we don't. We just have time to say goodbye and to thank you both. And join us next time or we'll complete this game by going to round two, okay? Okay. All right. Listen, you were splendid, and, and we've had Loretta on here for two shows now, and we haven't said one word about one of my all-time favorite TV shows, wow. MASH. Oh, is she working? Yes, she's working. You, how, how are you? How are things going over there? Says Brett is a nice person. Yes, it's she's going splendidly. We're not shooting at the moment, but it will be going splendidly. It, you've been picked up on the 21st. I have not mentioned the Oral Roberts Comedy Hour. <laughs> no, I haven't done that either. <laughs> That's all the time we have for this session. Join us next time for Match Game 74. Gene Neighbor here. Match Game 74, production number 0189, air date to be announced, VTR 330 of 74, and it's take one. Get ready to match the star, Orson B. Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Rorby, Chelsea Brown, Richard Dawson.
Johnson and Joanne Wally as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 74. And now, here's the host of Match Game 74, Gene Raven. I thank you for joining us here on Match Game 74. It's very kind of you to come, as they say. How, How nice of you to let us come. <laughs> That's splendid of you. Your enunciation is terrific there. How are you? I'm quite well. Is everyone all right? Yes, Someone, no. someone left a bite-sized baby Ruth on my chair. No. <laughs> Who could have done that? And I still have my duck. A chocolate duck? Uh, mm -hmm. ducks did you do that, did Richard? You, did you clock this dialogue? <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is not from children, it's from adults. That's right. I have yeah. my duck. <laughs> 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 All right, have we done every day? Have we oh, done anything? Like no, what? Chicago. No. Oh, Chicago, I May, forgot to May. mention. Do you know the date on that? May 6th. May 6th, uh -huh. in Chicago. At the Playboy May, Club. At if the Playboy Club. Me, I'll be there. August the 2nd, Guam. <laughs> <laughs> No. No, I'm opening a Newberry's set. <laughs> Come on now. I like to uh, listen. What do you do when you go to the Playboy Club? I'll be singing. Hooks. Sing. I that? sing. Hooks. Oh, 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 you sing. I'd like to mention right. Milwaukee. <laughs> Milwaukee. Yes. All right. Nothing to do with me. I just like Milwaukee. That's okay. okay. <laughs> Let's say hello to our two players, Martha Denning and Kim Kratkowski. <laughs> She's our current champ. She's won a lot of money. She has $3,450 to her credit. She's won two games. She's happy about that, and we're happy for her. And last time, as time expired, we just had a chance to say hello to Kim, and she told us a little bit about herself. But if you weren't with us, maybe she'd be glad to repeat that. We'd be happy to hear a little more about you, Kim. Okay. I'm from Oceanside. I'm married, and I got a three-month-old baby girl, and I'm part-time model. And what's your girl's name? Brandon. Brendan. Brandon. Brandon. Yeah. Brandon, a girl's name? Yeah, it's spelled with a Y N instead of a. Oh, I see. B R A N D Y N. <laughs> okay. M O U S E. Yes. <laughs> and you have beautiful green eyes for those of you who do not see Kim yeah. in living color. All right, ladies, we're going to start this game right after we pass along a little message to all of you out there in viewer land. Here we go. I'll push this button, ladies, and reveal the two questions in round one and ask Kim, our challenger, to make a selection. I'll take B. She wants B. New game. Everybody plays. B for your baby, right? B for yeah. baby. Yeah. Random. 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 Oh. Here it is, folks. Dora said, yeah. I'm not going to Dr. Fillmore again. Mm. He made me take off all my clothes and all I went to him for was a blank. <laughs> Expression. Dora said, I'm not going to Dr. Fillmore again. He made me take off all my clothes, and all I went to him for was a blank. I was first. You're the best. <laughs> Who's giggling out there? Well, we got a bunch of giggles in the audience. All right, Charles, ready over there? Ready over here. So, Kim, we call on you. Dora said, I'm not going to Dr. Fillmore again. He made me take off all my clothes, and all I went to him for was a sore throat. Sore throat. That seems like a good answer to me. Does it seem like a good yeah. answer to you? Seems like a good answer to them. Yeah. Okay. Show and tell, Tom I Morrison. I think it was eminently sensible of the good doctor. You know, things like that can be, work their way up. You don't know where it <laughs> That's right. Sore throat. Sore throat. Kim, there's one for you. Right? What is it, dear? Would you show us your card, please? I don't please? want to. Why not? Because I didn't say sore throat, but I love babies more than life itself. I wish you'd brought the little devil. I'm terrific with babies. I don't look like I'd be good with, but I am. I said earache. Earache. But All right. Close. No, that's a good answer. She's I'm going to get that blanks, guy one of these days. With yeah. Bad with blanks, but good with babies. Charles Nelson. Her other ear, too. Her other <laughs> ear. So we got two earaches and one sore throat, Kim. What do we get from you? I forgot my answer. Really? No, <laughs> show us. Oh, I see. Yes, yes. Well, she had a big head, so headache. Headache, yes. What disease are you offering, Richard? You like that answer, Chelsea? Well, I have a special on leprosy. I think you'll like it. <laughs> 
out to your car. No, not tonight. I have a headache. Oh, come on. Oh. <laughs> she says sore throat. Yeah, sore throat. My doctor always makes me undress for a sore throat. Oh, really? Uh, she just went for a prescription. Oh. You see? Yes. Oh. Good answer. And he's make him. Get undressed. <laughs> all right. Now well, you. Oh, darling, I thought he was a dentist. She went for a toothache. Oh, all right. <laughs> So that was one match for you, Kim. And now, Martha, let's see how you do with your end of round one. And this is it. The mad scientist's wife said... Yes? There's a strange fog in the laboratory. <laughs> as soon as I walked in, my blank started shrinking. <laughs> Would you like to try it and uh, start right here? All right. It's the mad the, scientist's there's wife. There's a strange fog in the laboratory. <laughs> as soon as I walked in, my blank started shrinking. Well, the blank seems to be all right. Uh, we just well, if they flop that, they'll flop anything. <laughs> Okay, Orson's finished. Sing it again, sweetheart. All right. Lower tier is ready and the upper tier is ready. So, Martha, the mad scientist's wife said, there's a strange fog in the laboratory. As soon as I walked in, my blanks started shrinking. Dress. She said her dress started shrinking. That would scare the heck out of me if I saw that. Mine have shrunk, but I guess that's age. Yeah. What do you... Her, she said dress. What do you say, sir? You've been in that fog, haven't you? Yes, I have. I, when in doubt, nose. Nose. And the nose knows. It would even be a stranger for... What do you say there, Brett? I have an itchy palm. I'm going to get some money. <laughs> Not from I this said... show, no. <laughs> What did he say? Not from this show. <laughs> That's true, dear. I said body. Body started. Let me just say. Ooh, wait a minute. Martha, what was your answer? Dress. 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 Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought, I thought yeah. I said body, too. <laughs> <laughs> we had a little misunderstanding yes. here. Yes. On the stage. Secret. Come here, give, give me the card. He, she said dress, and the guy over there writes these cards to remind me what the answer was. And he wrote. These little goofs will happen. Okay. Stick. <laughs> You didn't uh, think it was uh, no. too to it. It was shrinking with age. No, 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 indeed. What do you say, Charles? Back to the plot. Oh, yes. <laughs> Shall I, I read said, the question yeah, again? Yeah. No. No. We heard it six times. <laughs> I said head, and you know how they knew that? How? Her earrings fell off. Okay. <laughs> Chelsea Brown. That's why I asked you what she said before. Because you saw him I hold up the card. No, I just thought she said that. Oh, you thought she said that. You know how my mind works. You must works. enunciate clearly, my dear. <laughs> what did you say? I said head. Head. Oh, As I walked in, my blank started shrinking. And you, the sir... The fog in the laboratory. Yeah, the fog in the laboratory. As I walked in, my bl uh, blank started shrinking. My panties stopped. <laughs> Why she walks so funny. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, when your panties shrink, how else can you walk? It's funny. What do you say then? Well, I've been in those fogs, and oh, I know yeah. what happens. Your clothes well, that's shrink, a... about which clothes is a dress. Yeah. There's a man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One to one at the end of round one, and now we've got something for you. GSN presents Behind the Blank. While in the Merchant Marines, Richard Dawson made extra money doing what? Was it tap dancing, singing songs, playing drums, or boxing? The answer in just a minute. While in the Merchant Marines, Richard Dawson made extra money doing what? The answer is D. He made extra money boxing. Later on the family feud, he made his money kissing. Hubba hubba, dicky boy. Stay tuned for more of that 70s hour on GSN. All right.
right, we're ready to have a go at round two. I'll push a button, reveal two questions here, second and final round, ask him to make a selection. I'll take B again. B is what she wants, and last time you matched Orson. So Orson, you can keep drawing your little pictures or doing whatever you're okay. doing up there. Okay, everybody else will participate. <laughs> Maud said to Walter, how dare you tell me my voice sounds like the mating call of a blank? How dare you? Did you hear that, my dear? Maud said to Walter, how dare you tell me my voice sounds like the mating call of a... Lower tier is ready, upper tier. Okay, now they're off. Now, Kim, Maud said to Walter, how dare you tell me my voice sounds like the mating call of a... Moose. Moose. Good answer. <laughs> mating call of a moose. What do you say? I'll get you for that, Donna. No, that's a good answer. Am I first? You're first. Yeah, I'm last. last. I said cockatoo. <laughs> You have given some dimly dumb answers in the seven months we've been on the air, but that's the new low. I can do that. You want me to hear my cockatoo impression? Do your cockatoo. That's a cockatoo. Yeah. You're right. All right. Just hold it for one minute. You are lying. How many of you heard, heard the mating call of a cockatoo? You just heard it. All right. Yes, but, but his opinion. <laughs> What's your opinion here, sir? Back to the plot. <laughs> I said moose. Moose. Oh, yeah. moose. Moose would seem to be a good answer. Chelsea? Moose is an excellent answer, except I said crow. Crow. Uh, not too There's proud not of that answer, are you? There's not any better than cockatoo, honey. Oh, okay. Was it spelled right? All right, yes. Oh, good. What do you say, Richard? There's a cockatoo here wants to see you. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I said the mating call of a ribbit, ribbit, yeah. frog. Okay. I love frog. Joanne. <laughs> the mating call of a moose. Moose. There you go. Up to three. Now we go to Martha. Two to tie and three to win. Ready? Ra <laughs> Raquel said to the gas station attendant, <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, she didn't say that. <laughs> she said anything shrink. Hell said Soma. No. <laughs> Raquel said to the gas station attendant, Yeah. If you'll give me gas today, <laughs> I'll give you blank tomorrow. <laughs> Would you say that again? Not like Joanne, you do not play. I'll give you yes. Blank. I'll give you. I'll give you blank tomorrow. I'll give you blank tomorrow. Yeah, That's the one you're supposed to fill in, Chelsea. <laughs> you told me about the seat already. May I uh, just show it to you, <laughs> Raquel? Send to the gas station. If you'll give me gas today, I'll give you blank tomorrow. Okay. It's all there, isn't it? It's all there, everywhere. Okay. All right. We're waiting. Okie dokie. All right, now we're all set. Martha, Raquel said to the gas station attendant, if you'll give me gas today, I'll give you blank tomorrow. A kiss. A kiss. All right. We need two kisses to tie, three to win. Orson, yes. do you have a kiss for Raquel? Yeah, well, mine was more... All encompassing myself. Myself, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we'll dance today and I'll give you me tomorrow there. All right, Brent, what do you say? One kiss, one kiss, and then there's. Take it, Dr. Uh, me. me. Take it. <laughs> Thank you, too. Well done, man. Charles, a kiss is what Martha is looking for. I said, Martha, I'm sorry. Whoopee or love? Whoopee or love? <laughs> Now, Whoopi. you've got to match Making the two remaining Whoopi. ones down here, Chelsea Whoopi. and Whoopi. Richard. Chelsea, do you offer a kiss? Mm, I offer love. Now, that uh. encompasses kiss. No, uh. sorry, that does not match. So that means Kim and Joanne, congratulations. That's $100 for you.
stand by for a moment. I will say goodbye to Martha. Thank you. Sorry to go, are you? <laughs> Did you have fun? Yeah. Good. You've got three thousand four hundred and fifty dollars in our desk with you. Thank you. Martha goodbye, Martha. <laughs> well, I say, what do we do next here? Well, suppose I play a little tune on my ocarina. No, suppose we go to a commercial. Wow. Jane. Oh, oh, oh. Jane. Oh, oh, oh. Jane. Yes. Yes. No. Ken, turn around a minute. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Here we go. Uh -huh. Now, Kim, this is your first time up here, and you have a chance to win over $5,000 in the big money super match. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Now, we pulled a recent studio audience, and we got the best response to this. Blank knee. The answer they gave most often is worth $500 to you if you match it. If you match the next one down, it's $250. If you match the third one, it's $100. Now, you're allowed a little help from some of our celebrities. Please choose them one at a time. Okay, Richard. Richard, what do you say? Uh, and a partridge with a trick knee. What? Trick knee. Trick knee. And a partridge with a trick knee. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Five golden rings. No. Uh, what else did say? Next. Uh, Brett. Brett. How about, first I want to say. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's too a much. shame about that girl's body. Yes. <laughs> We're going to send her to camp this summer with the money she wins that's, that's and build her up a little, little bit. Devil. Yes. Uh, how about wounded knee? Wounded knee. Okay, there are two. Joanne? What do you say, Joanne? Oh, boy. Does anybody have a goodie? Yeah. Like, all yes, but I wouldn't say Water on the trip. No, you can't. No. Housemaids. No. They wouldn't okay. say that many. Housemaids. Yeah. Bony. What? Okay. I think of what I would say. Well, get on. Because you it. already have the one. Would be. Water on the... Water on the knee. So you've got water on you the knee. You cure that, by the way? How do you cure, cure water on the knee? You wear pumps. You wear pumps. <laughs> Let's hear it to the audience. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you've got wounded knee, trick knee, and water on the knee. You may choose one of those or think up one of your own. What would you like to do? Wounded. Wounded knee is the one you think is up there. Hopefully under the $500 response. Okay, that's the one that Brett gave you. Let's find out where it is. First, may we see the $100 response? No. Huh? Me. That was a dumb audience we had that day. I don't have to put up with knee. personal attacks not on me. No, no, it's not need, not, uh, not, me. not knee. All right, let's just forget about that it's one. Turtle wax. We are looking for wounded knee. May we see the $250 response? Trick. Trick knee is up there, the one that Richard gave. Oh That's a good omen, maybe. Let's find out. Oh. Now, looking for wounded knee, here is the $500 oh, response. Wounded knee! Oh. Okay. I just had a hot flash. <laughs> okay, cool it up there a little bit now. Now, Kim, you've won $500. That means you will now be playing for ten times that amount, or five thousand dollars to collect. You got to match one of the cuckoo birds over there, <laughs> head to head. Has to be an exact match. Please choose one now. Brett. Oh, isn't she Brett a wonderful is. mother? She is wonderful. <laughs> She's a wonderful mother. Do you know what I almost said? What? I couldn't think of wounded. All I could think of was bended. And I thought there's no such word as bended, you dummy. That's right. <laughs> it's wounded, and you did very well with that. Are you ready to write, Brett? Let's hope I... Okay, no, but would you go face ahead. me? No, would you face that oh. way? No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> you Are you sure me. you wouldn't like her to turn I away, you, Jane? I'll face this way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's your question, Brett. <clears throat> It's blank union. Blank union. U-N-I-O-N. Write your response to that, if you would, please. 
Wank Union. Ready? Ready or not. Okay, she's finished. Now, we need a response from you. How do you fill in the blank in order to match Brett? Blank union. My husband's a carpenter, so I just have to say carpenter's union. Oh. How would... Well, all right. One never knows. Carpenter's union could come up. All right, Brett, may we see your answer, please? I want to cry. I said credit union. Credit union. Western Union is another possibility. I guess there are a couple of good ones there. Yes. That was kind of a tough question, wasn't it? Anyway, you're up to $600, Kim, and you're going to meet another challenger and play another game. You're still in the ball game. Here comes Jack Houghton. Jack, you know Kim? I do. Okay, Jack, would you tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm originally from the Midwest and more recently from the Army. I'm married. I live in Orange County. I have one child two years old, and we're expecting another one the 1st of May. You don't okay. show it all, Jack. Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Very beautifully. That's right. He does indeed. Okay. <laughs> I guess we're going to start Nasty. this game in a moment or so, but first, we've got to do a little business with you, and this is it, friends. We just introduced Jack, thinking we had time to start another game, but we don't. Jack, you will come back next time. I will. Will you come back next time? Yeah. Okay, I'll be back, too. Oh. <laughs> None of us can make it. None of us can make it. No, that's all right. You'll be back next time. I can tell. Thank you very much Thank for you, being sir. here this Thank time. Thank you. You're I'm going to help that girl go to the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> Throw a coat on her. Gene Rayburn for Match Game 74. Join us next time, if you please. This is Johnny Olsen speaking for Match Game 74. And Bill Tubman production. Stay tuned for Tattledale next over most of these CBS stations. This is Match Game 74, and it's production number 0269, and it's take one. That's what it is. Get ready to match the star, Alejandro Ray, Brett Summer, Charles Nelson Riley, Juliet Mill, Richard Dawson, and Joanne Wallen as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 74. And now, here's the star of Match Game 74, Gene Ray. You are a very kind bunch. Thank you for joining us here. We're going to have a dandy time today. <laughs> and I guess we have to explain these knitted woolen lays. I don't you have don't, to explain have to. my lay. Yes. <laughs> you do too. We, yes. <laughs> this program goes to Alaska and Hawaii. And a school teacher is vacationing here, and her kid, and there she is. Vicki Curran. Vicki Curran. And, and I guess your kids watched this program and they knitted these? Yeah. They crocheted these. They're beautiful. That's They're very beautiful. kind of you. Would you thank your children? I and, shall be uh, in Hawaii soon. I shall go and give them a kiss. That's All very of kind That'll of you. That'll be two shillings, please. All right. <laughs> Everybody ready to have a go at it? See, see, yeah. see. All right, shall we say hello to our current champ and challenger, D. Davenport and Jan Shaw, ladies? How are you? He is our current champion. She has $3,450 credited to her account, which is hers irrevocably. How do you feel about that? Fantastic, fantastic. That's her key word, fantastic. fantastic. No matter what I, I ask say. her, it's fantastic. <laughs> and she's going to be challenged here by Jan Shaw. Hi. The answer is yes. Will you kiss me, hon? <laughs> I That's, don't know. It says, uh, give me a little kiss, will you, hon? I said, I said, I said the answer is yes. 
Okay, Jan, tell us about yourself, if you please. Okay, I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. I'm a student there, a housewife to a medical student, and I'm an editor for Multiple Sclerosis Charity Newsletter. Terrific. Are you um, a Well, we wish you the best of luck here. May I ask a personal question, please? I think so. Are you wearing contact lenses, or do you yes. have beautiful <laughs> black eyes? Like, boy, you're Well, eyes take are... your pick. <laughs> All right. You have beautiful Lochi Chata Thank me up. Thank you. <laughs> now, we're going to start this game right after we do a little business with America. Are you ready for us, America? Yeah, here it is. All right, here we go. I'll push this button, reveal our first round questions, ask Jan to make a selection. I think I'll choose A. A. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> After spending five years together on the island, Robinson Crusoe said to Friday, you know, <laughs> you're beginning to look a lot like blank. <laughs> Did you hear that, Jen? Uh -huh. I love it. It says here, after spending five years together on the island, Why Robinson... Why does Charles Nelson Riley always look at my answers? Because he well, can't think of any. He's getting an inspiration. He's stealing. After spending five years together on the island, Robinson Crusoe said to Friday, you know, you're beginning to look a lot like blank. Now. <laughs> See, he's not writing. We're doing a show right Call back. Yeah. You, but I yes, tell him I just can't take any calls. All right, he's you ready. can't take any calls right at this moment. Okay. All right, Jim. After spending five years together on the island, Robinson Crusoe said to Friday, you know, you're beginning to look a lot like... That's a toughie, but I'll say coconut. You're beginning to look a lot like a coconut. <laughs> They're owing you. She doesn't mean her sweatshirt. No. All right, Alejandro, she says coconuts. Well, I, I don't remember the story too well. I, I don't know whether he was married or not, but I said, like my wife. That's a good answer. <laughs> like my wife. You know, when you come up with good answers, they come up with rotten answers. I, I know, we never met. Our... <laughs> Brett, what did you say? Well, he's a stranger in a strange land. Who, Robinson or Alejandro? Uh, no, Alejandro Ray. <laughs> <laughs> spent a month well i won't tell you who it was because i don't want to spread rumors but actually he began to look a lot like raquel welch uh -huh. <laughs> okay splendid now watch his answer and then accuse me you know raquel welch and you have the same body you really do only give it back to her you're wrinkling it raquel welch. <laughs> Sure. Dean oh, Martin. Right. I do it every other week. The answer she's looking for is coconuts, Juliet. I haven't got it. Look a lot like Eve. Eve. Yeah. A lot like Eve. That's good. All right, Richard. Golly, Robinson Cruz now. I know, but never mind. Get on with it. Friday. <laughs> Get on with tell it. Him. You tell him. You tell him. Tell him Julia. You tell him, Julia. Friday was six <laughs> foot four and black. <laughs> Had a bone through his nose. He did. Sure. So, naturally, but Robinson Cruz has said you look a lot like... Brett. Get him a belt. That's it. Get him a lady with glasses. Look at that. I felt her right in the nose. <laughs> All right, Joanne. I'm with the uh, foreigner at the end, or is so foreign country land. I also say, because he's correct, my wife. My wife. <laughs> no coconuts, sir. C -C. <laughs> and we have a question for D, and mm -hmm. this is it. First round question. Cinderella's stepsister was so ugly. How ugly was she, Jane? Oh, I'm glad you asked, Richard. Hey, how she ugly was so was she? Uh, oh, how ugly was she? I'm glad you said that she was so ugly when Prince Charming handed her the glass slipper, she couldn't fit it on her foot, but it fit perfectly on her blank. <laughs> oh! I do it for Did you hear that? Do it one more time. Yeah. Cinderella's stepsister was so ugly. How ugly was she? <laughs> she was so ugly that when Prince Charming handed her the glass slipper, she couldn't fit it on her foot, but it fit perfectly on her blank. Had a girl. I got it. <laughs> no, you've got it. She's got it. <laughs> Why do I got change it? Want to change yours quickly? Change yeah. 
and then I'll show you what I had. All right, I'll just peek at what you had there. That's better. Okay, they're all finished. Deep. It is, it is so ugly that when uh, the gla uh, glass it couldn't fit on her nose, but it fit perfectly on her... Nose. Nose. <laughs> she says no. You said no. She said no. Well, I'm sorry about that. Why are you sorry about because that? Because I said no. You said no, too. Can you the last minute? Good choice. Brett? What? <laughs> she, no, this is question. called not a lay. This is called a lay letter. Le -le because it is on my wrist as oh, opposed. I, I did not break it. All right. And, oh, I can't go on with this. I said no. No, James. <laughs> You know, in, in Tahitian, that means you're a virgin if you wear it on your right side. If you wear it on the left, it means you've been around. Oh. No! <laughs> no, it's true. You've got to know these customs. You just don't come wearing these things. Well, I don't want anyone to think that I'm not an honest person. I'm putting it on my left wrist. I think that's, that's right. what the book said. <laughs> Shall we get on with it? Yes, yes. I know you're fascinated with the goings-on up there, but you yes, must... Yes, I read those three weirdos up there. Nose. No. All right, that's four. Now, Richard. When Prince Charming had her the glass slippers, she couldn't fit on her foot, but it fit perfectly on her. That's what I say. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> what uh, wrist do you put it on if you. That's disgusting. <laughs> I wrote nose. Nose. Okay. That's five. What do you say there, Joanne? I say the winner is. Nose. Oh, that's it. That's very unusual for first round. You did very well. Six to nothing to score. You've got your work cut out for you, and we'll see how you do right after we see about this message or two. All right. Now, we go to round two here, and Jan, to stay in the game, you've got to match every celebrity with either A or B, and it's your choice. I'll try A again. A again. Gesundheit, madam, whoever sneezed in the audience. Right. <laughs> The great Rinaldo said, uh -huh. Any hypnotist can make a person go quack, quack. But when I, the great Rinaldo, say you are a duck, you begin to blank. <laughs> right? Oh, gee, you know I can't I, cry with false I, eyelashes I, on. I did it too fast for you, right? Yes. Could you the do great it? Rinaldo said, Any hypnotist can make a person go quack, quack. quack. But... When I, the great Ronaldo, say you are a duck, you begin to blank. I'm you drunk. begin to blank. You <laughs> begin to. Oh, I get it! Good gravy! Oh, boy! You are a duck. I. <laughs> Shazam! You are a. <laughs> How old would they have been if they'd lived? How old would they have been if they'd lived? I don't know. See, you, there's no point in looking. You can't read it anyway. You can't read it. Now, put it he in a slot there. He don't write in English. Yes, well, we understand. Alejandro. Indentro. All right. Here we go. Indentro? Indentro, that means inside. Put it in the slot there. Uh, where are we here? You. The great Ronaldo said any hypnotist can make a person go quack, quack, but when I, the great Ronaldo, say you are a duck, you begin to... Bark. Oh. Bark. Bark. Put that right bark. up there with coconut. That's right. You well, begin to bark. Kansas City, what can you expect? All right, oh. there. Poor girl. She's, she's got to match everybody. I I have, girl, she's I looking have... for the answer, bark. Well, I repeated the same thing that happened before. I said they will begin to quack, quack. Quack, quack. I got it wrong. So that is not... Uh, I have Congratulations. <laughs> now, Jan, it's been a short, a pleasant meeting for us, and I uh, hope you're going to enjoy the prize we have for you backstage. And many thanks for being with us here on Match Game 74. Thank you very much. Jan Shaw. Alright. Here we are with good old D. Davenport again. Third time, right? <gasps> oh, fantastic. <laughs> As it's a old one word D. Fantastic. All she says is fantastic. Now, you remember how this goes? 
Can we show a, a canvas to a recent studio audience? And we got their best response to this. Blank and water. Blank uh -oh. and water. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500, too, if you match it. If you match the next one, you get two fifties. The third, a hundred. Three celebrities are allowed to help. Whom do you choose? Richard. Good old Richard. Fantastic. 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 Well, what this country needs is some soap and water. Soap and water. Uh, I don't know why. <laughs> All right, there's one. Brit, how about oil and water? Oil and water. Don't mix, don't mix. No. No, wait a minute. Would you pick on a cripple? Ah! Don't, don't pay any attention soap to that. Soap and water is what she gets. I'm oil and water, <laughs> right? Yeah, soapy, so you're the soapy one. She's the oily Is one. Sleepy, bashful, <laughs> okay, dark, and, hardly. and grumpy. <laughs> Joanne. Bread and water. Bread and water. I got bread and water, soap and water. Oil and water. You may right. choose one of those or think up one of your own. What would you like to do? Bread and water. Fantastic. No way. <laughs> bread and water. She chose uh, bread and water, which is the answer Joanne gave her. Let's find out if it's up there, and if so, where? First, may we see the $100 response? Scotch and water. Scotch. Wait till oil comes up. You guys are yeah. going to uh, It's going to come up. We'll wait. All right, looking for bread and water. Here is the $250 response. Soap and water. There you are, Richard. Boy, the price has gone Shall up. Shall I stand up now for oil? Oil and water. Uh -huh. All right, we'll there's your Brett carburetor. <laughs> she is well oiled and ready for this response here. Here is the $500 response. Bread and water. You may stand up. Congratulations. You got the five hundred dollars, you're now up to you're over four thousand dollars. <laughs> Say it. I can't. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right, audience. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. Now to collect the <laughs> It's a silly bunch, I think. Anyway, to collect the five thousand dollars now, what you're playing for, you've got to match one celebrity head to head and it's time to choose one. Joanne. Okay, Joanne, you get ready to write. You're gonna face me as you have before. Turn around a little more there, that's it. Here we go with a $5,000 thing. Write your answer to this, if you would, please. Blank affair. Blank affair, or blank affair. I give you both accents. Now, she's finished, and uh, you have to give us an answer now. What answer do you think would match Joanne? Blank affair. Love. Love? Love. All right, Joanne, for $5,000, may we see your answer? We've been doing so beautifully together. However, it's love. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> Fantastic. Stand it, my dear. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold, hold everything up. You've got to give her her word. Ready? Fantastic! You got it. You got $9,050. Congratulations. You'll play another game right after these messages. <laughs> now, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You got it all together? I've got it all together. All right, then uh, you and I and all of these good people and our celebrities will welcome our new player. Here's Juana Martinez. How are you? Just fine, thank you. Where are you from and all that? I'm from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Yeah? Oh, you are? Yes, I am. Where's, uh, Argentina, where is that? <laughs> are you, do you live here now? Uh, temporarily. I'm leaving pretty soon back to my country. Why are you going? Oh, I love it here. Oh, so good. I hate to leave and I hate to be away. Yes. It's sort of hard. Now, are you a student here? Yes, I am. Where do you go? Los Angeles City College. I was going until the semester was up. Yeah. Well, good luck to you here. Thank you. Nice to have you with us. Shall we begin? All right. Now, you, uh, as a challenger, have a choice here. A or B? B. B. B for Argentina. B for Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. 
A for Argentina. Pardon? B for B. Buenos Aires. B. C. Or, or oh, beautiful. Oh, C for uh, Charlie Chaplin? G. Do I hear Dave? That's enough. Right? <laughs> That's a, this is a good game. We can get it on the air. <laughs> Listen to this now. When Sally kissed the magic frog, she became blank. <laughs> When Sally kissed, frog. when Sally kissed the magic frog, she became blank. It was not a toad. It was a frog. Okay. Whoops! <laughs> My mic fell apart. <laughs> 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 no, it, it just came apart. Oh, I, <laughs> I have no control over these things. Oh, it's this white front that. store equipment they've got around. <laughs> I'm only kidding, Mr. Paley. Why do I die? How do I know where you shop? <laughs> Is everyone ready? Are you Richard? I'm just dropping a note in Argentinian, and it's difficult to make the. Uh... Oh, all right. The Cyrillic alphabet. Why not? When Sally kissed the magic frog, she became blank. She became a frog herself. She became a frog herself. No. She became a what? No. She became a frog. Not so fantastic one. No. <laughs> Would somebody turn up my hearing aid? No. <laughs> she says she became a frog. Oh. Alejandro. Well, this Help time I was country. not that romantic. She was not. I am not. You're not. She became pregnant. Pregnant. <laughs> You've been away from your country too long. <laughs> Brett? You know what happens when you kiss a frog? What happens when you kiss a frog? You get warts all over your mouth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My mother said, stay away from frogs because they'll make you fertile. <laughs> Yes, Charles. I, I'm, I'm on the phone to South America. See, si, gracias. They want, no, it's true. This is an, a, a first. They want Brett to do her own show right away. Uh, where? Venezuela, and can you leave immediately? <laughs> Thank you. Show me there, Granada. <laughs> With child. See you. <laughs> With child. Okay. She's looking for the answer. When Sally kissed the magic frog, she became a frog. That's what she said. What do you say? Oh, Master, she became pregnant. Pregnant, oh. what you say. <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. Sir. Oh, mucho. How do you say sorry? Uh, uh, que lastima. Que lastima. Uh, mucho que lastima. <laughs> <laughs> But simply K lastima, not mucho K lastima. Well, I'm very K lastima. Oh, you're, you're... <laughs> <laughs> In fact, El Grando. Okay. With Childo, you see? Uh, mucho, mucho. Yeah. Mucho she, with Childo. Think well, she bought it? All right. No, and she didn't uh, buy it. Mucho Joanne, that's all right. That's she all right. became parental guidance or PG. <laughs> okay. So there's no match there. First round question for D coming up, but first we've got this message for you. Here we go. I can't believe it, ladies, but time is up. I'm sorry, but we've got to quit right here at this point, and we'll pick up with your first round question next time we get together. You were all splendid as usual, and we oh. look forward to seeing you. No, you, I mean it. I'm... Hey, Latimer, really. No. <laughs> Gene Rayburn, join us next time for Match Game 74. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. next over most of the CBS stations. Get ready to match the stars. Orson B. Brett Summers. Charles Nelson Riley. Annie Marshall. Richard Dawson. And Betty White. As we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 74. And now here's the star of Match Game 74, Gene Rayburn. Hello there. Thank you, Jenny.
Nelson, and thank you, dear friends, and gentle hearts. How are you, my dear? Okay. Uh, <laughs> may I say is, something? Yes, you may say something. The one wonderful thing I love about Penny Marshall is you can never tell when she's having a good time. <laughs> Listen, do you have a good time doing your own show, Paul Sands, uh, uh, Friends and Love? Are you a friend or a lover in that show? I think I'm an enemy. <laughs> friend. You're relative. a friend. A relative. Relative. Yeah. Is that fun doing that? Yeah. How about this? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> see what World I mean? War How about World yeah. War II? Yes. Yeah. Is that all right? <laughs> you have pretty green eyes. Doesn't she have green eyes? They're pretty green. I don't yeah. have my glasses on. Wait a minute. I'll, I'll <laughs> we'll write you a letter. Your letter. Trust us. Let's, <laughs> let's say hello to our friends over here, shall we? Carrie Newland and Ron Bambas. Hello there, friends. Right. Right. Carrie's won $3,450. And we've started this game. Ron had his question. He matched one of our celebrities. And your first round question is about to come up. Are you ready for it? Yes. OK, we'll do that in a moment or so. But first, we've got to do this. And uh, reveal this question, which is the first round question for Carrie Newland. And everybody plays. Are you ready? Ready. Here we go. I'm Ready's brother. Betty White's goldfish <laughs> hasn't been the same since Betty washed her blank in the goldfish bowl. <laughs> Again, darling. Yes. Listen I was carefully looking carefully. at Betty and didn't hear you. Betty White's goldfish hasn't been the same since Betty washed her blank in the goldfish bowl. Terrible. Is that the Palmer method? <laughs> okay. Carrie Newland. Betty White's goldfish hasn't been the same since Betty washed her blank in the goldfish bowl. Her hair. I think they're against you. I think so. Yeah. But what the heck, you never know. She says hair, Orson. Yes, no, yeah. I, the goldfish has not been the same. It's been happier since Betty washed her feet in the goldfish. I see. You got yes. a real kick out of that. <laughs> got a kick out of that? The fish did. All right, Brett. <laughs> or, if you will, her dogs. Uh, uh, Watch her dogs. The goldfish bowl. Uh, oh, I, <laughs> I hate her and all yeah, that love of gonna, animals she has. She's gonna cry in a moment. Now stop That's this. That's not true. Actually, the goldfish did have wasn't the same because the goldfish was singing double since she washed her bra. <laughs> okay. Betty White's goldfish have been the same since she washed her blank in the goldfish bowl. Orson and I have something going. Oh really? Feet. Hear that? Feet. <laughs> we have feet going. We yes. Have feet going. <laughs> What did you say, Richard? Some kind of a fetish. Right? I happen to know that you were absolutely right. She did wash her hair. Wash her hair in the yeah, goldfish because bowl? Because I saw you on the show South Pacific, and you said, I'm going to wash that fish right out of my... That's Never? Right, that's what right. a smack. You see, the last time I thought you were going to say lingerie of some kind, and we had such an argument here about long, what was lingerie at one time. Do you oh, remember? yes, I remember that. I yeah. went every way to protect you. I said, undies, including bra and pantyhose. I thought... <laughs> Get that judge. <laughs> and then you said hair. Yeah. No you certainly wasted my time. <laughs> <laughs> now, what does Betty White say to all of this? Well, nothing fishy. She washed her hair. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Well, well, how do you like them apples? Okay, so that's one apiece for you at the end of round one. And now we go to round two, Ron. <laughs> B, please. B. Everyone plays except Penny, because you matched in the first anywhere? round. You can play anyway, okay. and I'll read your answer okay. silently. Just dumb Dora was so dumb. Yes. How dumb was she? I'm glad you asked. She was so dumb she brought home an eggplant and tried to blank it. <laughs> That's how dumb Dora was. Dumb Dora, Ron, was so dumb, she brought home an eggplant and tried to blank it. You think about that in a moment or so? Don't you love you. him? He's always stealing my answers. He's leaning over there because he has a decent answer for a change. And he's... <laughs> I'm ready, Gene. Thank you, Charles. And he's also going skiing. <laughs> Where? No place. Oh, she just said that. <laughs> Look backyard. at his sweater. If he's not going skiing, we're in a lot of trouble. Okay. No, no, she wrote skiing. This is a very sick writing. I think the nurse should come and take it. Isn't that heaven? 
<laughs> you think I'm losing my mind? Yes, uh -huh. you are. Yes, definitely are. Okay, oh, Rob. <laughs> dumb Dora was so dumb. <laughs> How dumb was she, Gene? I'll tell you. She brought home an eggplant and tried to blank it. Plant. Plant it? Yes. Brought home an eggplant and tried to plant it. I'm finished with it. Is that a little touch of humor? Go ahead, Orson. She tried to scramble it. Tried to scramble it. Scramble eggplant. In order to scramble eggplants, what do you say, Brett? Ron, I'm looking for Mr. Wright. <laughs> Number three, but you're obviously not him. The word is scramble. Scramble. That's too scramble, Charles. I went another route. I said hatchet. Tried to hatchet. Good. Popular response. Very popular response there. Aren't you sorry you're not playing this one there? Mm. All right, Richard. <laughs> what? You're he eating stole in the... my apple. You stole Brett's apple. That's Brett's apple. That sweet young kid in the audience gave her that apple. A wonderful person in the audience oh, gave me that. Oh, <laughs> what? All right, now show us your answer and say it at the same time in a loud, clear voice. Oh, I, oh, no, no. <laughs> what is that one? I heard the same story. Yeah, it's that one. Yeah, yeah. Hat trip. <laughs> okay. You want a bite? All right, plant. No, thanks. Uh, plant is apple. the answer that Ron is looking for. Hatchet, but who else? Hatch. Yeah, okay. Hatch All right. Down the hatches. Now, when we come back to you, you you'll have your violence. second round and final question. And one match will win the game for you. Let's see if that happens. But first, let's see about this. Here we go. Are you ready? Yes, All right, Carrie. You need one match to win the game. What's going on? I'm here. Uh, just building a chair in my spare time. <laughs> Betty stole his chair. Did you Every take his chair? I stand up. Did anybody ask you who you stole his chair? You took his chair, but now let's stop. Now, children, now stop this. This is like Carlton Myers Kindergarten. It's a very... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Carlton Myers Kindergarten. This is a serious show. Listen, yeah. have a little poem for you now. Oh, I love oh, it. Listen this to this. Child. Child. A young lady a from poem. No, 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 no. A poem. Was a young man from Cape No, Paul. no. <laughs> Yule Gibbons was hungry. No food was nearby. So he opened his mouth, and he munched on a blank. <laughs> Yule Gibbons was hungry, no food was nearby, so he opened his mouth and he munched on a blank. Yada ba da 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 we go. Betty's the only one who didn't write that time, right? Yeah, because I wrote sure. anyway. You did. Good. I'm like Penny. <laughs> All right. I never wrote. Yule Gibbons was hungry, no food was nearby, so he opened his mouth and he munched on a fly. Fly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Orson, what did you say? Chacun a goût. Whatever that he means. Munched on a fly. On a fly. And Ron, we're going to have to say goodbye to you. Sorry. You're, uh, it's been a pleasure meeting you. We've got a gift for you, together with our thanks for being with us here on Match Game 74. Ron Bambas, goodbye. Ready? Okay. Now, this is the third time you've been up here, right? Okay. Now, you know how this goes, so we'll get right to it. Right, Carrie? We polled a recent studio audience. We got their best response to this. L blank. The answer they gave most often is worth $500. The second most frequent response, $250. The third, $100. Now, pick your celebrities. Richard. L. <laughs> well, that's a goodie. El Toro. El Toro. OK, there's one. Charles. Charles, have you got one? Well, I mean, that <laughs> He's not looks... getting mine. <laughs> I'll go the El Camino route. El Camino. <laughs> Now, what was the other one? Wait a minute. What's the other one? El Toro is what he said. El Toro. And you've okay. got El Camino. El We've Camino. got to go with your first answer. Okay, well, and don't your turn third. on me. I mean, it's not Brett. that easy. Brett, have you got one? How about El... I w wouldn't say El Tubbo. What about no. Because it's been said... El Exagente. No, I'm not saying that. What El about El MNOP? El Capitan. <laughs> El Capitan. Okay, so you got El Capitan, El Camino, and El Toro. 
What say you, senorita? El Toro. You say El Toro? El Toro. That sounds like the bull to me. That is the bull. All right, we are looking for the bull. Let's find out where he is. A Hungarian bullfighter. <laughs> <laughs> ah, is that uh, answer under the $100 response I ask you? No, it is not. El Dorado. <laughs> That's a good one. All right, looking I for El Toro. I mean, I was bad. Let's find out. <laughs> is it under the $250 response? El Toro. Bow Macaroni. El Bow Macaroni. Wrong. You think it's El Cid, audience, right? El Cid. Okay, let's find out. Here it is. El Cid is right. Audience was right. Did you think of El Cid? No, not once. Well, he hadn't been around lately. Okay, now you've won the 250. That means you're going to play for 10 times that amount or 2,500. Remember, you have to match one celebrity head to head time to pick one. Richard. All right, Richard, you're elected again. You face me, my dear. Here is the $2,500 question. Pair of blank. Pair of... <laughs> this is no laughing matter, Richard. Easy for you to say. Uh, <laughs> yes, it is easy for me to say. Pair of blank. <laughs> oh, please let me hear the clean answer. I'll never tell you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Good. Richard is finished. <laughs> In Mar I can see to come up with an answer, but you think will match his, Carrie? Pair of shoes. Shoes. <laughs> Richard, you looked as if you drew a blank there. <laughs> no, I wish I had drawn a blank. <laughs> I just kept sawing visions of things. <laughs> okay. All right, may we see your answer for $2,500? She said pair of shoes. What is your answer? Oh, did you say shoes? She said pair of shoes. That's what I said, shoes. That's what you said, shoes. Gee, that's a lot of money. What are you going to do with all that money? Well, besides using it for my education, I can pay my rent with it. You graduated three years ago. You must live in a very expensive money. apartment to pay six thousand dollars a month rent there. <laughs> okay, Carrie, let's play another game, shall we? Let's bring on Charlie Stair. Charlie Stair. Charlie, Charlie, you know Carrie? Yes. Well, the first thing we got to know, Charlie, is what are you doing out here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm here to play the game, and my real name is Charles Ann. But I Charles? Was... Ann. Oh, Charles. Well, Charles is a man's name, isn't it? Well, I know, but that's just the way it is. <laughs> Whose I idea was home, that? Uh, I won't be home tonight, dear. I'm just with Charlie and Ann. Uh... <laughs> and of course, it's a man's name, Charles Nelson Riley. That's Anybody right, can... naturally. Okay, Mary is a man's name. Yeah. I'm, I'm from Dallas, and I'm an airline flight attendant. Okay. Nice to have you with us, and good luck to you, Charlie. Thank you. <laughs> it's so funny calling it Charlie. <laughs> Why don't you and Charlie come back to my place, have a drink? Okay. <laughs> you go, you go. You got some business to attend to. Go attend to your business. Charlie and I are going out for a drink now. Okay, here we go with Charlie and Carrie. I push that button, and I ask you to make a selection, ma'am. I'll take A, please. You'll take A? I'm sorry, I've got A. Oh. No, that's not <laughs> A is for you, and here it is. New game. Little riddle about the Wild West. I love riddles. Little, <laughs> it goes like this. I love you when you get tickled. <laughs> I love it when I tickle you. <laughs> what do you call a lawman who's all covered with beautiful feathers? The answer? Wild Bill Blank. <laughs> Let's see what you're doing. What do you call a uh, Charlie to give it to you? Uh, what do you call a lawman who's all covered with beautiful feathers? The answer, Wild Bill Blank. Now, don't say it. Wild, beautiful feathers. Wild Bill Blank. 
I wish you... I were dead. No, come on, now write something. Oh, okay, I got, you got it. it. All covered with beautiful feathers. The answer, Wild Bill Blank. See, if he can do I'm it, ready. you can do it. Right. If he can do it, anybody can do it. That's right. Mm, I love Jonathan Apples. When I think of now, this Charlie. apple being given to me and then stolen by it's my a friend. Silly thing to what do you call a lawman is all covered with beautiful feathers? The answer, Wild Bill Blank. Wild Bill Peacock. Wild Bill Peacock. She came up with a terrific answer. The rest is up to you. If we don't get some terrific answers, you're in a heap of trouble. What do you say there, little boy? Charlie is a terrific girl. I came up with a more rudimentary answer, Wild Bill Chicken. Uh, what are you saying there, madam? I'm crying. Why? Did you think of Wild Bill Peacock and reject it? No, no she I saw could. herself in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I want to know something. What? Now, this may be a match. No, we'll be the judge of that. Just hold a card up. Now, Good. oh, it makes me so mad. Oh. Now, isn't Pheasant and, uh, and Peacock no. the same thing? Uh, even if she'd spell it right, it wouldn't be the same thing. It's isn't... Pheasant is P-H-E-A. No, oh, anybody can <laughs> yeah, spell it right. No, Dick says it's two Fs. <laughs> <laughs> no. Pheasant, female Peacock? No. Or is that female grouse? Oh, no, no, it's not. Pheasant has nothing to do with peacocks. Well, what do you say, Charlie? A few of them do. <laughs> isn't, that the, isn't pheasant the, the wonderful bird with the... With You're the... off. He's I on. You're know. off. You stop talking now. What do Before you say? I show my very correct answer, may I call you Chuck, Charlie, so there's no confusion? Because... <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> I'll be Chaz. And you'll be Chuck. Yes, yeah, okay. Peacock, peacock, of course. Okay, Charlie, there's one for you. Charlie's looking for a peacock, lady. I got a chicken. Oh. <laughs> That's a couple chickens. Yes. All right there, Richard. Give the little lady a peacock. That's what she wants. Very well. You uh, are, my dear. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed, Charlie. I ordered pizza and got chicken. Uh, too bad. I'm humiliated. Are you offering anything to this sweet child, my dear? Not to her, but what did you have? <laughs> uh, listen. I didn't think being on CBS we were allowed to say peacock. Oh. So I said Wild Bill Bird. Wild Bill Bird. Yeah, okay. Funny. Okay. So that's, that's one that's for funny. you, Charlie. And now let's see what we've got for you, Carrie. For you, but it's funny. Here we go. First round question for Carrie. Yeah. Bill said, having dinner at Edna's house is like going to a fancy restaurant. Before she seats you at the table, Edna makes you blank. Sorry, I was in time lapse. Having dinner at Edna's house is like going to a fancy restaurant. Before she seats you at the table, Edna makes you blank. Oh, I've got it. Oh, honey. It's, it's like no eating problem. at a fancy restaurant. Huh? You understand? Don't look so puzzled. You understand it, don't you, Carrie? You've been to fancy restaurants? Mm -hmm. Classy chick like you, with all that money, $6,300? Sure, you've been to a lot of fancy restaurants. Ever been to Edna's house? <laughs> no. Last Once house again, it's tricky. Bill said having dinner at Edna's house is like going to a fancy restaurant. Before she seats you at the table, Edna makes you blank. Genuflect. <laughs> no, that's... All right, the lower tier is ready, Charles. We're waiting for you. <laughs> Aren't we always wait? I've spent my life waiting for Charles. Yes, Charles. Okay, now, Carrie. Bill said having dinner at Edna's house is like going to a fancy restaurant. Before she seats you at the table, Edna makes you... Wear a tie. Wear a tie. They're groaning at you again, Carrie. That tells you something. All right, Orson, what do you say? I think it's a very good answer. But tip her. Tip her, yeah. yeah. Slip her a little something. Slip her a $10 Get bill. Get down close to the floor That's show. Right. It's Edna's mother with a pair of pasties. She made <laughs> Brad, what do you say? I say my life has been so ugly, I never get to go to good restaurants. Yes, but show us I your card. I thought you had to wash your hands. Wash your hands, Mrs. <laughs> wash your hands before you go to the table. Charles? I don't know if the judges will maybe think this is a match, but I said makes you dress up. Dress up and wear a tie? What about that? Is that close? Yeah, that is a match. All right. Uh, Penny Marshall, what do you say? I said you had a slipper money. Slipper money. <laughs> All right, Rich. Money. Yeah, I think you'll find that is a business, but not the restaurant uh, business. Yeah. What? You have to check your clothes, like your hat and your coat. Oh, I see. When you come in. Okay, Betty. 
Put on a tie. Good Put on God. a tie. <laughs> We're a tie. It's two for you, one for you. We're at the end of round one. And now I gotta stop at this moment and do this bit of business. Goodbye. Hey, listen, you were terrific. Team Raver in Match Game 74. Join us next time. Goodbye. <laughs>
She has Lhasa's... Uh, Apsos. Those are dogs. Yes, I, I know. Lhasa Apsos. That That's a horse. That's Lhasa a Apsos very a inside answer there. Uh -huh. Okay. Well... Now, Richard <laughs> you Dawson. You come up and guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's got you there. <laughs> <laughs> this is what... Uh, I said... Probably the... I, I say this in sincerity. Probably the greatest host in television. Not probably. Make oh, a definite statement. <laughs> But certainly one of the worst answer givers, <laughs> this clown said sisters. Sisters, sisters is that's a good answer. Naturally, I said kisses, and uh, that's ah. correct. <coughs> there you go, Major. You got one. Sisters. Is Sis lousy. Sisters is a terrific answer. She doesn't answer. carry sisters around. Yeah, with she's her. got them with her all the time. They hang on or her tail out of there. Let's send right. him back to England, sweetheart. Shall we do belong? that? Deport this fellow. What yes. did you say? I didn't say kisses or sisters. What did you say? I bet you didn't. I said goulashes. One of my goulashes. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Thanks for saving me. <laughs> All right, Major, you didn't do too well with that. You've got one. Now you need one to tie, two to win. Jerry, you're in a good spot here. Let's see how it works. The captain of the ship said, "I have good news and bad news. The good news is that all the booze you can drink is on the house. The bad news is that we're blank." <laughs> is that we're blank. Yeah, we heard that part. No, I want the first part. Let's do that one over yeah. again. All right. Wow. Captain of the ship said, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is that all the booze you can drink is on the house. The gotcha. bad news is that we're blank. The bad news is that we are blank. <laughs> I don't like the way you say that. Let me just see what you've done here. Very good, very good. Terrific answer. Yes, I thought so. You got a terrific answer? Probably. The captain, yeah, you got a terrific the captain answer. said what we The are. captain said, the bad news is that we're blank. The ca what was the first one? Come on, it's here on this boat, you see. And they all went together. I get all. Got a thousand people on the boat. <laughs> a thousand people yes. on the boat. But the bad news is we're blank. Yeah. She still didn't understand it. <laughs> Is everybody waiting for a little me? Yes, Brad. <laughs> yes. I'm all ready. Always. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Jerry Chiavetta, the captain of the ship, said, I have good news and bad news. The good news is that all the booze you can drink is on the house. The bad news is that we're... A ship. We're what? what? A ship. A ship. We've been on a little over a year. That may be the worst answer we've had in the history of the show. See, I said it's the ca a captain, and the implication is that he is on a ship because you I said captain. You leave that girl alone. alone. Hey, you didn't touch yeah. her. Hey. All right, we'll find out right now. She said oh. the bad news is that we're a ship. She said that. She said that. You know, I if I matched believe. her, I would have myself committed. Yes. <laughs> How do you say? Oh, I said the bad news is that we're sinking. That's right. Of course. Right, See, yeah, the first she, was... she meant a ground, right? Or something? A, a, a ground, a ship. Is that I what you meant? A, a, a ship? A vast July. ahoy. Well, he said the drinks were on the house, and they're you not on a house. house. And ship. Oh, house, house and house. ship. Yeah. But I said the captain of the ship's. Well, all right. Brett, what did you say? You're going to love my answer. Am I? <laughs> if you like her answer, you're just going to be crazy about The bad that. news is that we're. We're in a castle. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, Richard. How many years have you been on? Uh, uh, and about that's you. the worst answer you ever got? That's right. Well, it's the worst question I've ever heard. But in answer to it, I gave a pretty bad answer, too. Out pretty here. bad. Well, it's terrible. Terrible. For old Richard Deacon, terrible. he's terrible out question, of it. Terrible question, terrible answer. Okay, the Jer answer Jerry Chiavetta's <clears> looking for <throat> is a ship. The bad news is that we're a ship. What did you say? No. I didn't no. have a good answer. I said that we are sinking. Sinking is the answer, right, audience? Okay. Got two more chances to get a ship there. Richard? Sinking, though. Sinking. Patty Deutsch has a very pensive look on her face. She do, don't she? She do. Yes, I said the bad news is, is that we're out of ice. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Stand by for a moment or so here.
Jerry, you're, you're going to leave here with a pretty good bundle of money. I can't one. complain at all. One game you won, and you did very well with that. Two thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars. Fun to meet you. Thank you, Jerry Chiapetta. Goodbye. Uh, you got to stand by here for a moment or so while we're getting all set for the big money super match. You ready? Yes, I am. All right. We'll uh, get to that right after we get to this message. Here we are with Major Goolsby. This is his first time up here for the big money super match. And uh, he's got his $100. Now he's going to try for over $5,000. you are happy about being here, right? That's right, Jim. <laughs> okay, Major. We're ready to go, and this is the way it goes, Major. We polled the recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Fortune blank. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500. You got to match it, though. Then if you match the next one, you get $250. And the third, $100. Which celebrities do you want a little assist from? Uh, Richard. Fortune. Something I call Gene when we're alone. <laughs> cookie. <laughs> Fortune cookie. He loves that. Yes. Another one? Uh, Britt. What Jack married me for, because he was a fortune hunter. Fortune hunter. <laughs> and he came Thank up empty-handed, I might add. <laughs> and he what? Came up empty-handed. Came up empty-handed. <laughs> One more, Major. Charlie. Charlie Brill. Um, fortune Teller. Fortune Teller. Now you got three, Major. You got Fortune Teller, Fortune Hunter, Fortune Cookie. You want one of those or you want to give us one of your own? I said Fortune Cookie. Medsa, medsa, they say. Eh, maybe yes, maybe no. We're going to find out right now. That's Richard's answer. Fortune cookie is the one we're looking for. Is it up there? If so, where is it? First, may we see the $100 response? Fortune hunter. That's the one that Brett gave you, right? Okay. That's true. Still looking for fortune cookie. Here is the $250 response. Fortune cookie. Congratulations, you got it. Okay. What do you think's up there? Fortune teller. <laughs> Teller. You think fortune teller's up there? Yeah. You agree with him? Yeah. Okay. May we see it if you please? Fortune teller it is. All right. So that means you're going to play for $2,500, Major. Which one celebrity do you think you can match in order to collect that? I have to go with Richard. You ought to go to Richard. Okay, Richard, get back to I gave him that kiss earlier. That's right. The kiss helped out a lot. All right, here we go. $2,500 question. Good blank. Good blank. G-O-O-D. He's finished. Now, Major, we call on you and ask you to give us an answer which you think will match his. What do you say? Good times. Good times. Yeah. All right. He says good times. Uh, popular CBS TV hit. Uh, we've had Jimmy Walker on this show quite a bit. He's on good times, isn't he? Richard, for 2500 may we see your answer? That's the person you should have matched it with, Jimmy Walker. <laughs> He's not here, though. I know. You're the I one wrote... who... Day. You day. said good day. You know what I thought of good morning? Did you Goodbye. Goodbye. Good good luck. Luck. Okay. Good, good evening. Luck. Good Shabbos. Good news. <laughs> good Shabbos. I never right. get juicy. <laughs> All right. Good Shabbos. Now, listen, Major, you got $350 total, and you're going to play another game right now. You ready? Then let's welcome Darla Hager. Hi there. Okay, I guess it's stopped. Darla, you know Major Goosby. Now, Darla, would you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh, I have a wonderful husband and a beautiful little two-year-old named Jennifer. <laughs> and I'm a dental hygiene student at Pasadena City College. You have pretty teeth. Thank you. <laughs> how do I, how do I know? <laughs> oh, they look pretty good. <laughs> I de them this morning. Very well. <laughs> I do that every day. Do you? Yes, I do. Good. See? About five patients a day. <laughs> you have five patients a day. All right. You ready, Darla? Yes. Here we go. Bing. Make a selection. B. B. Everybody plays new game. Dr. Welby said, my last patient had an unusual injury. It's the first time I ever had to put someone's blank in a cast. <laughs> an unusual injury? 
<laughs> Most unusual. First time I ever had to put someone's blank in a cast. Was it a male or a female patient? I don't know. Dr. Welby hasn't come down from surgery yet, so we don't know if it's a male or a female. Dr. Welby said my last patient had an unusual injury. It's the first time I ever had to put someone's blank in a cast. Ready, ready, ready. Ready, ready. You really have been breathing, yes. Richard, you're fiddling around, you're ready. Okay, Darla Hager. Dr. Welby said my last patient had a most unusual injury. It's the first time I ever had to put someone's blank in a cast. Heart. Heart. Okay, she said heart. And yeah, broken heart. <laughs> he had a broken heart, right. Yes. Charlie? He also had a broken tookie. <laughs> if you could put it in a cast, I don't, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Brett, what do you say? I say I did not have all the facts, and I had to draw my own conclusions as to the sex of this patient. And I decided that it was a lady patient, and he had to put her bust in a cast. Okay, that's your answer. Richard? I'm, I'm busted with it. I'm busted, too. <laughs> you did. Okay. So that's two we've got. We've got a pair. All right. <laughs> you make it three, my dear. I'll have three. <laughs> Maybe three. Make it three and she can join the circus. <laughs> Step right up and see that no. <laughs> you don't want to show it? Well, no, 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 no. Oh, oh all right. Well, you said it was his first time they'd ever done this. And the That's only right. thing I can think that you wouldn't put in a cast that they don't put in a cast when it's oh, broken. Oh, get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> Leave that girl alone. I have to shave again. His <laughs> nose. Nose. That's a good answer. Well, I thought it was a very sure, unusual very good. answer. Unusual answer. When you have uh, your nose fixed, they put it in plaster, don't they? No, they don't put it in a cast. They just put a little Band-Aid there. They, they set it and they put a uh, hunk of tape there and that's know? it. I've seen it many times. Football players have a hunk of tape there all the time. Well, I think that's just to write telephone numbers down on it. No. <laughs> well, they write plays there. 27, 32, hike, I'm three. Okay. What do you say? Well, this patient went skating for skating? the first time. Yes. Uh, had to put his derriere in a his cast. His derriere. Most unusual injuries, the first time I ever had to put someone's blank in a cast, and the answer we're looking for is heart. You're not going to find it here. No. <laughs> I said his bottom. His bottom. I guess that scored more than any of the others. Major, your question will come up in a moment or so, but right now we've got to stop and take a look at this. Now, here we go with uh, the Major's, or Major's, first round question, and it is a little limerick. Are you ready for a little uh, limerick? No, oh, I you love limericks, limericks, don't you? Yeah. Say yes, of course. Yeah. 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 Farmer Brown's hair was all graying, cause his flock of old geese were not laying. His horse ate his hat, but still worse than that, his wife in the barnyard was blanking. You don't understand, you don't understand the question. I'll let you read it. Yourself. You have a nice voice. Read the question. Here is a limerick. Father Brown's hair was all graying because his flock of old geese were not laying. His heart... <laughs> but still worse than that, his wife in the barnyard was... Blanking. 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 So you got the idea now, Jenny? Yes. No. Right. Oh, I got it. I got it. You know how limericks rhyme? Yes, but I Yeah, I got it. Graying, laying, hat, that, blanking. I think we should say we like some limericks. You like some limericks, well, but not this not one. that one. Oh, yeah. Well, like it or not, that's it, folks. I've done it. You've done it? Nasty with me. Rhymes with that. Well, that's the only thing I can think of. Uh, All right. right. I, I want to okay, see beat the clock. Wrong with that. Well, yeah, nothing's already. wrong with anything, really. Here we go. Now, Major, Farmer Brown's hair was all graying because his flock of old geese were not laying. His horse ate his hat, but still worse than that, his wife in the barnyard was... Neighing. Neighing! That's a good one. 
<laughs> yeah, his wife in the barnyard was neighing. He came up with a good answer, dummies. Let me see yours now. Very good. Well, yeah. first. Dummy Charlie is first. Yes, uh, uh, that's true. <laughs> I am. Well, see, I, it may be a neighbor to uh, neighing. I, I put down braying. Braying. That's, the, the same. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's a good. Thank you. Okay. Scratch out the fact that I call him a dummy. Okay. Thank you so much. Dummy number two. Are you a dummy or not? Well, there were some Marines in the neighborhood. Yeah. And his wife was playing. I see. <laughs> okay. All right, it's, it's, you've got the idea of the limerick. It rhymes. Richard? Playing. Playing. Did you get the idea of the rhyme? No, not at all. I only think I could think that was rhyming was praying. Praying ain't a bad answer? Is that bad? No. He's looking for neighing. No one's matched it's him yet. It's a religious break. Yes, it was. What did you say, Richard? Oh, I've got a dizzy spell coming. Up. <laughs> you don't want to show your answer, do you? You're stalling because you got a rotten answer, haven't you, Richard? He's neighing rotten. Neighing is terrific. Hey! Yeah. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed of myself. I'm ashamed of myself for doubting you. you. Right into That's that, right. Didn't I? <laughs> What did you say? Nothing terribly okay, bright. Okay, nothing terribly bright. No, I, I said praying. Praying, okay. Neighing it is, so at the end of round one, it is, you have nothing, right? It's uh, one to nothing, favor the current champ, and we gotta stop right here, and don't go away, though, because we got more of this. Come right back. That's it, celebrities. Gotta quit here and now, and uh, we'll pick up with round two with our two players over there next time. Thank you all. You were just splendid. <laughs> <laughs> Join us next time for Match Game 74. Gene Rayburn here. Goodbye. <laughs> This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 74, a Mark Goodson, Bill Sudman production. Stay tuned for Tattletales next over most of the CBS stations. Get ready to match the stars. Gene Wood, Brett Summers, Gary Burkhoff, Amanda Blake, Richard Dawson, and Joyce Bulevant as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 74. And now here's the star of Match Game 74, Gene Rivers. Johnny Olson, and thank you, dear friends and gentle hearts. Who is that? Now, listen, all us regulars who've been here time and time and again will uh, welcome the two new kids on the block. <laughs> if you can't uh, say it, we're not going to do it. <laughs> Amanda Blake and Gene Wood, we welcome you. Yeah, hey. We've worked together before. Yes, we have. We had a good time together, didn't we? Marvelous yes, time. Yes, and enjoyed meeting your husband, too. And thank we've you. worked together before. We sure have. And we had a good time. Thank you. You're nice a stranger to, to me, but... Yeah. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Splendid. Son of a gun. Listen, i got to find out about this. You're all fuzzy. <laughs> well, tune your horizontal hold. What's the... <laughs> What's that? That's yeah, interesting, isn't it? Drinks. You find that interesting? I think it's I'm growing attractive. a beard because I'm doing a picture. Really? Uh, Jack Klugman, life story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing Brett. <laughs> Now, uh, Gary says what? I happen to know if he's doing Jack Klugman's life story, he's playing the part of a racehorse. I know that for a fact. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's we could have done without from that, you, I huh? think. All right, let's <laughs> welcome our two players now. Here are Pat Pollard and Judy Tyson. <laughs> Judy Tyson. Tyson. How much money have you won, Pat? $600. You've won $600. Yeah. That's right. Now, you've got an eagle on your lapel. Shall I ask about that? Yes, you can. Okay. How about that eagle on your lapel? Listen, well, look at what he's done to your suit. Uh, no. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> yes. What about that eagle on your lapel, Pat? That's a special award, the company's highest award for yeah. sales performance. Oh, well, yeah. congratulations to you. That's very good. Yeah. Okay. 
He got $600, a current champ. Had we started this game? No, we hadn't. We were just about, uh, we had introduced you and you told us a little bit about yourself, but since it's been a long time since that happened and I got a rotten memory, would you tell us about yourself all over again, all Judy? All right. Uh, I live in Upland, California, and I have a wonderful husband and a son, 10 years old, and teach baton twirling. And what? And I teach baton twirling. You teach baton yes. twirling? Oh. Did you bring your baton? I will. You will. <laughs> okay, good luck to you, Judy. We'll begin this game right after we hear this message of interest. Here we go. Push this button, reveal our first round questions, ask Judy to make a selection. A, please. A is what you want, A is what you get. Brand new game, everybody plays. Here we go. The midget cowboy got thrown off the farm when they caught him blanking the chickens. <laughs> <laughs> Says that right there. The midget cowboy got thrown off the farm when they caught him blanking the chickens. All right. Judy, did you hear that? Oh, I love right. my answer. You love your answer. I bet we're going to like it, too. Okay, he's ready, and he's ready. Chicken All right, put it in the slot, and away we go. Now, all of our celebrities are ready. We call on Judy Tyson. The midget cowboy got thrown off the farm when they caught him blanking the chickens. Riding. What? Riding. Riding the chickens. All right, we'll find out. Bareback, uh, Judy, or just, uh, did he have a small saddle, or did he ride the chickens Very bareback? small. Small saddle, not bareback. Most All midgets right. do have small saddles. <laughs> Among other things. Come on, show your answer there. Oh, well, uh, since it was a midget cowboy, I'll make yeah. this very short. He was plucking. Plucking the chicken. Yes. That must have hurt. Okay. What did you say, Brett? Well, he killed him first. Oh. And he was an old-fashioned chicken plucker. A chicken plucker. All right, Gary. <laughs> oh, just get that answer up there. <laughs> kissing the chicken. Well, kissing the chickens. That must be very difficult to do. <laughs> the midget cowboy got thrown off the farm when they caught him blanking the chickens, and Judy says... Uh, riding the chickens, and you say... Well, I don't know anything about midget cowboys. Oh. I'm only used to the big ones. Oh. So I said, uh, loving. Loving the chickens. <laughs> oh. Doesn't make them a bad that, person. That's right. <laughs> All right. The... I hope they'll both be very happy. Yes. <laughs> Okay, oh, Shaggy Well, I knew the old rascal, you and did. he was plucking them. He was plucking the chickens. He certainly was. Okay. What do you say? I had the same cowboy on my ranch. He was plucking. Mm. All right. Now, we had a lot of chicken plucking, but no chicken riding there. So you didn't score. Judy, let's see how Pat does with his first round question. Let me tell you about Rosalie. Rosalie is such a klutz. How much of how a klutz is she? she? I'll tell you how klutzy she is. Here's how klutzy she is. At the restaurant, she stuck a toothpick in her blank. <laughs> yes! Oh, shot! Yes, she did. You've got to swing that rag. Rosalie is mother. such a klutz at the restaurant, she stuck a toothpick in her blank. You have to repeat him for pizza? Well, for her, I do. Klutz is enough. <laughs> Let's take it easy. I go okay. with Rosalie. Yes, you go with Rosalie? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Oh, well, then I know what the answer is. She stuck a toothpick in her blank. You know what a klutz is, an awkward person. Yes, I know what a klutz is, for heaven's sakes. I was married to one for 18 years. <laughs> That's what I call a setup. Yes. Okay, the bottom tier is ready. You have a poem? Not now. <laughs> okay, Pat Pollard. Rosalie is such a klutz at the restaurant, she stuck a toothpick in her blank. In her ear. In her ear. Oh. Ooh. They used to do that during World War II and <laughs> puncture their eardrums to, be, uh, to keep from getting drafted. What'd you say? Well, I said that she was trying for an olive, but she got herself in the navel. I see. Yeah, she said, I... <laughs> He said, I think I'll, I've got a hunk of meat in my tooth. <laughs> 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 
What do you say? You know what? I got Rosalie mixed up with dumb Dora. Oh! <laughs> now, wait a minute. It may, the it the same thing you. may apply. Well, I said she stuck a toothpick in her martini. Now, I don't know what that means. And I'm not going to ask. <laughs> Did you get it mixed well, up? Don't move me. It's early in no, the week. I, I need all the help I can get. Yes, right. <laughs> Here is the answer he is looking for. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking for an ear. Are you a dreamer? Yeah. You can't be klutzier than to stick it in your date. <laughs> All right. Now wait a minute. <laughs> well, you could be klutzier instead of sticking it in your date. You could stick it in your fig. I could. <laughs> okay, okay there, Amanda. What do you say? Well, I say that great minds work in the same direction. So you have... Ear. Ear. So there's one match for Pat. Okay, now we come to the I hirsute was, uh, one. Yes, I was in the restaurant when Rosalie was there. Oh. Just eating a big meal. Yes. Took the toothpick, went... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear. It was yes. a nasty sight. Yes. Uh, she listed all the way home. <laughs> Rick wants to know where. It wasn't one of those that you, that you blew up. No, I don't want no. to go into it. No. <laughs> if it, it was, was one you blew up, she'd really be in trouble. That's right. <laughs> Make a loud noise and all that. <laughs> they got the bang out of that. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay. Uh, go, go, Joyce. Gary. Yes, ma'am. You want to go out with me sometime? I said in her date. In her date. <laughs> uh, so we had two dates, one boob, no one navel. Oh, we had all kinds and of peachy park answers park there. And a, a pear tree. tree. <laughs> right. Okay, so at the end of round one, one and nothing in favor of a current champ. Round two coming up right after this. Okay, here we go with round two. I push this button, reveal our second round questions, and ask Judy to make a selection. A again, please. A again. Now, everybody play since uh, she didn't match anyone the first time. The forest ranger said, every year, there's a nudist convention in the forest. I can watch them without being noticed because I dress up as a blank. Who said that? The forest ranger? The forest ranger said that. He said, every year during the nudist convention, I can watch them without being noticed because I dress up as a blank. Yeah, he's alone a lot. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. All right. Got the I can't idea? I tell you how I hate that question. Oh, that's a beautiful question. And I'll tell you what my answer is later. All right. Good. Finished, finished. He's got one. Finito. You're very quick at this. Yes. You have a quick mind. No, no, I have a quick pen. Oh, I see. Okay. Ready? Here we go. Judy. The forest ranger said every year, there's a nudist convention in the forest. I can watch them without being noticed because I dress up as a... Tree? As a tree. <laughs> yeah. That's not bad. A little camouflage. Yeah. Stick a branch in your ear. That's bad. <laughs> true. How about a toothpick? Oh, or a toothpick. In your yeah. navel. <laughs> what did you say? Well, I figured Forest Ranger, I thought of bear, so I said he dressed up as a bear. As Since a bear? Yeah. Uh -huh. B-A-R-E, a bear. Bear would be good. Yeah, yeah. Get a bear skin? Sure. Right. Okay, Brett. I don't know. I don't think bear's so hot. I'd come up with better. I said a smoky bear. A smoky bear. <laughs> so we got two bears so far. I would have said ponderosa pine or something like that. Tree, I think, is a very good answer, Judy. I hope it works for you. What do you say? I heard the three little pigs and three little bears, right? Here at bears. <laughs> three bears. Well, I guess we're wrong, Judy. The bears are coming up here. How about you, Amanda? What else? Bear. Four bears so far. She's looking for a tree. Will someone give her a tree? Hey, Harry. <laughs> give, her a bear. Give, her a tree. give the girl a tree, will you? I love you? that story about the three bears. You Mommy like the story bear, about the... Daddy bear, that baby bear from a previous marriage. <laughs> <laughs> bear, that's the answer. He bear. bear. Yeah. <laughs> well, Judy, you got to match Joyce to stay in the game. Go. Well, <laughs> I don't know where you get a tree costume. So I said a Smokey the Bear. Smokey the Bear. You got six bears there. Pat Pollard, win the game. Come on down, Pat. Congratulations. Okay, stand by for a moment. 
Sorry to see you go so soon, Judy. You're a sweet lady, and we've got a gift for you backstage, together with our thanks for being with us on Match Game 74. Judy Tyson. Goodbye. Now, Pat, you're up to $700. This is your second shot at the big money. Over $5,000 can be yours here if it all works for you. You ready? Yes, I am. All right, you know how this goes. We polled a recent studio audience, Pat. We got their best response to this. Crystal blank. Mm. Crystal blank. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500. You've got to match it, though. Now, if you match that next one, you get $250, and the third, $100. Which ones do you want to choose for some help? I'll choose Amanda. Amanda, what do you say? Do you fill in that blank with what? Crystal? Ball. Crystal ball. Okay. There's one. Richard. Richard? Crystal? Present. Yeah. <laughs> Crystal? Oh, uh, crystal chandelier. Chandelier. <laughs> Just came to you right on the spur of the moment, didn't you? Thank you. It's quick my pleasure. Did, didn't he? Okay, one more. All right, Brett. Oh. Brett, do you, you have You think a... I don't have something, don't you, Jean Ray? Well, it's hard in the third position That's to have That's your feeling one. about this. Well, I do have something. What have you got? <laughs> it's probably the 500 uh, award. What? I'm trying to think of it now. <laughs> crystal... That! What? Crystal, Crystal set. They came in when she was 35. <laughs> Crystal radio. set. I like yeah. it, Brett. Radio. Radio. Yeah, Crystal, Crystal set. set radio. Okay, so you got <laughs> Crystal chandelier, <laughs> Crystal ball, and Crystal set. You know what a crystal set is? Yes. Oh, you do? You're older than I thought you were there. I thought I was the only one who knew what a crystal set was. Old us old folks, me and Brett. Okay, now you want to choose one of those or think they up one of the other? me out, Mary. Okay, <laughs> Bessie, it's just me. Name, Mary? What do you want to do here? Crystal ball. You want the crystal ball? That's what we're looking for. Crystal ball. Let's find out if it's up there and if so where. First, may we see the $100 response? Crystal chandelier is up there, the one that penny. Richard gave you. Looking for crystal ball, here is a $250 response. Crystal oh. clear. That's a stripper at the Largo. Right. <laughs> Last chance for crystal ball, here is the $500 response. Yeah! Congratulations. Okay, very good. So, that's the one that Amanda gave you, right? So now you've got $1,200 all together, Pat, and you're going to play for another $5,000. But in order to collect the $5,000, you've got to match one celebrity. And which one will it be? Amanda. Okay, Amanda, you get ready to write. Pat's going to face me. And I will get the 5000 question out of the slot here. Here it is. Dust blank. That's D-U-S-T blank. Dust blank. <laughs> All right, she's writing. Now, Amanda's finished, Pat. We want you to give us an answer which you think will match hers. What do you say to that? Dust blank. Dust cloth. Dust cloth. Okay. Then the audience says... Mm, maybe yes, maybe no. Who knows? Well, you never know until she holds her card up. All right, Amanda, for $5,000, may we see your answer? I just, you know, I'm not very much a homemaker, and I'm kind of the outdoor girl. And I said dust storm. Dust storm is what she I'm said. I'm sorry. Okay, so you get to keep the $1,200, and you get to play another game, and that's going to happen Pat, right after this message. Here we go. Now... We're ready to start a new game, if you are. Everybody, are you ready, Pat? I am. Okay, yes. he's got it all together. Now let's introduce a new player. Here is Maureen Thompson. How are you? Fine. You know Pat Crawley? Yeah. Now, Maureen, would you give us your story, please? Well, I have the most beautiful husband in the world. Yeah, they all say that, but... You, you really believe it, don't you? Yeah, you bet, really. Yeah. Is he here? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> okay. I have seven children. You have seven children? Seven. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, no wonder. <laughs> Maureen, now, I believe you have the most beautiful husband in the world. You've got seven children there. What else do you want to tell us about you? Oh, well, I was just going to say my oldest is 13, and I had him when I was two. 
Yes, of course. <laughs> okay. And my mother loves you, absolutely. Well, I love your mother. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Where does your mother live? In Washington. D.C.? No, the state. The state of Washington. Yes. Okay, good luck to you and good luck to Pat. Here we go. Ready? Maureen, would you please make a selection? A. Here we go. New game, folks. Okay. Now, I guess everybody here and everybody in the studio and you at home, you've all seen Gene Wood's commercial. You know the one he does where he holds up three spoons of coffee and someone picks the richest one? Are you familiar with that commercial? Anyway, you'll never believe it, but today... <coughs> He gave the three-spoon test to a lady with three blanks. Oh. <laughs> I love it. You don't. Right, then write it down there. <laughs> Just trust your first instinct. Mm -hmm. If that young woman has yes, seven Yes, he does it. Had three spoons of coffee and someone picks the richest one. Well, you'll never believe it. Today he gave the three-spoon test to a lady with three blanks. You'd like that. Yes. <laughs> I like it. Are you finished? You? Yeah. And, uh, Just a minute. I'm taking my time. Yes. Well, I want to get see. it right. <laughs> all right. Here we go. If you're all set over there, we'll call on Maureen. Have you seen Gene Wood's commercial? With oh, the... yes. Oh, you're all right. And you know, you. Uh, today he gave the three-spoon test to a lady with three blanks. Eyes. What? Eyes. Three eyes. <laughs> Maureen, they are warming the cockles of your heart, aren't they? <laughs> now, in a moment, when we start calling on the dingalings, <laughs> and you hear possibly that no one says eyes, it says you'll see why they are awing here. Don't say the answer now. We'll call on this dingaling here to say his answer first. Yeah, three spoonfuls. Yes. And uh, that the lady with three. Yes, right. An A, B, and C, three cups. Oh, three cups. That's not why they were wait, calling wait Maureen. <laughs> oh, they turn yeah. quick oh, here, don't right. they? <laughs> <laughs> Where's you? Gary, come back. I don't, I'm not sure I can. I'm not sure. <laughs> now, let's uh, find... The, when the audience applauds uh, real loud, you'll know why they were owing you. All right, Brett, show. What? <laughs> <laughs> but don't tell. Did you have a nice time while you were gone? Yes, had a terrific time. Show and tell your answer. Show, I thought it was Gene Barry who did that. <laughs> I said three miles. Oh. That's only about forty percent of the audience. So forty percent of yet. those people. What are do you my say, friends? Gary? I say if they get any more hostile, I'm leaving. I said B cups. Three B cups. <laughs> what do you say, Amanda? Well, I never heard of anybody that tasted with their eyes, so I said three mouths. Three mouths. Okay, Richard. This lady met Rosalie in the restaurant after she... <laughs> All yeah. together now. Boom. <laughs> yeah. That's That's right, right, right. Right. Okay, Joyce. Well, I said, I said that she had three bosoms. Three bosoms. Well, she... Sorry, Gene, huh? my mother, my mother once told me about a friend of hers who has two bosoms in front yes. and two in back, and boy, was she fun to dance with. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Maureen, you've had your first round of questions. No, Yours is yet to come up, but right now we got this. Just a second, say goodbye. Thank you, one and all. Gene Weber, Match Game 74. <laughs> Anything special today? 
Well, now, save some, because you got a long ways to go here. I have a couple of newies for you. That's right. All us old folks on the block, that's all the celebrities here who've been here before, yeah. will warmly greet the two new celebrities, yes. Avery Schreiber and Phyllis Newman. Yes. How yeah. delighted we are to have you with us. And a boy, go get him. <laughs> now, tell you how we greet. Yeah, I've seen your act before. <laughs> You do know how we yes, do it. Okay, days. Avery, I'll show you how we do it here, too. I haven't seen, I've never worked with you. I've worked with Phyllis before, and she's a delightful lady, but you're a very talented guy also, and I've never worked with you before, and it's a pleasure to have you here. It's good to be here. Thank you. Well, that's not so funny so far, <laughs> is it? That's because you didn't kiss him. It's only funny when you kiss. Now let's Who's welcome that? our two civilians, Fred Mills and Carol Holmes. Hello there. champion has won $8,000 and he's wearing a snappy looking suit. Thank he's you. a snappy kid, isn't he? Good looking guy. What are you doing after? No, that's him. <laughs> and Carol Holmes is challenging him and we've played one round and the score at this moment is five to one in favor of the challenger. And you got some doing to do there, don't you? Yes, I do. Okay, well, we'll do it right after this message for you. Are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. I'll push this button, reveal our second round questions, and ask Carol to make a selection. I'll stay with A. A it is. Now, there's only one person playing, and that is Avery Schreiber. Oh! <laughs> what? And that's yes. a true thing he said. Is this my life? This what do you is mean? just for you, dear. Now, here's what happened. The first round was played yesterday oh, okay. when you were not here, and everyone matched Carol except the person who was sitting in this position who was pretty dumb. <laughs> no. Phyllis, you just turned, Phyllis, Phyllis just laughed. I don't remember laughed. who it was. No, it she just went totally no, blank. It, wasn't, and pulled uh, down the it was just one of those things. So this is only for oh, you. Ready? Okay. Baron von Frankenstein said, Oh, a dialect. Auntie <laughs> I said, Since today is Valentine's Day, I'm going to give my monster a blank. He must have been really stupid. Yeah. It was a different question yesterday. Oh, you have to do something. <laughs> you write what you think is. Uh, since today is Valentine's Day, I'm going to give my monster a blank. Think about that while he's writing his. Then you put the card in the slot, Avery. I put the card. Yes, I'm, the... I'm here to help you think of me as my a helper. <laughs> All right, Carol Holmes. Enemy. Baron von Frankenstein said, since today is Valentine's Day, I'm going to give my monster a... Heart. A heart. Okay. Now, she understood the question very well, Avery. Did you understand the question? Yes, I did. And what did you write? A heart. Heart. Now, see, and now that you've matched her, it says, don't write. Oh. Okay? Just do what we tell you to and shut up. They ought to have a sign up there that says, don't worry. Right. <laughs> okay, now, Fred, don't you've got to match five celebrities to stay in the game and achieve a tie. Everyone plays... Except... Except... Ta-da! Ta-da! <laughs> okay. This is for I'm everyone. I'm glad she's not playing. This is for, <laughs> this is for everyone except Beulah Witch. The trouble is, when she's not playing, she still sits here. <laughs> now, here we go. Now, this is very important for Fred, so listen carefully, if you would. On Christmas Eve, when Santa got to the very first house, he reached into the sack of toys for the toys and discovered two of his elves blanking in the sack. <laughs> One more time. Say it again. On Christmas Eve, when Santa got to the very first house, he reached into the sack of toys and discovered two of his elves blanking in the sack. The audience has got it. I'm not writing, so I can look. Oh. But you may be a telepathist. Got the idea? Yes, I do. Oh, she got the it's idea, the only Avery. Knew what Dawson threw and you away. you got the idea? Cause I got the idea. All right. <laughs> do you? Huh? 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 <laughs> 
Yes, he writes I agree with you, Gary. very slowly, doesn't you're, he? Yes, you're a very slow writer. Can you write a little faster? It's I, done. I, I, yeah, now put it in the slot there. Put it in the slot. I know they told you to write big, but okay, there it is. Fred Mills. On Christmas Eve, when Santa got to the very first house, he reached into the sack of toys and discovered two of his elves blanking in the sack. Kissing. Yay! Yay! Do elves do that too? <laughs> That's how, well, that's how they get what little elves. Well, that's how they get little elves. What do you think stunted their growth? I didn't know that. So gonna... No okay, wonder you don't have any children. Come everybody, Fred. Let's go. <laughs> you need five kisses. Go, Avery. It's very interesting because Avery means king of the elves. It does? Yes. No one knows that. In what language? In English. Oh, in English. Avery, king of the elves. Which one is that? Avery, English. Oh. Okay. Oh. Sleeping. Oh. oh. Congratulations. Uh, you got $100. You stand by for a moment while we say goodbye to Fred Mills, who will be leaving here with a smile on his face and a song in his heart because he has won a total of $8,000. Right here we go with Carol Holmes, who hasn't been up here before, have you? Why are you standing so far away from me? Oh, oh, that's true. She's a very quick study, isn't she? <laughs> now, Carol, the way this works is, first you stand close to me, <laughs> like this. No. And you what, get the money what? without answering, right? <laughs> no, no, we got, I guess we better do this now, huh? We polled a recent studio audience, Carol, and we got their best response to this. Blank stone. Now, the answer that audience gave most often is worth $500. Bing. If you match it. You're a little slow with the binger there, fellas. If you match the next one, you get two. Oh, wait, now you're a little fast with the binger there. Now, wait, a, don't bing until I tell you to bing. All right, then if you match the bottom one, you get 100. Bing. Oh, boy. Is Gus on the binger? Oh, we got a new binger, that's why. Where's Gus today? He's on sabbatical. That's, uh, he's what? Oh, Deidre's on. Oh, we got a lady binger today? I never had a lady binger before in this show there. Anyway, three celebrities are allowed to give you a little help. Whom do you choose? Richard, please. Uh, the Blarney Stone. The Blarney Stone. There's one. Phyllis. Phyllis. Gem. Gemstone. There are two. One person. Yeah. Avery. Avery. Birthstone. Birthstone. <laughs> okay. Okay, Avery. So you got birthstone, gemstone, and blarney stone. Now you can take one of those, Carol, or if you don't like any of them, you think you got a better one, give us that. What do you want to do? I thought of something else, but. Uh... Oh my God. Oh my God. Rolling Stone. Kid. You think Rolling Stone would be a good choice? Yeah. Well, you know, that didn't occur to me, but now that you say it, I think it's not a bad idea. All right, Rolling Stone, she's on her own. She rejected the celebrity yeah. suggestions. She's chosen Very the wise. Rolling Stone. You made a good choice. And uh, if you sink, you sink alone. I know. We're not going down with you there. Awesome, Captain is not going down here. with the boat this time. I don't want anybody to feel guilty. <laughs> oh, well, that's a very sweet thought. Let's find out if Rolling Stone is up there, and if so, where? First, may we see the $100 response? Tombstone. <laughs> It was an older group. Just strike a cheery note. Old bunch here that day. <laughs> now let's find out if Rolling Stone is under the two hundred and fifty dollar response. Birthstone. Where's that one? That's the one Avery gave you. Okay. Last chance for Rolling Stone. Audience, you touted her on this. Now you're gonna get it if it's not under there. <laughs> you're gonna be sorry. Last chance. The five hundred dollar response. You're right. This is a very unusual audience, John. I could tell just as soon as I walked out that there was something different about them. They're smarter than the ones we usually get. <laughs> okay, 
Carol. Well, Carol, you got the $500. Now you play for 10 times that amount, or $5,000. But before you can collect, you've got to match one celebrity head-to-head. -head. It has to be exact. Which one will it be? I'll try Richard. You'll try Richard. Well, sure. I gave her Blarney Stone. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why wouldn't you, you choose me? me? And here is the $5,000 question. Blarney blank. blank. No, <laughs> not blank. <laughs> it's blank Jones. J-O-N-E-S. Blank Jones. Finished. Now, we need an answer from you which you think will match Richard Dawson's answer. What do you say? Blank Jones. Tom Jones. Tom Jones? That was my first thought. Is that your first thought? Yeah. Okay, Richard, for $5,000, she says Tom Jones will match you. What do you say? Well, it's your own fault, because I said Blarney. You can, you can Blarney see that I'm not... Uh... Barnaby Remember Jones? The girl, no, the girl who was in the Adams family. Carolyn Jones. Oh, Carolyn. Oh, yeah. Oh, her middle name's Tom. Oh. Charlene, would you, if you would, please? Well, she's very happy and she's very excited. Oh, look, he's you, are you realize that we're still on camera? You don't know. <laughs> I, all I said. Was... <laughs> oh, that girl. I want to tell you something. That girl blushes easier than any person I've ever known in my life. And she is probably so red now, it's unbelievable. She thought we were in the commercial, and she, well, I just said, throw me the box of Kleenex, because poor Carol here had shed a tear over her good fortune. There's a souvenir card for you. Well, listen, now, you're going to uh, pull yourself together and meet another player. You've got to play another game, and it's time to do that right now. So let's welcome Reed Montgomery. Reed, you know Weepy Carol Holmes, do you? Yeah. <laughs> She's uh, shedding tears of joy there. Tell us a Reed Montgomery story, if you would, please. Uh, it's kind of a flop, but uh, I'm, from, <laughs> I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. Yes. And uh, I've got twin little girls that are five months old, and I'm married. Yes. <laughs> I, have, uh, I have another little girl that's four years old. I'm a brick mason. You're a what? Brick mason. A brick mason. Uh -huh. That's, that's it. A, that's quite a, a skill. Yeah. May I see your hands? You're, uh, the, turn them around. Yes, you're a hard-working fellow. Yes, he's got calluses on his hands. He's a hard-working fellow. Gene, well, listen. Yes. I want to see a really hard-working pair of hands. Oh, that's <laughs> a, yeah. Well, I good luck to you, three Reed. Dishes you ready to have today. a go at it? Okay, I'll push this button, reveal our first-round questions, ask you to make a selection. A, please. A, it is. New game, everybody plays. <laughs> Everybody knows that Tony Bennett sang a certain song. And because backstage, and when we're goofing around all the time, he does a marvelous imitation of uh, Tony, Tony Bennett. That remains to be seen, seen just, sir. Just do that one Andrew. phrase. I, uh, that, he, everybody knows that Tony Bennett sang, I left my heart in San Francisco. <laughs> No Sonny Tufts could sing. <laughs> but nobody knows that Brett sang. <laughs> I left. No. <laughs> no, that's Jack, honey. Oh. <laughs> I left my blank in San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there it is. Everybody knows that Tony Bennett sang, I left my heart in San Francisco. Nobody knows that Brett sang, I left my blank in San Diego. Go, do something with that, with I'm dispatch, with, with expedition. Right. Oh, my... <laughs> <laughs> I left my heart in San Diego. Blank in San Diego. Across the bay. <laughs> Hello, Reed. Everyone knows that Tony Bennett sang, I left my heart in San Francisco, but nobody knows that Brett sang, I left my blank in San Diego. Well, she wears one, I guess, her bra. Her bra? <laughs> Brick Mason, you. She doesn't 
doesn't even she doesn't even wear what a, what goes in a bra. <laughs> He's bored a hole through the wall. Oh, he's just a little bit next door to yours, yes. isn't it? I see. All right. I knew I saw Blinky. Well, I thought it was the CBS. But it was only... <laughs> probably him. It was only to let the scent out, right? All right, here we go. He says... I left my bra in San Diego. Is uh, now, what do you say, Avery? Well, I wish I could have said that. <laughs> I thought that was very funny. Yes. But no, what I thought was that she left her car in San Diego. Oh. 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 <laughs> Don't hurt right. yourself. He's banging his head on the floor there. All right, sit down and get it all together. Okay, Brett, what do you say? This is your moment. I say, what am I doing on this show next to this madman, is what I say. <laughs> what you no, know, I said I left my, I left my mate My in mate San in San Francisco. Francisco? Oh, I see. Okay. Well, we've all heard, all right, oh. Gary, bra's the answer that uh, he's looking for. That is the dumbest answer I've heard in you know, the many really? weeks that I've done this show. Yeah. Ah, go to blank. Go to blank. It's ridiculous. You're always talking about it. You know, yes. lonely lady here. She left her husband there. <laughs> All, right, mate. Yeah. All right, two of one there. How about you, little girl? Well, I don't want you to think that this is a new show called Get Brett, but I said she's going to kill me. She left her brains. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that? You know, I never liked Phyllis Newman's laugh. <laughs> I was just trying to match. It wasn't a personal thing. <laughs> nothing personal. I thought that everybody would have thought that. <laughs> Keep He's giggling, honey. He says, but nobody knows that Brett's saying, I left my okay. bra in San Diego is what he says. What do you say? She left her wig there. Left her wig. Everybody knows she wears a wig. You might not have known that there. What about you, Patty? What about me? What about you, I say? I said that she left her jack in San Diego. Left her jack in San Diego. <laughs> All right, so none for you. Your question coming up right now, this for you. All right, here we go with the second half of round one. You ready, Carol? I'm ready. Here, let's see how you do with your first round question. Tarzan said to boy, let me teach you. <laughs> Let me teach you first law of jungle. Never buy blank from men who wear plaid suit. <laughs> Please say that again in English. Tarzan said to boy, "Let me teach you first law of jungle. Never yeah. buy blank from men who wear plaid suit." Do you realize that if I came from a rich family, I wouldn't have to answer that question? That's right. Write something there. I'm all just right. doing that to kill time while you're finishing your thing there. The Brett's ready. They're all ready down all here. Ready. Patty, are you ready? No. Remember, you went to college. Come on now. Yeah, you remember how to write words and all that? Oh. All right, you got it? Yeah. Okay. Carol. Wait a minute. I <laughs> She's drawing pictures Don't here. Well, come on, now. Glass just don't embellish it there. People here waiting to go home. Carson <laughs> said to boy, let me teach you first law of jungle. Never buy blank for men who wear plaid suit. All I can think of is clothes. Clothes? <laughs> it's gonna be one of those <laughs> pictures duels again. <laughs> <laughs> right, let me see it, Avery. Let me see. Alrighty. Monkey, I'm sorry, babe. Never but mind. Again, a monkey this woman's heart. from man who wear plaid suit. Okay, Brad, go. Oh, well, why not? I said vine. Vine. All right. You missed the whole point, man. Yeah, but did you get the point? Tell them what it is, Gary. Yes. I wish you'd get a play in New Never York, buy, honey. Would you buy? A... <laughs> Will you shut Come up. Come on, let's go. Would you, you buy a used elephant from this man? <laughs> buy a used elephant. There you go. All right. Listen, got? mine is good. I want you to consider this. Yeah. yeah. A used loin cloth. That's close. A used close. loin cloth. Yeah, right. Right. Okay. right. Okay. All right. Close. There it is. Go. Oh, I want to hear a ding. There's another There's one. There's another ding. That's two for you. How about you, Patty? No dings. No dings? No. I don't know where I was. I said never buy magazines. Never buy magazines. <laughs> okay. So at the end of round one, two to nothing, favor the champ. Now this message for you. Thanks. 
<laughs> Just a word of thanks to you and to you for joining us. Bye bye. Gene Rayburn here. Goodbye. <laughs> This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 74, a Mark Goodsonville Tubman production. Get ready to match the stars. Bert Cundy, Brett Summers, Gary Berghoff, Marianne Mobley, Richard Dawson, and Betty White. As we play the star at Big Money Match Game 75. What's the matter? Couldn't you afford the pants to go no, with I that couldn't. suit? <laughs> it's the best I could do. I see. Your hand me down. It's cheap. Oh, yeah. I think you look resplendent. Thank you, my dear. You are a woman of superb perception and taste. Well, I oh, tasted I it. Like she didn't taste that good to me. <laughs> Harry Truman? No, no I was no, never I'm... Harry Truman. Would you like to be Harry Truman? No, I don't want to be Harry Truman. <laughs> Would you, you want like to be best these Truman? Two pretty ladies? Oh, all right. All right, let's have one of these. Dolly Pressler and Linda Tejeda. <laughs> How much money have you won? That's right. You have won five thousand six hundred, and you've already spent it, haven't you? That's for sure. All right. <laughs> Now, we started this game, didn't we? And, Linda, you didn't score in your first round question, but you did. So it's one to nothing. And round two is coming up, but first we've got this message for you. All right. I push this button, reveal our second round questions. Ask Linda to make a selection. A, please. It is. Here we go. It is. I have a TV guide listing for you, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Well, give us a question first. Here it is. Listing. Try this. Okay. Sunday night, CBS, Apple's Way. Oh. It is a sad day at the Apple household when Apple discovers his family has a blank in it. Oh. <laughs> a sad day at the Apple household when Apple discovers his family has a blank in it. Right. I love the old Apple way. Got it? Yes, got it. I got it so it fast it made my head good. spin. Oh, really? Too Wait, bad. say that again. Okay. What is wrong with Marianne? Right. Lovely? She's been living in Africa do, do too something. long. We, we, okay. we can't wait for you forever, my dear. Hey, while we're waiting, what happens when you make it home something. to Bush? Hogan's Heroes, we were on for six years on this network. Yes. We were not taking off because of low ratings. No. Why were you taking off? Word of mouth killed us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just a little filler for you, Gene. <laughs> Linda. TV Guide listing, Sunday night, CBS, Apple's Way. It's a sad day at the Apple household when Apple discovers his family has a blank in it. A child. I couldn't think of anything. I've never seen the show. Oh, Linda. I've never seen the Apple. show. <laughs> she says a child. I've never seen the show. <laughs> you haven't. Well, you really don't have to see the show in order to respond uh, yeah. to this question, as you will find out in a moment, Linda. Bert. Yes. Show her what a good answer is for this question. Sad day. When the Apple family discovered a worm. A worm in the apple. Yeah, yeah. A worm in the apple. There it is, Brett. I've never seen the show either, but I've seen an apple. Yeah. And I put worms. Apples have worms. <laughs> All right, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> a worm, there it is. <laughs> That's a Oh, Charles Nelson Riley couldn't do that, could he? Charles Nelson Riley wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> you, you, sir, would be surprised. <laughs> do you have a worm in your apple? I hate to go along with the group. Oh, you do? What they discovered that they had a rotten core. A rotten core? I thought that was funny. <laughs> well, you're well, all alone. Back to the person's <laughs> opinions. <laughs> hey, what? Now, Apple's Way would never say they had a liar in the family. They had a fibber. They had a fibber in the <laughs> family. Oh, the disgusting wow. sound I have ever heard. She didn't understand Somebody the quick, question, play the Linda. national anthem. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. I don't <laughs> care what they say. <laughs> Will Miss Mobley's nurse please step to the front of the house? <laughs> For your bath. I've been doing this for long. I used hey, to do this. You go and sit over with Linda. <laughs> Sad day at the Apple what household when Apple discovers his family has a blank in it. 
A child worm. Uh, a worm. <laughs> Gotta match Betty to stay in the game. I'm another seedy groupie, a worm. worm. Six worms, so Dolly wins again. Come on, Dan. Congratulations. Linda, it was a pleasure meeting you, and good luck to you in the remainder of your college you. career. And we have a gift for Linda Tejeda. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> now, let's see if you're going to win some more money. Ready? Ready. Okay, you got your good luck thing there? Yeah. yeah. What do you call him again? My furry ducky. Furry ducky. All right. Let's see if he brings you good luck. We pulled a recent studio <laughs> audience. We got their best response to this. Onion blank. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500. Mm. Then two fifty and a hundred. Whom do you choose? Richard. She chooses Richard for a, for a re first response here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, onion peel. Onion peel. Yeah. Uh, Were you Marianne? <laughs> <laughs> no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There must be a reason why he gave such a rotten answer. Let him explain. I don't know. <laughs> Who did you call I wouldn't have Marianne. phrased it that way, Jude. <laughs> Mary. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. Onion ring. Yeah. You made onion ring. Right? Onion ring around the collar from yesterday. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Honestly. One more. Gary. Gary. Onion dip. Onion dip. That's right up there with peel. Onion dip. So you got onion peel, onion dip, and onion ring. You want one of those, or do you want to give us one of your own? Onion ring. You want onion ring? That's the answer, Mary Ann. Gator, let's find out if it's up there. If it is up there, where is it? That is the question. Is it under the $100 response I ask you that? Onion head. <laughs> that well, enough about me. You don't know what that is? No. Ira, what is that? It's an insult. That was a movie that uh, yeah. Andy was Griffith Andy Griffith. Did. Andy Griffith. Yeah. Andy Griffith made a movie called That's Onion Head. Okay. It's, uh, a lot of us saw it, didn't we? <laughs> Looking for onion ring. Here's a $250 response. Onion soup is a good answer. That was another film that Andy Griffith. That's yes, right. <laughs> Here's your last chance for onion ring as we reveal the $500 response. Right. Onion ring. Nothing for the bridesmaid. <laughs> hey, Jean. Well, Want to dance? <laughs> uh, all right. No, my card is full. I'm sorry. How quickly they all forget right. you in this business. Now you got another 500. You're up to 6,200. You're going to try for another 5,000 now. To win, you must match one celebrity. This has to be an exact match, as you remember. Which one will it be? I took Richard before. It's Richard again. Well, any person would give you an onion peel. You naturally would take. <laughs> Okay, here we go for 5,000. <laughs> Don't Blank. cry, Mary Ann. What? Blank Kane. C-A-N-E. Okay, he's finished. Now, we need an answer from you which you think will match the answer he's written down and put in the slot there. Blank Kane. Sugar Kane. Sugar Kane, she said. About two, one third of the audience thinks that's going to be a match with Richard. Yeah. Candy cane? Probably candy cane. You think it's candy cane? You think it's candy cane? Yeah. One third think it's sugar cane. Two thirds thinks it's candy cane. We're going to find out right now, Richard. What is it? All of you hamburgers who think you know, you are wrong. <laughs> We're ready to have another go at it. Are you calm down, Dolly? Yeah. Okay. Now, let's meet your new opponent. Let's welcome Bob Schaefer. Hello, Bob. Hello. 
Where's Bob from? I'm from Agura, California. I'm a sales... I didn't hear. What part? Agura. 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 I'm a sales manager, and uh, I'm married. My wife's in the audience, and we had to leave our St. Bernard at home. Uh, <laughs> thank <it>. heavens. <laughs> How long have you been married? Five years. Five years. Okay, good luck to you here. Thank you. Shall we begin? B. Uh, B. Bob wants B. B for Bob. In Las Vegas, they threw the kangaroo out of the casino when they caught him stuffing a blank into his pouch. That's what they did in Las Vegas. When he stuffed a what? Stuffed a blank. Uh, they caught him stuffing a blank into his pouch. They threw the kangaroo out of the casino when they caught him stuffing a blank into his pouch. The scene is Las Vegas. Yeah. They've Las been married five years? Five years they've been married. And all they've had is a St. Bernard? Yes. <laughs> Look, they're trying. Not very hard. <laughs> You're just jealous because he's Mr. Right. <laughs> okay. Kangaroo out of the casino when they caught him stuffing a blank into his Oh, house. look, Hickey isn't finished. That's just... I can't tell you how that I'm goes. still recovering from those kisses of Dolly. Okay. Hello, Dolly. Oh, Agoura, hello, is that one of those fellas that sits up in the Himalayas? Dolly. No. It's a guru. <laughs> okay, Bob. Where is a guru? Girls out, out by Thousand Oaks by Westlake. Oh, it's in the valley. Yeah. All right. And it's a lovely area. You heard him cheering. It's a nice. Yeah. It's a lovely area. A lot beautiful of out there. Nobody asked you okay. to do a Gilbert and Sullivan. Let me tell you how beautiful a girl Quiet. really is. Quiet. It has lovely oak Quiet. trees. Quiet. Oh. Not him, you. Quiet. <laughs> in Las Vegas, they threw the kangaroo out of the casino when they caught him stuffing a blank into his pouch. Now, what do you say to that in order to match the dingbats? <laughs> a roulette wheel. A roulette wheel. Okay. <laughs> You find those in gambling casinos, don't you? Sure you do. <laughs> well, I mean, it would make the kangaroo look a little funny, but yeah. what the heck? I don't care. Do you care about that? Uh, yes, I care deeply, but I, I wish I, I said my first impulse was stuffing a chippy in his pouch. I canceled it down to a chip. A chip. Put a chip in it. All right. He says roulette wheel. All right, Brett. Well, I'll tell you what I tried to stuff in my pouch. What? A pit man. A pit man. <laughs> Okay, that's... Pit yeah. I couldn't think of anything except jackpot. A jackpot. Okay. Somebody, I think we'd safely say you couldn't think of anything. That's then. right. <laughs> but Arguri is so really a nice place. Of, uh, yes, when you can't think of anything like that, please don't plug any other shows. <laughs> All right. Now, I don't here. know. I think a jackpot Come is nice to put in your pouch. When they caught him stuffing a blank into his pouch. Well, he put a $1,000 chip in his pouch. A chip. Okay, no roulette wheel yet. You offer a roulette wheel. No, but I have a brother in Philadelphia we're worried about. Means <laughs> nothing, does it? A Mark Card deck. A Mark Card deck. Yeah, it's Beautiful. the same film from <laughs> Onion Skin. Skin right. <laughs> and if you love that. He's ever given, isn't Mark it? Deck. Yes. Now here we go. I had any trouble coming up with an answer. All I could think of was password, but I didn't say it. You see, I said a stack of chips. A Very stack nice. of chips. Laura Scudder. No roulette wheel. Sorry to say, Bob. Now, Dolly, let's see what we've got for you. You. This is it. Betty White said. She says, I have this very smart dog named Fido. Not only does he watch TV, but whenever my husband Alan Ludden comes on, Fido blanks the set. <laughs> Brother is watching. I, 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 I didn't hear a couple of oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I have this very smart dog named Fido. Not only does he watch TV, but whenever my husband Alan Ludden comes on, Fido blanks the set. Is it smart dog? Is that smart, smart dog? Smart. Oh, yes. smart oh, I got dog. it. I got it. Yeah. I know. How could someone so dog. young be so oh, deaf? <laughs> well, we have. He's a pretty face. <laughs> Mark Card. Mark Card. That's true. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Very good. Yeah. Well, Dickie, that was the worst okay. answer you've ever given. Here we go. Dolly Preston. Betty White said I have this very smart dog named Fido. Not only does he watch TV, but whenever my husband Alan Ludden comes on, Fido blanks the set. Tinkles on. <laughs> No comment at all. Do you wish to comment? I think I should, don't you? Yes, I think you should. I said he goes on the set. He goes on the set. All right. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, Brett. You wish to comment. I have no comment. I have no comment on anything. Okay. So far tonight. Be the first time in the last ten years, <laughs> right? I said turns off the set. That's a smart dog. Now you, Gary. I don't know. I said waters the set. Waters. All right. That's two for you. And how about you? How about me? Well, he does this funny little dance. It goes one, two, lift. Oh. Just a simple answer is all we call for. But I needed to stand up. Oh, I see. All she right. sure does dance funny, doesn't she? Yes, she does. <laughs> By the way, Romper Room called your cancer. <laughs> he dampens the set. He dampens the set. Four for you, Dolly. And now we come to the moment of truth. I promise you, you do not know my do Fido is perfectly housebroken. Uh, Willie might get into a little trouble, yes. but Fido, he kisses the oh. sun. She saved her marriage, didn't she? <laughs> yes. The dog right. died. <laughs> At the end of round one, four to nothing, favor the champ. And round two coming up, but first got him a little bit of a, whatever it is. <laughs> I'll push this button and look what happens. We have two questions, second and final round. Bob, please make a selection. I'll try A. All right. Everybody, please. Bernie would do anything to embarrass his relatives. He even wore a gorilla suit to his own blank. Bernie would do anything to embarrass his relatives. He even wore a gorilla suit to his own blank. Don't he like his relatives? He would uh, like to embarrass them. He don't like them. He don't like them. Hi, Diggy Bird. Yeah. You're the best. Mm, I'll go to the cages. Do, 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 do. What a dog. Oh, did you learn that? I've never learned that. Do, 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 do. It's a terrific song. A little monotonous, but terrific. Okay, here we go with Bob Schaefer. <laughs> Bernie would do anything to embarrass his relatives. He even wore a gorilla suit to his own wedding. Wedding. Long time. <laughs> so, Annie, it sounds to me as if someone up here doesn't say wedding, he gonna get lynched by that crowd. What do you say? Well, uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say wedding, I can tell that right now. <laughs> oh, the heck I don't. Oh, yes. <laughs> so there's one for Bob. How about you, Brett? Did he say wedding or wedding? Wedding. 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 That was the oh. other question. Mm. Darn it all. He'd say. I said wedding. That's true. This is terrible. You said he'd do anything, and I said he wore it to his own funeral. His own funeral? Oh, just a minute. I don't have to take this. What's the difference? <laughs> We're ready for you, my dear. We're I've ready for you. Waiting. He even wore a gorilla suit to his own. He wore a monkey suit to his own wedding. Well, that's three for you. One more, and you've got a tie there. He also married King Kong. Wedding. Yeah. We gotta try. And Betty. I mean, it's up to me again. Is a yep. gorilla a female from Agora? No. 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 Wedding. <laughs> Wedding. <laughs> okay. So at this moment, the score is five to four in favor of Bob. Oh, is it five to four? I gotta go. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Well, I gotta be somewhere at half past. No, well, you got plenty of time. Don't worry about it. We got a car waiting outside with the engine running. It's coming on. Now, this, uh, you need one to tie, two to win, all right? Here we go. George said, My wife needs glasses. This morning at breakfast, she dunked my blank in her coffee. <laughs> oh, just uh, these two people do not. Play. I don't want to. Wait a minute. Who is off? My line is on. I don't Brett know why. And, uh, Brett 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 Brett
Congratulations to you. He's been a for a moment. We've got to say goodbye to Dolly. She's going to be leaving here with $11,200. Thank you. That's Dolly Bristler. Goodbye. Now this message for you. Don't go away. How do you feel? <coughs> you were grand. I'm you've, not surprised. You've done it again. I'm not surprised. And again, and <laughs> again, and again. And I thank you all, and we'll look forward to seeing you two on Tattletales. Thank you. Is it concurrently? I mean, does it yes. like this? Yes. Yes. Right. Oh, right now. Yes. Yes. Oh, right. I will be around. Now say good night quickly. Say good night quickly. No, I don't. I say now. Next time we get together, we're going to have these dingbats. Dwayne Hickman. Brett <laughs> Summers. Gary Bergoff. Carol Lawrence. Richard Dawson. And Marsha Wallace. Now I say good night quickly. Good night, good night quickly. See you later in here, Mets Game 75. Goodbye. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Mets Game 75. A Mark Hudson Bill Tubman production. Tune for Tattletale, starring Bert Condi, next over most of the CBS station. Get ready to match the star, Leslie Nielsen, Brett Summer, Gary Berghoff, Patty Doyle, Richard Dawson, and Marsha Wallace as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now, here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene Raver. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny Olsen. Everybody ready? Yeah. What are you ready for? Depends. <laughs> yeah, all right. You look beautiful. All healthy and lovely? Thank you. Look like a real substantial citizen. Well. As opposed to. Looks. The camera doesn't lie. Make the man. Do I look like a substantial citizen? Uh -huh. Don't lie to me, camera. <laughs> well, I thank you. Thank you. For your kind thoughts and coronets. And now let's say hello to our current champ, Suzanne Gormley. <laughs> all right. Look great. What do you call that work there? Is that, hand, is that done by hand? No. No. Well, it's very pretty. Thank you. Very colorful bouquet of flowers on her front. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know uh, you've made a fool of yourself for three days now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for pointing it out to America. <laughs> Suzanne, <laughs> Suzanne has $2,950 to her credit. She's going to have a go. At over $5,000 in a moment or so, but right now we got to do a little business and this is it. Here we are with Suzanne Gormley, who's up here for a second time. Going to have a go uh, try to grab the brass ring on the merry-go-round. She's got $2,950. And uh, <laughs> as she wears these subdued colors so no one notices her. <laughs> Okay, shall we uh, find out what's going on up there? We polled a recent studio audience. <laughs> they got their best response to this. Blank sickness. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500, and $250, and $100, depending on which one you match. Three of these uh, lovely people are permitted to assist. Whom do you choose? Richard? Uh, seasickness. Every time I look at Brett, boom. Seasickness. All right, there's one. Gary? Very, very, never mind, morning sickness. <laughs> morning sickness. Uh, and Brett. Brett. How about, there's only one other one, I think, air sickness? Air sickness. Okay. So we have mal de mer or seasickness, and we have mal de air, <laughs> air sickness. <laughs> Uh, and then we have morning you speak many sickness. tongues. Yes. <laughs> you want one of those or you want to give us one of your own? <laughs> I'm going along with morning sickness. Morning sickness. No, I never would have guessed. 
Well, all Gee, right. That's she right. says it's up there and in a very important position. When she chooses it, that's what she's saying. We'll find out if it's up there and if so, where. First, may we see the $100 response? Sleeping sickness is up there, which is an answer I thought of but didn't hear from any of our celebrities for some reason, because it's fairly common, isn't it? I All live right, with we're it looking every for day. morning sickness. Let's find out if it's under the $250 response. Seasickness. Oh, Hold on. Hmm. Mm. Getting close to it. <laughs> Last chance for morning sickness. Here is the $500 response. Morning sickness. Congratulations. Macaroons. Did you kiss him on the lips? On the, yes. I sort of, I sort of went Is that for allowed? It. <laughs> oh, it's allowed. Okay. All right. Happens, now, you you've got the 500. That puts you up to $3,450. That means you can now play for 5,000. Remember, you have to match one of them. This time, it has to be an exact one. Whom do you choose? Richard again. Okay, Richard. Get ready. Sure, to he gets the kisses. I get the hard one. <laughs> kissed me on the cheek yesterday. She did. I'm single and he's married. How does that work out? <laughs> he and his wife has morning, morning sickness. sickness. <laughs> All right, let's get the word. Here we go. Quiet. Blank nuts. N-U-T-S. <laughs> that is a hard one. <laughs> That's tricky. Blank nuts. Blank nuts. Okay. Now, he's finished, Suzanne. We ask for your response, which you think will match his for $5,000. Blank nuts, N-U-T-S. Peanuts. Peanuts. Well, okay. All right, Richard, she says peanuts will match you for $5,000. Well, I'm, I'm in love with her, and I, I thought of uh, chest nuts. And I, <laughs> I said, that's too blatant. Yes. <laughs> If I don't get a real kiss this time, I'm going to be furious. Congratulations! Good. You know how much you got? 8,450. Okay, everybody, very happy for you. Are you happy for you? Very happy. Good. Now, you say you're going to spend all that money. You're not going to salt any of it away? Oh, possibly. <laughs> all right. You'll make up your mind later. <laughs> all right. Let's uh, bring on another player now, Suzanne, and let's welcome Mia Lake. Hello there. You know Suzanne? Now, again... Maya. Ah, I had a 50-50 chance and I blew it, didn't I? Well, I'm sorry, Maya. That's a very pretty name, Maya Thank Lake. It sounds like an Italian. Hey, come to Maya Lake. Uh, <laughs> what? Southern part of Sicily. From the southern part of Sicily. <laughs> <laughs> what a pretty lady you are. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan. I presently live in Las Vegas. And I'm a student majoring in computer science. I'm Com single. Computer sciences. Yeah. I've Figured I'd put it into the computer and I know how to beat the game now. I see. <laughs> okay, well, good luck there and good luck here, too. I hope you win some money. All right, please make a selection. I'll take B, please. B, here we go. Audrey said, I had no idea that a costume party could be so dangerous. I went dressed as a potato and someone tried to blank me. <laughs> Can you imagine that? As Lady Audrey said, I had no idea a costume party could be so dangerous. I went dressed as a potato and someone tried to blank me. Oh, another winning card for Suzanne. For Suzanne, who's now a rich and pretty lady. With much love, Richard. <laughs> Telephone number 423. I'll call you. Will you call me? I'll call you. Everybody ready over here? Look how quickly we all zipped oh, through Oh, that this. was very, very quick of them. Audrey said, I had no idea that a costume party could be so dangerous. I went dressed as a potato. Someone tried to blank me. Peel. Peel. <laughs> she said, in a very plaintive way, someone tried to peel me. I'd like to ask a question. Yes. Have you noticed that Suzanne has dimples? 
Yes, she oh, has very good. beautiful oh. dimples. I, I say peel also. Peel! There's one for you. Yes. I had to point out Susanna's dimples to Leslie Nielsen. He didn't notice? He said, oh, does she have dimples, he said. <laughs> yes. I said, where have you been looking? And he said, don't keep asking me all those ugly questions. <laughs> and I said, peel. Peel. That's two for you. Maya has two. I think Maya is a contender. Oh, yes, indeed. That's three. This is very unusual for a first round question, Maya. What do you say? Up to a point. Oh, here's it. We break the spell now, Maya. Oh. <laughs> yes? I said slice and dice. Slice and dice. <laughs> they do that with dramatic. Yes, of thing. course. Yes. You think okay, we don't get sorry for that baby? <laughs> you have a response there. Who ordered potatoes? Yeah. I went dressed as a potato, someone tried to blank me. She says peel. So what? So peel. what? He says peel. A four for you. Now, is the spell going to be broken again? <laughs> Are you going to join this one over here? <laughs> oh, Gene, you little diggins, you're awfully tacky. <laughs> <laughs> Not only am I wrong, I have plugged another show. <laughs> Mash. 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 Yeah, dirty Tuesday night. CBS, 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 right. Okay, so how'd you do? You did pretty good there. Four for your first round question. Yours will be coming up later, but right now, this is coming up for you. All right, we're in the middle of round one. Going to finish this round now with Suzanne's question, which reads as follows. Not many people know this, but when Brett takes her wig off, she looks exactly like blank. I knew it. Uh, I knew it. You knew it. Think of it. When Brett takes her wig off, she looks exactly like... I'm finished. Finished. Finito. We heard that. And remember, <laughs> right. I was nice to you this week. Yes, you, you've white. been very nice. She's been very nice to you. Everybody ready? So we nice come over here to Suzanne. Again, Not many people know this, Suzanne, but when Brett takes her wig off, she looks exactly like... Telly Savalas. Telly Savalas. Who? Telly Savalas. Telly Savalas. The Second Avenue Kid. You know, that's really... Hope you blow up like a poison fish, kid. <laughs> <laughs> so gracious, isn't she? <laughs> Such a graceful loser. I've never seen Brett with her wig off. You and, haven't? And I just put down the first thing that came to my mind, which was Telly Savalas. Holy man. Oh, Telly Savalas. Suzanne, so you have to wow. great start. All right, Brett, tell us the truth about Brett Summers. Do you know that half of America thinks I'm bald as opposed to lazy? Well, no. No, because when you wear your own hair, I tell them that you're wearing your own hair. Nice. She's done it twice in two years. Because <laughs> she's lazy. Yes. No, no, darling, I look like Sophia Loren. Sophia Loren. <laughs> Dream on! What an ego. Dream on! Isn't it true that when people worked together for years and years and years they began to look alike i heard that yeah so i thought she looked exactly like oh, charles. <laughs> charles nelson riley all right when brett takes her wig off she looks exactly like blank and suzanne said telly savalas i said jack klugman jack klugman <laughs> 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 oh, you are funny aren't yes. you little mother <laughs> <laughs> all right, Richard. I have to, honest, in all honesty, say that Brett does remind a lot of people of Sophia Loren. Yes. With her wig off, she looks like Carlo Ponte. <laughs> <laughs> I said Kojak. Kojak. Telly Savalas. Telly Savalas. Now we are looking for Telly Savalas. <laughs> oh, you won't find him under here. <laughs> I, I have a lot of talents. Unfortunately, yes. they do not lie in this area. <laughs> However, I know Brett well, and when she takes off her wig, she puts on those little ears and looks like Annette Funicello. <laughs> Annette Funicello. Cello. Well, I pushed the magic button and announced that the score is four to two at the end of round one. We go to round two. Take B again, please. Maya wants B, and Maya gets B. Who plays? Only two people. Only two, the two people, brains. one of which is me. Oh. Frickin' frack. Okay. Frickin' frack, this is for you. Tiny Tom Thumb said. All her again. Watch it. 
He said, I saw this great bargain in a tiny people's newspaper. It said, tiny taxidermist will stuff your blank for 39 cents. <laughs> saw this great bargain in the tiny people's newspaper. Yeah. Tiny taxidermist will stuff your blank for 39 cents. That's Is that what a tiny joke? Tom Thumb said. Did you hear all of that, Maya? Yeah, I heard it. Okay. <laughs> Think about it, Maya. Tiny taxidermist will stuff your blank for 39 cents. I'm gonna write it real again. little. No, 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 no. Yeah. just put, put the thing in the slot there. Let's get on with it now. You're finished. Good gravy, Marie Patty. All right. Tiny Tom Thumb said, I saw this great bargain in the Tiny People's newspaper. Tiny taxidermist will stuff your blank for 39 cents. <laughs> uh, tiny taxi? No. <laughs> you what? Tiny your taxidermist. Taxi? We'll stuff your tiny taxi for 39 cents? Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying to me? Maya, no, speak to me. <laughs> tiny taxi. Unfortunately, yeah. All right, that's it. She's just tiny taxi. And you thought I was in trouble. Yes. <laughs> I didn't say that. No, you didn't. I know no. you didn't say that. I'm I waiting. said that he would stuff your tiny pet mouselet. Your tiny pet mouselet. I'm nice. Sweet dogs. Yes, teeny weeny mice. Yeah. Now, <laughs> Gee. you got a worse one than well, either of those? No, no, no. I'm thinking here. You are thinking. Yes. You're trying. I've called upon all my vast mental resources. Yes. And thought the smallest thing, he stuffed his gnat. His gnat? His gnat. Now, now think about it. Yeah, very difficult. It's very small. Tiny yeah. net. It's very bad. Okay, so you stay at four, and you have a chance to catch up and maybe go ahead. We'll find out how that works out right after we talk to you about this. Now, going to end this game right now, we think. Could end up at a tie, I suppose. Score is four to two. You need two to tie. Four to win. Uh, three to win. <laughs> and I, on the opposite shore, shall be. <laughs> I have never seen you, you more on nerve. <laughs> Who doesn't play? You don't play. The two of you. Everybody else plays. <laughs> The prisoner on the chain gang said, uh -huh. the warden's daughter likes me. Uh -huh. When I was breaking stones during the blizzard, she came out and kicked the snow off my blank. <laughs> what, darling? I'm sorry. They weren't listening to me. Now listen to me. I wasn't listening. I just Stop the music while they listen to me. Thank you. What? The prisoner on the chain gang said, the warden's daughter likes me. When I was breaking stones during the blizzard, she came out and kicked the snow off my blank. Got it? One more yes, time. I know. I can't remember what the name of it is, though. You're not even playing. Don't you ask me to repeat it. Everybody ready? You can't Let's remember say that again. Play the music. Oh, I bet you've been around. <clears throat> okay, that's a perfectly reasonable answer. Well, thank you very much, cranky head. <laughs> Goodness, that's me getting tested. Just a little hard yes. expression. All right. Now we're going to get a response from Suzanne. Prisoner on the chain gang said, the warden's daughter likes me. When I was breaking stones during the blizzard, she came out and kicked the snow off my... Rocks. The stones. And he thinks she likes him? <laughs> she said, she came out and kicked the snow off my rock. <laughs> well, he was having so, a martini at the time. So we you, baby. Yeah. He was out there breaking the stones and the rocks, and that's what she said. Now, what do you say? I say, let's leave and go yeah. somewhere nice. <laughs> that same old motel in NC. Yeah. No, no, I have enough of that, my dear. Oh! Why? Wow. <laughs> no, that's a good answer. Show sure. it. Hammer. Kick hammer. Kick the snow off, off my hammer. I don't know. All right, Gary. Rocks is the answer she's looking for. Rocks or stones or anything. this of being communist with a pick and a hammer. Pick and a hammer. Got to match the remaining two to stay in the game, Suzanne. Let's see if it happens. She's looking for stones or rocks or boulders. Are you off or anything like that? Pebbles? No. Anything? No, I said that the, she kicked the snow off his pickaxe. His pickaxe. So that means... Oh. Maya Lake wins the game. What have you got? Come over there and congratulations, Maya. I just stand by for a second or two. Well, you got a collection of souvenir <laughs> cards there. 
And uh, the best of luck from all of us, together with $8,450. That's very gracious of you to applaud our departing uh, loser there. Well, she really wasn't a loser because she left with a big bundle. Are you ready to have a go at this? Yes. And you know how this part goes? Yes. Okay, you've watched it. Yes. <laughs> Good. We polled a recent studio audience, Maya, and we got their best response to this. The blank book. The answer they gave is worth 500, 250, and 100. Three of these people are allowed to help. Whom do you choose? Richard. What do you say? we live by, the good book. The good book is one. Gary. Gary? Well, it's good enough to be chosen twice. The good book. No, I, I said, uh, let's see, uh, the, the number one book. The number, number one, one book. selling <coughs> book. Number one selling book. <coughs> Can you make it a little longer? <laughs> <laughs> Leslie. Leslie. The cookbook. The cookbook. So you got the cookbook, the number one selling book, and the good book. You may choose one of those or give us one of your own. I'll go with the good book. The good book is what she's looking for. Let's find out if it's up there. And if so, where? May we see the $100 response? The cookbook. That's the one Leslie gave you. Looking for the good book. Here's a $250 response. The telephone book. Last chance for the good book. Dear friends and beloved neighbors, here is the $500 response. And it's the good book. Oh, the good book. Good for you. for you and this is it. Isn't that marvelous? Thank you all. You were just oh, terrific. Now, next week we're going to have these people. Tom Bosley, <laughs> Brett Summers, Gary Burkhoff, Meredith McRae, Richard Dawson, and Fanny Fire. Team Raven Match Game 75. Join us next time. Goodbye. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 75, a Mark Goodson, Bill Tubman production. Stay tuned for Tattletales next over most of these CBS stations. Get ready to match the stars. Orson B. Brett Summers. Gary Berghoff. Linda Day George. Richard Dawson. And Betty White. As we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene Feel like walking slowly. That's your old today. Gladstone and Disraeli impression. That's I always it. enjoy that's it. That's it. I've when, done them both at the same time. When did you and he's just as old. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how Henny Youngman started. He used to wear a vest. Ring bong. That's it. Take my wife, okay. please. No. Why don't we meet these lovers? You don't want to meet these people, do you? Well, they got yeah. money. Oh, right now. Let's do that. Let's say hello to Peter I Tripp and Kathy somebody. Heberly. $5,700. This guy's won $5,700. How about that? And he's very happy about that. And he's going to spend that money. And live it up, right? I've got this invention that I've had on paper for three years, and I've never been able to do anything with it. Now I can. Really? And it's, wow, it's just a blow. If you can imagine what the astronauts must have felt like walking on the moon, that's how I feel right now. You're an inventor? Yeah. How could you? Have you patented this device? Uh, I've got the poor man's patent, if that makes any sense. It's right. But are you going to take some of this office. money and perfect it and patent it and go forward with it? Yeah, well, sure. Well, good am. luck with that. Thank you. Now, let's say hello to your uh, new opponent here. Kathy, please tell us a little bit about yourself. I forgot. You forgot? <laughs> I'll 
Tayako. I'm married to a wonderful man. You're not married? I'm single, but I fool around. Oh. Business card, please. If you're ever in the valley, please feel free to drop in. Where do you live, Kathy? Or maybe I shouldn't ask. I, uh, I live in Whittier with my girlfriend, and we're in the process of opening up a shop. What are you going to do there? Friend are going to have a storefront blink. <laughs> what kind of shop are you going to open up there, Kathy? I think we ought to have more details on this. I don't afraid to say anything else. I do uh, uh, artwork. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know that song before, yeah. honey. Yes. <laughs> Body painting is that it? No, 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 it's all legitimate. Yeah. I mean, I bet it is. Uh, Okay, well, good luck with that venture. I hope you be a, your friend is an artist also. Uh, no, she doesn't. No. A working okay. girl, probably. Think, uh, yeah, well, I guess we know more than we care to know about this lady, so uh, we just welcome her and wish her good luck and wish Peter good luck and go to this message of interest. Well, what could be of interest after that? But listen anyway. Okay. Ready to have a go at it, Kathy? Would you please make a selection? Uh, B. B, all right. <laughs> now, Vito said. Vito. Vito. Where have you been, She asked Brett? me to save her seat. I don't know. Save her seat. <laughs> Brett. Hi, honey. All right, let's get on with this. All right, let's go. Make some money. Vito said, I don't think the Godfather likes me. Sure, he gave me a scuba outfit for my birthday, but the air tank was full of blank. <laughs> That's what Vito said. Uh, darling, I just got here. Could you... <laughs> yeah, I know you just got here. Vito said, I don't think the Godfather likes me. Sure, he gave me a scuba outfit for my birthday, but the air tank was full of... blank. What is that stuff? Shh. Don't talk. Don't think out loud. Oh. <laughs> You got it, right? You're not reading right. and moving your lips at the same time. <laughs> Brent, who's minding the store? Huh? Don't, no, don't break her chain of thought because it's just going to delay us that much chain longer. Of thought. Adam is upstairs. Uh, he is watching the show. All right. He's We're in the green room. He's watching Cher. Would you yes. put your gum in the... Now, Kathy, Vito said, I don't think the Godfather likes me. Sure, he gave me a scuba outfit for my birthday, but the air tank was full of... Gas. 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 You mean something poisonous that would yeah, make would him expire smell. when he put the thing on and tried to breathe through the self-contained underwater breathing apparatus, <laughs> well, the acronym for which is SCUBA. What do you say? The acronym for this gas is carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide. You said gas. There's one match. All right. Brett. I was trying to think... <laughs> Are we going somewhere? <laughs> no, this bird was just flying into the oh. sky. There. I was trying to think of the thing that goes, right? And I think I did because I said helium and or gas. Helium and or gas. That's true for you, Kathy. <laughs> Gary. Well, helium isn't poisonous. It makes you talk funny when you breathe it. Sure it does. It. Yeah. Anyway, I said poisonous mm -hmm. gas. Poison gas. That's three. <laughs> I really didn't think she was going to score with this one. What do you say, Linda? <laughs> well, <clears throat> if he really didn't like him a lot, I guess what I thought he might have done was put water in it, but if he put water in it, the guy wouldn't... 
has already been done. Yeah. Well, you don't have to make it so definite, that buzz. That really was a loud buzz. Though. That buzzer was louder than usual. Now, you've got this a sweet girl. She's too fragile for that sort of thing. Oh, well. Do you offer this lady a little gas? <laughs> <laughs> no, because he would suspect that. You always test. Yes. Before you go down. Oh. <laughs> so. Yes. Have it filled with lead. <laughs> lead. 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 Down to the... <laughs> All right. Move on. Now, all right. Save us, Betty. That Save us. A better answer because that's very hard to get out. You said you didn't think she'd score. I never doubted it for a moment. Really? However, I did say what? Water. Okay. Three for you, and our first round question for you, but right now, dear friends and gentle hearts, we've got this for you. Now, shall we carry on, Peter? Yes, Your indeed. first round question will read as follows. Now, everyone knows, Peter, that Betty White loves animals. You may not be aware of that, but everyone else in the world knows that Betty White loves animals. Heavens, yes. But Betty is also a terrific animal trainer. She's even taught Alan Ludden to blank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're gonna love it, Betty. <laughs> Betty's also a terrific animal trainer. She's even taught Alan Ludden to blank. Have you ever noticed how much Linda Day George looks like Marjorie Maine? It's an incredible... Uh, yes, she does. And if I'm not... Uh, I don't... I, I, I think they're about the same age. I'm not sure. Maybe a difference Could in six, be. eight months. Yes. Two months. That's what I think. Speaking of attractive ladies, Betty, how is your pretty wife, Carolyn? My sweet Carolyn yes. is sitting upstairs right now watching the show fooling around with her son, I think. Uh -huh. <laughs> And how are all your kids? All the kids are fine. Good. Michelle, Good. Max, yeah. Susanna, and Ezekiel. Good. Ezekiel. Yes. Alderman. Right. Ratman. Ezekiel <laughs> saw the wheel. The wages okay. of sin. <laughs> Peter Tripp, everyone knows that Betty White loves animals, but Betty's also a terrific animal trainer. She's even taught Alan Ludden to... Play dead. Oh. <laughs> Play dead. No one had to teach him that. <laughs> But that's a little trick you teach a dog to do, roll over and play dead. Yes. And that's the answer he gave, the same kind of trick you have. So what did you say? I know what goes on in there, how she's taught Alan Ludden to sit up and beg. <laughs> Yes. Now, hello there. Hi, sweetheart. Well, I've been to their house several times for dinner, and as you know, yes. and once when he disappeared and went into the kitchen, yes. I realized she taught him to go on the paper. <laughs> <laughs> difficult, isn't it? It's not easy. The free press. Yes. <laughs> Hello there, Gare. <laughs> That's what I said. Go on the paper. That's two of those and one of his. <laughs> and none of his. He's looking for the answer. She's even taught Alan Ludden to play dead. That's what he said. What do you say? Could he beg to play dead? No. Begging is different there. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Somewhat. Yes. What do you say, sir? I have a two-part answer. You have a two-part answer. First thing is that she is marvelous. Oh, yeah. She, just a minute. She is terrific. Time for her sugar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. She did get him to roll over and play dead. Yes. Yeah. But in all fairness, Alan calls it lovemaking. <laughs> Betty, Over you know... my dead body. Never <laughs> changed a bit. And there's more truth than poetry in that, dear. Now, listen, Betty, you know, we kid Brett a lot, and we're kidding you, and we're kidding Alan, but we do, uh, we're very fond of both of you. She we're just funning you a little bit. Are you funning, too? I am hurt. I am deep. I don't get hurt often. Are you hurt? Right. I'm, I'm dark. Sure. This is sleepy. <laughs> I haven't quite gotten him to sit up yet, but he does beg. He does beg. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give in. <laughs> 
Okay, so where are we here? With the end of round one, and we have a score of three to one in favor of Kathy. We go to round two, just like that. Kathy? B. B. Now, let's see. Three do and three don't. Uh, oh, the lower tier only. Is that right? We had a blackout. Okay, here we go. The zoo sits this one out up here, do That's we? it. <laughs> uh, you sit it out and listen. Bob said that you judge sure gets confused easily. At the end of the murder trial, he told them to hang the blank. <laughs> that new judge gets confused easily. At the end of the murder trial, he told them to hang the blank. The perfect answer that what an unfortunate uh, predicament that I'm not playing this round. No. Oh, yeah. Okay, everybody down there is ready. Oh. Kathy, we call on you. Bob said that new judge I sure was. gets confused easily. <laughs> At the end of the murder trial, he told them to hang the jury. <laughs> She said, hang the jury. What a good answer. It is a good answer. They'd have a hung jury then, wouldn't they? <laughs> ah. Ah. Hello there, pretty girl. Hi. You're not going to show it, huh? Mm -hmm. uh -uh. You don't like it, huh? No. Oh, too but bad. it's not what you said. Lawyer. lawyer. You said lawyer, Kathy. That's a good idea. Hang the lawyer. Hung. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Hang jury is an excellent answer, of course, if you're going for laughs. <laughs> if you're going for money, you say lawyer. <laughs> what did you say, lady? I've been trying to imitate Linda Day George ever since we started this week. And Fat with my chance. luck, I caught her answers. Lawyer. <laughs> lawyer. So you got three lawyers and no juries. And Peter, your question is yet to come up. At the moment, you're behind by two. Now we've got this message for you. Ready. Second and final round question for Peter Tripp. He needs two to tie, three to win. Mrs. Olson said to Josephine the plumber, Josephine, your coffee would taste much better if you would keep your blank out of the coffee pot. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> Josephine, your coffee would taste much better if you would keep your blank out of the coffee pot. Keep your blank out of the coffee pot. What a terrific Russian accent you do. <laughs> Richard is the only one who does not play this round. Ready? <laughs> Draw a picture of it if you can't think of a name of it. Josephine. <laughs> Did you hear all of that? <laughs> Josephine, your coffee would taste much better if you would keep your blank out of the coffee pot. Ready, Orson? Okay. Are you ready, Peter? I guess so. Josephine, your coffee would taste much better if you would keep your blank out of the coffee pot. The plumber's helper. The plumber's helper. Okay. The audience says mezzo mezzo on yes. that. Plumber's helper. Which is that thing, you know, wouldn't you? Yes, I know what it is because I wrote it and Gary talked me out of it. He looked over and said, no, never. <laughs> I had plunger, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I told you never to speak to him. <laughs> well, what I finally wrote was, if you keep your comment out of the thing. Yeah, that'll... Yeah, yeah. It's good, but it doesn't matter. What do you say? Well, darn it all, I put wrench, because that's what they're always wrenching around Well, with. she always carries a wrench. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Well, and I you said, said cleanser. You said cleanser. Right, well, that's told what she told me said. Too. Now, Peter, you've got to match the remaining players to stay in the game, Linda and Betty. We are looking for a plunger or a plumber's helper, as they are called. I what have you got? I don't have one. You don't have one? No. Well, uh, what have you got on the card there? Thomas. What do you have, Betty? Thomas. That's it for Kathy. Have a good day. Stand by for a moment, and we'll talk to Peter Tripp here. Well, I hope you've enjoyed yourself, Peter. You're really not leaving empty-handed. Your wife has enjoyed it. She's uh, chewed up her fingernails there. <laughs> Me too. Uh, you have to. Yeah. Well, good luck to you. And with that invention, I really hope that works for you, and I'm glad we're able to pass along a little money to you to help perfect your invention. Thank you very much. Will you write to us and let us know how it comes out? I will. Indeed. But you'll get one. Peter Tripp, $5,700. Thank you. Goodbye, Peter. Here we are together again. I thought we'd never be alone. <laughs> now, 
Now listen, pull yourself together here, because if you keep shaking, I'll keep shaking, and then the mic's going to break, and uh, where are you? Listen to me, Kathy. We polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. What are you dinging for? I haven't done anything yet. I'll tell you when to ding. You always ding when you open that? Isn't that funny? I just noticed that. <laughs> Blank cowboy is what it says up there, right? All right, the answer they gave most often is worth $500. If you match the next one, you get $250, and a third, $100. Whom do you call on over here? Oh, uh... What's his name? The one in the middle? Richard. Richard, yeah. The person who's coming to Whittier to see you, darling. <laughs> Midnight Cowboy. Midnight Cowboy. That's a good one, right? All right, and you've got two more here. Brett, because no one ever talks to her. Oh. <laughs> Correct. You can't she get a word in She says no one ever talks to you, so she uh, wants to talk to you and call on you for an answer. And I'm going to go and work in her shop because every art shop needs an old one, yes. a young one. <laughs> <laughs> Cowboy. Yeah, right. Blank, what'd you say? Ride him, cowboy. Ride him, cowboy. Okay, you got two now. And, um, uh, Betty. Betty. Oh, I was afraid you were going to say that. Uh, uh, Texas cowboy. Texas cowboy. So now, Kathy, you got Texas cowboy, ride him, cowboy, and midnight cowboy. You may choose one of those as your answer or give us one of your own. Midnight. Midnight cowboy is the one she's looking for. They agree with you. I hope they're not leading you astray. Well, anyway. I'll do that when I get to Whittier. That, let's find out if uh, Midnight Cowboy's up there, and if so, where. First, may we see the $100 response? Lonesome Cowboy. Orson Remember had that? that. You had that? I did. From that old song, You Don't Know What Lonesome Is Till You Get to Herding Cows. <laughs> Remember that old song? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a song. I used to, well, anyway, we're looking for Midnight Cowboy. Here is the $250 response. Ride him, Cowboy. Oh. Well, who was that? That was Brett. That was answer. me. What okay. do you mean, who was that? All right. <laughs> Last chance for Midnight Cowboy. Here's the $500 response. <laughs> Midnight Cowboy. Kathy, you got $600 to your credit. You're still shaking. I know. Hold me a little tighter. That's it. Now you'll stop shaking in a minute. The money has a way of calming you down. Uh... <laughs> okay, listen. I think it's time to go to a commercial, folks. Now go to black. Do something. I've had a Jim Dandy time all week with Me all of too. you. And I just think you were just grand. Uh, Is there anything anyone would like to say before you are dismissed temporarily? Because you're all coming back one of these days. All right, I'd like to say that if at first you don't succeed, give up. <laughs> Silly about That's it. right. Is that true? Do you agree with that? Yeah, but right. I also think that, that uh, Bill Bixby is a very good director. You said it. Yeah. You yes, indeed. Goodbye. Now, next well, time when we get bye. together, these are the people you will see on this here very stage. Ron Masak. <laughs> Brett Summers. Gary Murkoff. Patty Duke Aston. Richard Dawson. And Joyce Beulipak. Team Raven, Match Game 75. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> This is Johnny Olsen speaking for Match Game 75. Amar Goodson, Bill Tubman Production. <laughs>
<laughs> Don't nobody move. Gary? What? You look different today. Oh, no, your nice. hair is longer. Oh. Well, it's the first time it's rained for a while. <laughs> no, actually, it's a, it's a friend of mine's. Oh, really? Yeah, we flipped for it, and I lost. <laughs> Is that hers? <laughs> I'm not beautiful. saying because I don't think she's too happy about this. <laughs> I gave that to him as a present. Yes. No, because he's balding. <laughs> no, that's what Time Magazine would say, balding. balding. Listen, all us regulars on the show have to welcome two new kids on the block here. Okay. Glory to Haven and Buck Owen. How are you, buddy? Nice to have both of you here. Thank now you're going to have a peachy keen time. A peachy keen time. You are indeed. What's oh, that that that'll be. Are nice. uh, you going to have a lot of laughs and yeah, and, and, oh, yeah. And that's peachy keen. Yeah. That's right. I want. All right. Now let us welcome our two players over here, John Sclamenti and Sandy Vasco. Hello there, John. John is our current champ. He has $1,550 to his credit, and you see it put a smile on his face, didn't you? <laughs> sure did. You happy about that? Yeah, I'm tickled. Has your wife been spending the money mentally? Yeah, I, yeah, I think she's already started a little. She has. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're going to keep some in reserve, aren't you? You're not going to try and solve the recession problem all at one no, old I'm swoop, are you? Now, okay. And Sandy is challenging him. We're going to start this game. We found a little about, about Sandy last time we met. Why don't you repeat a few of the things you told us last time when we <coughs> ran into you here accidentally? <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? I'm single, and I'm a student at Wayne State University, and I teach tennis on the side. You teach tennis, that's yeah. right. <laughs> yes, and I asked you to cure my tennis elbow, and you refused. Push the button and roll it back, please, then. No, I'm only kidding, Sandy. Good luck to both of you. We'll start this game in one minute and two seconds. Count them. Hello there. Now, we are going to begin a brand new game. I push this button and ask Sandy to make a selection. B, please. B, it is. All right. We ask you to make the selection, because some of our contestants find some questions more difficult than others, and we leave it purely up to you. Here we go. The sideshow barker shouted, Hurry, 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 step right up and see Barney the human beaver. Barney. <laughs> How human was he? Stop that. <laughs> step right up again, and please. see. <laughs> hurry, hurry, hurry. <laughs> step right up and see Barney the human beaver. Barney eats trees and spits out blanks. <laughs> And see Barney the human beaver. Barney eats trees and spits out blanks. <laughs> what happened to here? Oh. It stopped raining. <laughs> the next time you do well, that, you have to put it in there, when I say, oh, you put that in there. Your hair is longer. Okay. You say, we've had a lot of rain in California. I didn't want to say that Try because that. there isn't any real wood to knock on. Them. <laughs> It's flooded outside. All right. Brett, are you still yes, fiddling around up there? I'm right here. I was trying to, but I was trying to help. Is this lady Buck. molesting you? Yes, she is bothering me, dang it. Welcome to the Give club, him a Buck. <laughs> Give it's a hip old Buck, Buck. Buck. old cowboy singer. That's right. Now, when you finish, then you put it right in the slot there, right? Yes, I'm learning here. As now. expeditiously as you can, because <laughs> we only have a half hour. <laughs> half hour. Oh, all right, right. Gloria. Okay. I was having a little trouble with my spelling. Sandy. The sideshow barker shouted, hurry, 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 step right up and see Barney the human beaver. Barney eats trees and spits out blanks. Toothpicks. Toothpicks. That's not a bad answer. Yeah. All right, Buck. Well, I, I thought they'd probably spit out leaves since they eat trees. Yeah, you just eat the wooden part and you spit out the leaves, eh? Well, We're off to a bad start, aren't you? <laughs> Don't listen to the lady sitting next to you. Okay, I won't listen to her, but I'll, I'll, I'll read her card. Oh, okay. We may have to have a meeting on this. All right, let's have a meeting. We're on the, at the motel oh. in Encino? No, 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 no. <laughs> God, we're on the air. Hi. I said splinters. Does that splinters. match with two Trees and spits out splinters. She no, they say that it's not match. Because a splinter Somebody's could be Somebody's at the that door. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you say? Toothpicks. Toothpicks. Naturally. You think you can do this now, or do you want a little more rehearsal? No, I practice. 
practicing. All right, then All show right. and tell. Oh, right there. there. Right. It seems to come I up hard. I'll put it right there so there you can see sometimes to get a tight yeah. shot of it there. I said splinters also. Splinters also. Yes, another All splinter. Right. Yeah. Yes. Two new kids on their block are really... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's called El Flunko the first time, yes. But you're going to get worse as time goes oh, by. Oh, thanks yeah. a lot. I really right appreciate it. <laughs> okay, Dawson. He re you really helped her, didn't you? <laughs> Just, I just showed her the mechanics of how to oh, fit the oh, car. Uh -huh. Thank you so I much wouldn't for give doing her the answer. Because I wrote two pad of boy. That's good for you. Now, there is Patty Deutsch, yes. who is heavy with child. Semi-heavy, yes. And semi-heavy. Semi-heavy. And has a heavy semi -heavy. answer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you did say beaver. Yes. Yeah, I said damn toothpicks. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I did indeed. Okay. <laughs> That's not bad for a first round question, is it? Pretty good. Let's see how you do with your first rounder. Arthur's waterbed sprung a huge leak. Huh? How big was the leak? leak. I'll tell you. <laughs> Arthur plugged the hole with his blank. <laughs> She'll pass among you. <laughs> I'm finished. That's nice. I'm finished. I'm finished. Bucky's <laughs> finished. Are uh, you through up there? We're finished. Brian you're are you're finished. pretty quick there. You know, I, don't have any of, I don't have any of them right, but I'm quick. <laughs> I'm through, but I haven't written any yet. <laughs> oh, got to Arthur's be... waterbed sprung a huge leak, so Arthur plugged the hole with his blank. A huge leak. Big leak. Big, big leak. leak. Large right. Leak. Right. Oh! I'm finished. I'm finished. Good girl. And I put my pen back. Oh, the slow one's up there in the corner. He's uh, emulating Charles Nelson Riley, who is also oh. slow. Wait till you see my answer. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. What? What's Same that? you, fella. Zip up my boot. Your zipper. Oh, my boot's yeah. on the zip. Team. His eyes open. <laughs> hey, wait a minute now. Is that broken, Jane? How can be I think you. I think you need. I think you need a little cover there. Let me know. Wait a minute. Oh, no, wait a minute. It's busted. Hold on. It's busted. <laughs> Come on. Stop that. It's busted. I tell you. You're right, Brett. It's busted. It just it's can't broken, be fixed. Darling. So You've... what I'm going to have to do is just take it off. <laughs> Let, let it's me a half hour show, Gene. Yes. That's, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so that's glad. That's very good, Dick. Watch <laughs> Gene take his boot off. <laughs> Just Watch that. Gene take the skin <laughs> off of his ankle. <laughs> this is a new show called Take Your Boot. Okay. Oh, that feels great. What's that? Now, Gene, now if you'll find who can wear this, I'll take him to the ball. <laughs> His waterbed sprung a huge leak, so Arthur plugged the hole with his blank. It's mine. Oh, it's you. <laughs> I take my shoes off and my head doesn't work. <laughs> Hello there, John. Did you hear all that? Yeah. You got an answer? Yeah, I'm going to say uh, rear. <laughs> it was a big leak. Yeah. <laughs> but he's what, dog? No. He said his rear. Oh, it's rear. Oh, well, it's I, rear what? I didn't. I, I'm sorry, but I didn't say that. I said pillow. With a but, pillow? Yeah, that because would be, that would be good. No, that's not a bad answer. Pillow's pretty good. Doesn't it make you feel good? Thank you, folks. It sure as hell nice to be here. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't you glad you got in show business, Buck? No, I want to keep that. <laughs> what would you plug it with? I well, mean, we'll is find it out. Now, wait a minute. Now, hold on. We'll find out. We may come to... When they come to a good answer, they'll scream and holler and faint and do all that. What do you say, Bet? What's a good answer? Da, uh, like he sprung a huge leak. And... It was so huge, he had to plug it with his wife. <laughs> Right. Well, there's not right or wrong, but they seem to think that's bad. better than pillow. All right, Gary, it's you're on there. If I was a I wife, am? I'd get mad about her. <laughs> I said wife. Wife. So that's two wives. You guys didn't and here we go with Gloria. Then. Well, I'll tell you something. I just want to ask one question before I show this. Are you sure this is the way Betty Davis started? Yes, indeed. <laughs> yep. Made her famous. I said rear end. <laughs> Yeah. 
Okay. She's ahead of you by one buck. Yeah. <laughs> well, she's got a head start. Yes. Now, Richard. I can't believe that answer, and I can't believe that you would match. I mean, what sort of a hole would that be? Are you kidding? Well, what they held all the water in Holland with a finger, didn't yeah. they? With the ground. <laughs> I said toe. Toe. So I said, plug the hole with his rear end, according to John's Clemetti. What do you say? No, I said he used the little woman. The little woman, the wife. All right. So three to one is a score at the end of round one. Round two coming up in a moment or so. Uh, you hurry right back, will you? <laughs> okay, here we are. Uh, round one is over. Three to one is a score in favor of our challenger, Sandy. We go to round two and ask you to make a selection. I think I choose B again. B again. Three people play this time, Buck, Brett, and Gloria. Are you ready, my dear? Yes. Larry said, my wife Alice eats like a bird. <laughs> I don't mean she eats small portions. I mean what she eats for dinner is a plate full of blanks. <laughs> I might eat like, eats like a bird. My wife Alice eats like a bird. I don't mean she eats small portions. I mean what she eats for dinner is a plate full of blanks. <laughs> Put that down. I eats like a bird. That, she eats like a bird. My wife eats like a bird. I get that part. Yes. And she slept in the what, bathroom what? for six weeks. I don't mean she eats small portions. I mean what she eats for dinner is a plate full of blinks. Oh. 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 How, long, how long do you get to answer the question? Not too long, Buck. How long do you how many times do you get to ask about it? That's all. A couple times. <laughs> That's wrong. There is There's no right or wrong. Right There's only here. good and bad. Here we go. <laughs> Sandy? Larry said, my wife Alice eats like a bird. I don't mean she eats small portions. I mean what she eats for dinner is a plate full of blanks. Seeds? Seeds. Bird seeds. That was what she's talking about. That's a nice lady. She's a tennis teacher and everything. I play tennis every day. <laughs> she said seeds. Well, that's what I said, honey. That's one. That's one. All right, Brett. Now, Smarty. Now, I want you to understand that nobody in this whole world uh, must tell Betty White my answer. All right. Not if you're put on the rack. I said she ate a plate full of canaries. No. <laughs> no. She eats like a cat. What are you talking about? That would that be a wife who eats like a cat. He's right. Yeah. All right, let's see what you have, some sensible answer. Well, I had, let's see, Charles Nelson Riley sat here. What? Oh, no, you don't have to. Ignore You know, we've got to make these lights brighter. I really do. Uh, it's hard for me to tell what the Maybe score is here. Well, no, I wanted to. could see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do that? Do it the hard way. I want to tell you something here. I felt that was a very seedy answer, and I would love to go uh, along with it, but I didn't because I said words. <laughs> words. <laughs> All right. Now, John, four to one. The score means three to tie, four to win. Here we go. Dumb Dora was so dumb. Oh, yeah. How dumb was she? Hi, she, Jean. <laughs> she thought the nutcracker suite was a blank. <laughs> You don't write. Not sure. You're the only one who doesn't. Everybody like, else does. But I like this one. You could write a little answer for me if you could want. Could I write one for you? Yeah, just a teeny right answer. Uh, just you and I will play a little game here. Right. She thought the Nutcracker Suite was a... Yeah. That would was be good. A? I would do that. Was if a? I... The Nutcracker Suite was a blank. Okay. Hello there. Hi, honey. All right. Well... Oh, they yeah. sure do hiss and boo here when you get a bad answer. Yeah, we get lively audiences here. You know, they've stood out there in line for a long time, and they're all ready. Now, John, here we go. Dumb Dora was so dumb, she thought the Nutcracker Suite was a blank. I'm going to say, uh, I don't know, what am I? Oh, I am going to say, uh, I think it's a hospital or a sanitarium. As you know, the Nutcracker Suite is a great piece of music. And he's just doing a little play on words here. Now, if you're going to boo him, since we're talking about music, let's do it in unison. Ready? 
too good. Hey, that's not too good. No, they you gotta practice the cutoffs a little more there now. All right, Buck, you're up. Dumb door was so dumb she thought the nutcracker suite was a Well, I thought it would probably be a room, you know. A room. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Well, there are people out there. What did you think it was? Well, it was not only a room, it was a specific room belonging to a sp What's come over me today? I'm knowing nothing but animal answers. It was a squirrel's apartment. Oh. A squirrel's apartment. Yeah. Oh. A little funny. Now, John, you got to match your remaining celebrities to stay in the game. Oh. Gary, he's looking for hospital or sanitarium there. You're a terrific guy, John. I'm sorry. I said a room in a nut factory. A room in a nut factory. So Well, we got to say goodbye to John. Whoa, what, are you, what parting words have you got for us, John? <laughs> yeah, see how, how talkative he is? Well, anyway, he's got the $1,550. Together with our best Have a great time. Come on, John. Now, you stand by for a moment. we got to do a little business, friends, and this is it. Constellation prizes are American Tourist or Go Anywhere Lightweight Luggage, Continental Styling and Carrying Ease, American Tourist or the Casual Luggage that isn't made casually. And from Costco's Leathersmith Shop, two pedestal bar stools and easy care vinyl that looks like leather, feels like leather. That's no stranger, that's a Costco. And a gift certificate from Jack in the Box, Jumbo Jacks, French fries, and other delicious things take life a little easier at Jack in the Box. Match Team 75 will continue in a minute. <laughs> Such a gay time here, you'd never believe it. Man. Now, this girl's going to try and win some money here. She can win over $5,000 here in the Big Money Super Match. Are you ready? Yes, yes. Sandy, we polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Black and blank. The answer they gave most often is worth $500. If you match the next one, you get $250, and the third, $100. Whom do you call on? Richard. Richard, what do you say? Black and... Oh, very similar to... <laughs> well, he says that. He hasn't said anything yet. Well, before if they want to cheer, I'd... No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say one thing. Gene, Wait, I just want to say one I'm thing. obviously ready for my own show. <laughs> as long as I don't talk. <laughs> no, I mean, we've had some weird audiences. I mean, if they'll applaud my taking my shoes off, they'll applaud anything then. Now, what did you say? Black and white. Black and white? Yeah. Okay, there's one. What did he say, Gare? What did he say? Black and white. Black and white. Wait a minute. What did he say? He said black and white. Black and white. Well, I'm going to say black and blue. Okay. Patty, have you got one? Black and beautiful. Black and beautiful. So you have black and beautiful, black and white, and black and blue. Do you want one of those, or have you got a better one in your head? Black and white, please. Black and white. That's the one she hopes is under the $500 response. We'll find out where it is right now. Shall we reveal the $100 response? Black and tan. <laughs> White on white and, yes, and black right. and tan, right. Yes. What about Look the comedy about team of black, black and white? Black and white. May we see what's out of the $250 response? Black and blue. That was Gary's answer. Last chance for black and white. Here is the $500 response. Black and white. Okay, Sandy, you got $600 now. Now, since you won the $500, that means you play for 10 times that amount or $5,000. To collect, you got to match one of them head-to-head. -head. Has to be exact. Time to choose one now, as if we didn't know. Richard? Oh, yes. <laughs> Richard, you get ready to write, and you will face me. And here is the $5,000 question. Napoleon blank. <laughs> Now, he's finished, Sandy. We need an answer from you, one you think will match his. What do you say to that? Napoleon blank. Bonaparte? Napoleon Bonaparte. Okay. 
Which of the audience seems to agree with her that Napoleon Bonaparte uh, would be a good choice? And uh, we ask you now to reveal your answer for $5,000. Every time I pass you know, Brett's dressing room, there's a bottle of Napoleon, Napoleon brandy. brandy there. Oh, yeah. And uh, then I pull her leg and her bone Got comes it. Out. No. Bingo. Gene Rayburn, Match Game. Listen, you are marvelous. Thank I think. you. You too. Uh, join us next time for Match Game 75. Goodbye. This is Johnny Olsen speaking for Match Game 75. A Mark Goodson, Bill Tubman production. And Fanny Flag as we play the star studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene Rayburn. Are you all ready, willing, and able? Yes. Good. What happened to the pants that match the jacket? Couldn't afford the whole outfit. I see. <laughs> <laughs> now, Rich, Richard... Pardon? Richard is uh, in a retaliatory mood. Well... Translate that. Well, he's trying to get back at Fanny Flagg. Uh -huh. For her, all of the time she's been in the limelight. She got a write-up in Time magazine about those sweaters. She did? Yep. What'd they say? Well, I... Can <laughs> <laughs> I have the envelope, please? And the winner is... The Best Supporting Actress Award, Charles Nelson Riley. <laughs> Made this. Isn't that oh, nice? And I'm going to wear it. I wear it in the shower. Yeah. yeah. I tell you, okay, it doesn't look as well as Let's on see. you as it would on her. They... Oh, well, I'll, I'll get to that during a commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, let's say hello to our two players, Sandy Vasco and Ron Wilma. Hello there, players. Oh, yeah. Okay? Good. Sandy's the current champ with a total of $13,000 to her credit. She's being challenged by Ron, who's had both of his questions, and he's matched one celebrity. Now, as your second round question comes up, Sandy, you're going to need one to tie and two to win. And we'll see how this game ends up in a moment or so. But right now, friends, this for you. <laughs> All right, here we go. Try 56. Now, Sandy, you ready? Yes. This is for you. The mama kangaroo said to her son, how many times do I have to tell you, don't put your blank in your pouch? The mama kangaroo said to who? The mama kangaroo said to her son, how many times do I have to tell you, don't put your blank in your pouch? In his pouch? Well, she don't is speaking to her son, the pouch. kangaroo. Yeah, don't put your... What? Son, don't put your blank in your pouch. I got it. Oh. See, kangaroos have I'm a pouch. already finished. Oh, yeah. Whether they're big kangaroos or little kangaroos. Male or female, they both right. do. Right, right. Don't put your... Males have one as well. Don't male kangaroos have a pouch no. also? No. No, wait a minute. They're I thought saying that male kangaroos uh -huh, don't have a pouch. This. They're saying that male kangaroos don't have a pouch. Will you pay attention to the show? They it's a don't. comedy show. Who cares? I can't answer it. Well, now, we're going to assume that male kangaroos right. have a yeah. pouch for okay. the purpose of the question, okay? No, they don't. I really think they're related to it. The other ones I've ever met do. do. The uh, male kangaroos have a Gucci I bag. love the way she's... <laughs> 
Sandy the lion. <laughs> All right, Sandy. It's my pouch. That's it. We're assuming for the purpose of the question that male kangaroos have a pouch, whether they do or not. The mama kangaroo said to her son, how many times do I have to tell you, son, don't put your blank in your pouch? Um, foot? Like foot in your mouth, foot in your pouch? That's bad. <laughs> that's your answer. Good or bad, that's your answer. She said, foot, don't put your foot in your pouch. John, what did you say? Well, um... Watch out. <laughs> that's the first thing that got in my head. I said, don't put your can in your pouch. Yeah. I'll say it's ridiculous. <laughs> but here we go from the ridiculous to the BMT. <laughs> what do you say? BMT? Yeah. <laughs> but my say? answer is absolutely sublime. I said, do not put your thumb in your pouch. All right. That's a possibility. <laughs> Gary? Well, if the thumb is the mouth to the kangaroo. You didn't Let us that. not have any oh, pardon me. <laughs> colloquies here colloquies. that do not concern me. I'll have a glass of Chad Magni, if you don't mind. All right. You, you sir. Philly Magnon. I didn't understand this question at all. Well, I don't think anybody did. I said sister. <laughs> That's the best answer so far. <laughs> Don't put, your, uh, don't put it your sister not. in your pouch. No, that's a, so. not a bad answer at all. Elaine, did you understand this? <laughs> yeah, but uh, do male kangaroos really carry Gucci bags? That's what he said. They do, yeah. Do you know what they, you know what they uh, say to uh, little babies born in Beverly Hills? No, what? Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. They said, you that's it. I don't you. want to answer. Come on, you got to. Uh, 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 would you she believe? Said she foot. said foot. Right. I said the other foot. Foot. <laughs> Could have knocked me over with an ostrich feather. Exactly. <laughs> Good. What did you, you know say? What they say to little babies who were born in Watts? No, what? J.C. Penny. He <laughs> <laughs> said hands. Don't, don't put, put your hands. hands. Yeah. yeah. You know the way right. mothers are always saying, don't put your hands in your pocket, son. So if the hands is not bad. What do you say? I say um, the kangaroo that is indigenous to Australia, a member of the marsupial family, and I said, don't put your toys in your pouch. <laughs> We have a tie game here, and we will oh, break the tie after we pass along this message to you. Now we have a tie, sort of, we have to go to a tiebreaker, and the first thing we do is wipe the slate clean here, push the button, and reveal two tie-breaking questions. One for each. One who scored the most will be the winner. Ron, please make a selection. B, please. B. Here we go. Uh -oh. Everybody plays. Tiebreaker question. Pita said... I've been pickpocketed twice, but this time I'm ready for them. I've got a blank in my pocket. You just said I've been pickpocketed twice, but this time I'm ready for them. I've got a blank in my pocket. Oh. <laughs> oh. Peter. Peter said, I've been pickpocketed <laughs> twice, but this time I'm ready for them. I've got a blank in my pocket. Got a blank in but my pocket. But the name of the person really doesn't have anything to do the with the answer, I don't think. Right. Pete. 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 I didn't write Pete. any of that graffiti. Okay. I believe you. Brett, you will finish. What, one. dear? Yes. Oh, just any day now, I'll be right with you. Okay. Just hang in there, Good sweetheart. answer there, old girl. Now, Ron Wilmeth, we come to you. Peter said, I've been pickpocketed twice, but this time I am ready for them. I've got a blank in my pocket. Mousetrap? Mousetrap. <laughs> See how it is when you give a good answer, Ron? <laughs> right, John, what do you say? I regret to say that I don't have a mousetrap. I've got a pickle in my pocket. Okay. That would Who's that would make people? me withdraw my hand. I'll tell you. Thank you. I scare the heck out of me. I tell you that. I'm ready for what I've got a mouse trap in my pocket, according to Ron. What do you say? That Johnny's a cute, but he's a real loser, isn't he? Yes, he is. <laughs> well, I, we may have to have a meeting, but it won't be a long one. What? I said rat trap, and that's first cousin to him. There's one for you, Ron. He says, I've got a mouse trap in we my pocket. We may have to have a meet. Not them, you and I. Yeah, all right. That little uh, motel room in Encino. I said mouse trap. There's another one. Yeah. Elaine, old 
girl, we are looking for a mouse trap. Oh, girl, last time you called me the kid. Yes. I'm really aging fast. Um, I wouldn't say that. Guess, guess, guess what I said. No, you can't what? guess what I I said he was really ready for me. He had a hole in his pocket. That's it. That's the same. You know, <laughs> Is it, uh, but I'm so glad to hear that John has my pickle. <laughs> okay, Richard. That is the way to slow them down. Yes, it is. Have a hole in there. Have a hole in the pocket. That's two of those, but Ron is looking for another mousetrap, Fanny. He's found one. He oh! found one. There he is. Now you need three to tie, four to win. Ready? Now here is her tie-breaking question. Okay. Dumb Dora is so dumb. How dumb is she? She puts Thank a pickle you. in her pocket. <laughs> she put a pickle in her pocket. She, in her pocket. <laughs> she is so dumb she thinks an eggplant comes from a blank. Oh, honey, I got it. Dumb Dora is so dumb she thinks an eggplant comes from a blank. All right. Now we come to Sandy Vasco. Dumb Dora is so dumb. <laughs> the three-year-old child in the audience just said, How oh, dumb is she? Anyway, she thinks an eggplant comes from a blank. An egg. An egg. An eggplant comes from an egg, she says. John, what do you say? Uh, I'm afraid I've done it again. You have? I it comes from a, a chicken. A chicken. The audience seems to prefer the chicken over the egg. But who knows which came first? I ask you, Brett. That's what I kept asking my mother. <laughs> what came first? Uh, I said chicken. Hey, chicken. Do not uh, uh, despair. You may get an egg out of this yet there. Gare? <laughs> I'm about to lay one. I'll tell you, Sandy, you've been terrific, and I like you a lot. I'm sorry I said chicken. Uh-oh, three chicken. <laughs> Got to match the remaining ones to stay in the game. Let's see what happens here. Don't leave it. You notice how she turned to Ron and she said, well, it's been nice playing with you and all. I mean, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, I said egg. Hey. Two more eggs and we get another tie here. Now uh, we'll have an omelet. <laughs> what do you say? He said tree. Now, now's the time to turn to Ron. Because <laughs> I said chicken. That means Ron wins the game. Don't, don't go anyplace. You, you're, we want to ride you around back on the merry-go-round. You sit there, and Ron, you come on down. And she's so used to winning, she automatically got up and said, oh, Well, Sandy. Don't worry about it. You got $13,000, and that's a lot of money, and we're very happy for you. Thanks, Sandy Vasco. Good luck, Sandy. Thank you. Bye-bye. How do you feel? Better now. You feel better now. Now you've got your $100, and you're going to have it go at over 5000 here, Ron. Shall we begin? Please do. We polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. <laughs> blank ash. And the answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. You match the next one, you get 250 and the bottom one, 100 Whom do you call on over here? Richard, please. The great tennis player, Cigar Ash. <laughs> <laughs> cigar Ash. There's one. Fanny, please. Arthur Ash. The Arthur great Ash. Player, yes. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I knew. All right. And Gary. <laughs> Gary. <laughs> Be Behold the ash. No, I don't. Uh, hot ash. Hot ash. <laughs> I've had well. them in my eye many times. What can I tell you? Okay. So you have hot ash. <laughs> A likely response. <laughs> And you have Cigar Ash and Arthur Ash. You want one of those? Ash. <laughs> Nobody likes that. Yeah, no. Nobody likes that answer at all there. Cigar. You want the Cigar Ash. That's the one that Richard gave you. Let's find out if it's up there, and if it is there, where is it? That is the question. We'll find out by be revealing the $100 response. Potash. Oh, 
spot is. Right. Well, if, when you that do it, a... you get an ash, and that's what it is. <laughs> All right. We are looking for cigar ash. May we see the $250 response? Arthur Ash. Last chance for cigar ash. Here's the $500 response. Cigarette. surprise there because we didn't expect the judge to match uh, cigarette ash and cigar ash, but I guess they figured he it would be splitting hairs if they didn't match them, so what the very heck? Kind. Match. You got the $500, and that's very generous of you, you and we thank spell. you. And now you're going to have a go at 5000 Remember to collect, you got to match one of them head-to-head, -head. has to be exact. Richard, please. Okay, you face me, always, Ron. It's always Richard. And Richard will give us his response to this. Would they have matched marijuana ash with cigars? Yeah. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> That's it. Spell it out. We have a $5,000 number here. It goes like this. Chocolate blank. Chocolate blank. <laughs> Okay, he's finished. Now, Ram, we need an answer from you, one which you think will match his. What do you say to that? Chocolate blank. Cake. Cake, he says. Yeah, you like that one? Okay. Richard, he says, chocolate cake matches you for $5,000. May we see it, please? Yeah, I just love chocolate chip cookies. Chocolate chip cookies. Yeah. I also like chocolate chocolate. <laughs> time I'm wearing sequins. <laughs> I've never, ever, how dare you? <laughs> okay, the Lord alive. I told you you shouldn't wear Your wife is very happy down there. We've had some nice shots of her, and we congratulate you. You got the $5,600, and you're going to meet another player in a moment or so, but right now, this message for you, dear friend. Congratulations. Today's Constellation Prizes are a West Cross Digital Dial Light Alarm Clock. Wood grain finish, lighted dial, backed by years of experience, West Cross, a tally industries company. And condition your hair while you shampoo with Wella Balsam Shampoo. Leaves your hair looking healthy, shiny, and soft, even repair split ends. Wella Balsam Shampoo. And Air Week Solid it works continuously 24 hours a day to eliminate odors and is available in Rose, Natural Spearman, and Lemon Six. Match Game 75, starring Gene Rayburn, continues. All right. Now we're ready to start another game. If Ron's got it all together here, we uh, congratulate him. And we welcome a new player. With a great deal of pleasure, we present to you Lucille McFarland. Hi, Lucille. Oh. How are you? Hi. Good. Now, you know each other. And uh, we'll find out a little bit about Lucille now. Well, I'm a billing clerk, and I have two children, a girl and a boy. My boy's four, and my girl's six months now. Yeah. And let's go. <laughs> let's go? Okay, okay let's, go. let's play. Here we go. Anything you say, Lucille? You make okay. a selection here? A. A it is. New game. Lucille <laughs> says, let's go. And I obey orders. Now, for you, I have a little poem. I love oh, poems. no. Oh, I beg your pardon. Not a poem. It's okay. a letter. What a letter right? from a viewer. Oh, yeah. right. uh -oh. It says, Dear Match Game 75, my Cocker Spaniel watches your show every day <laughs> and plays along at home. <laughs> That's the kind of show this is, That's folks. That's right. Now, he wants to be a contestant so he can blank Richard Dawson. My <laughs> dog Sarah does watch television. Really? Not this show, but... Yes, yeah. of course, Matt. <laughs> Did you hear all of that, Lucille? 
A letter from a viewer, Dear Match Game 75, my Cocker Spaniel watches your show every day and plays along at home, and now he wants to be a contestant so he can blank Richard Dawson. You think about that while they're finishing up here? Irresistible. You did it. Okay, John. Oh, are you ready? Right. Now we're all set. <laughs> Pop it in there. Put it in there. Don't be intimidated by him. You do your own thing what there. What does that mean? Now, Lucille. A letter from a viewer. Dear Match Game 75, my Cocker Spaniel watches your show every day and plays along with it, and now he wants to be a contestant so he can blank Richard Dawson. Kiss. Kiss Richard Dawson. Listen. Would you allow that? No. 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 He's so possessive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Ryan's got there first, so this Cocker Spaniel is out of it there. But anyway, uh, she said kiss. I don't kiss. have a dog that does any kissing. I have a dog that does a lot of this, though. Lick. Lick. Lick the dog. I'll tell you how they do it. The dog just comes up to you like this and goes, mmm. That's how they kiss. Let me feel your nose. Yes. Very warm. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Have they ever seen a dog pack a rock? I mean, that's just silly. They don't go like this. Well, actually, I said, what's his name? Dawson. Richard Dawson. I said, match. So you can match Richard Dawson. Which seems a logical answer to me. Yeah. It's very difficult to get a dog to kiss with no tongues, you know. It's, 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 I said... <laughs> oh, my I Lord. I, <laughs> I said, and this is pure jealousy, you understand. Dogs love to be the center of attention, and it's difficult with Richard And Rowe. so does I he. said, bite. Bite, <laughs> That's it. Bite? Bite. You see, it's a kiss. What do you say? I said the dog really wanted to walk Richard. Wanted to but walk Richard Dawson. He came on and he wanted to bite him. Bite. Well, we got two bites and a couple of kisses there. Bites. What, uh, what do you say, Richard? How about well, you? I uh, happen to be... You were there. I happen to be a dog lover. Yes. If the police blotter in Philadelphia is correct. So <laughs> naturally, <laughs> I said kid. Well, uh, that's too for you to say. Now, Fanny. There's another kid. So that's three for you. Your question will come along later. Right now, this message for you, dear friend. Team Rabbit Match Game 75, join us next time. Goodbye, you were splendid. This is Johnny Olsen speaking for Match Game 75, a Mark Goodson, Bill Tottman production. Get ready to match the stars. Gary Bergoff, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Madeline Rue, Richard Dawson, and Betty White as we play the star studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene Rayburn. Thank you. Hello there. Hi, Hello. Johnny Olson. How are you? Good. And is everybody okay over here? Yes. Yes, sir. Are you ready to have to go at it? You're not okay? No. Is there something we can do for you? No, not... What can we do for her? I don't think a thing. Thank you really much. Maybe if we put drapes in here. <laughs> <laughs> she can't fit her fat Orange. scarf into her fat bosom is her problem. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Getting a little testy, aren't we? No. Oh. Let's say hello to our current champion, Nancy Olshan. Here. <laughs> Nancy's won six thousand three hundred dollars, right? Yep. <laughs> and what are you going to do with all that money, Nancy? Oh God, I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> My husband just graduated law school, so we'll help him open a practice. Oh, that'll be nice. Yeah. yeah. He could Let's open an office Hawaii. probably <laughs> that big with $6,300 in this okay. day and age. All right, we're, uh, uh, I guess we're going to start with the audience match here in a moment or so, and you're going to have a go at over $5,000. We'll see if uh, how far you can go with that after we see how far you want to listen to this message. 
Here we are, once again, with Nancy Olson. She's up here for the third time. She's going to try for over $5,000 now. Nancy, you ready? Yes, I am. We polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. <laughs> Blank. What does that say? I can't see the end of it. Butter. Okay. Blank butter. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500. If you match the next one, you get $250. And if you match the bottom one, you get $100. Whom do you call on? Richard, please. Richard, what do you say? Present. Blank butter. Oh, um, churned butter. Churned Being butter. Country oh, butter. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Just a second. Who gave her funeral? <laughs> her brought her out of nothing. Yes. And then you came star. up with drill. Right. <laughs> now, if you don't like churned butter, put it where the moon don't shine. <laughs> Gary, what do you say? Unchurned butter. <laughs> that is the most revealing thing he has said in 18 weeks. No, I think it's bread and butter. Bread and butter. Uh, well, that's fat and One more. Brett. Brett. Well, what about peanut butter? Peanut butter. That's good. That's good. I'll do that. <laughs> Hold on, wait a minute now. That is a good one, and I think I'll change mine. <laughs> You're going to say peanut I'll butter. I'll say peanut butter. You say churn. Oh, you say churn. Okay. I'll stick with bread and butter. You stick with bread. All right, so you got bread and butter, peanut butter, and churn butter. Do you want one of those? Yes, peanut butter, please. Peanut butter, please. How do you like it? Just plain with a little jelly on it? Yes. Oh, all right. That's one peanut butter with jelly. Are you sure you don't want churn? Coming up. <laughs> Okay, so we're looking for peanut butter. Let's find out if it's up there. Where, if so, where is it under the hundred dollars terms? I ask you. Churn butter. I ask you, Earl. I ask you. Apple butter. Apple oh, butter. My mother used to make oh, apple churned butter. apple butter. Yeah, churned <laughs> apple butter. I love that. Revolting thought, if I'm I've ever heard churned. of one. Yep. All right, she is looking for a little peanut butter to stick to the roof of her mouth. Let's see if it's under the two hundred and fifty dollar response. Bread and butter. That was Gary's answer. Yeah. I think she's yeah. got it. You think oh, she got let's it? Hope so, dear. Last chance for peanut butter. All right, here's a five hundred dollar response. Slide it all there it is. $6,800 with the additional $500. Now you're going to have to try at $5,000. And you may choose any celebrity on this head-to-head -head match here except Gary uh, because you chose him last time. That's the rule. Whom do you choose? Richard. Okay, Richard. This will have to Just a me. second. Do you forget I gave you churn? <laughs> Oh, all right. What was okay. He's going to do better this time. Oh, he is. I certainly couldn't do worse. Yeah. <laughs> all right, here we go. This is worth five thousand dollars now. Blank butter. No, oh. it says board blank. That's B O A R D blank. Board blank. B O A R D blank. All right. Now he's finished, and he uh, made up his mind very quickly there. And we ask you for your response to match his. What do you say? Boardroom. Boardroom. B O A R D room. <laughs> All right. Now, Richard, it's uh, show and tell time. She. Well, I think room is right up there with churn. <laughs> Boardroom. Well, this is where they hold walk. Boardwalk. I guess boardwalk is a little better than boardroom, isn't it? I think yeah. so, too. But you said the first thing that came in your head... Well, that's, that's where I got churned. Where do you that's think right. that? That's <laughs> right. It came into your head. Mess. Okay, now, Nancy, you've still got the 6,800. You're going to meet another player now and play another game. So let's bring on Becky Prince. Hello, Becky. Hello, Becky. Hi. Whatever it's got. Nancy, you know Becky Prince? Hi. Now, Becky Prince is going to tell us a little bit about herself. Please. I'm thrilled to be here. Well, we're delighted to have you here with us, Becky. And I'd like to give a plug for your staff. It's just been fantastic to us. We've never had such a good time backstage. Well, that's good. They're a nice bunch. That's very nice. Yeah. Diane, Jennifer, and all those people who are, are in contact and, and, and recruit your producer, these people. Ira has just been fantastic. Yeah. Ira Scotch is a splendid fellow. Just been great. Yes. 
How do you feel about Johnny Olson? Oh, well, he hasn't been backstage with us, but we've enjoyed watching him. She isn't. She, she's saying all the right things here. No. How do you feel Becky about? May win how up do you to a dollar ninety-eight on this show? How do you then? feel about the president? <laughs> how do you feel about churn butter? <laughs> Becky, where are you from? I'm from Columbus, Ohio. Living out here now with my husband, and I yeah. have a small baby. Mm-hmm. Okay. Best kind. Uh, <laughs> you ready to go? I'm yes, very ready. All right, you got to stand by for a minute or two here while we do a little business, and we'll start this game. First, this for you. Shall we begin there? Becky, you want A or B? B for Becky. B for Becky. Here we go. B for churn butter. B for churn butter. <laughs> it was dinner time, and one cannibal said to the other, Hey, you cut it out. That's my blank you're eating. <laughs> or that's my blank you're eating. <laughs> Two cannibals talking, say, yeah, it's dinner time. One of them says, hey, cut it out. That's my blank you're eating. There are several very good choices. Yes, sir. Are. What are they? <laughs> Choose one. All right. Cut it out. Or it could be. That's my blank out. you're eating. That's my blank you're eating. No, that's all right. That's my blank you're eating. Right. Oh, I get it. That's now my blank you're eating. Blank you You should put little accents over the words you'd like to well, stress. Well, I, I, I have to give you all accents I, because I, I, one I, will lead you to an answer and I don't want to do that. I I know. Dancing quite Everybody well. ready? Yes. Yeah. It was dinner time and one cannibal said to the other, Hey, you cut it out. That's my blank you're eating. Wife? My wife? <laughs> Okay. She said wife. Gary, what do you say? I didn't say that. <laughs> I said foot. Foot, yeah. Sitting together at the same table. Right, you know, naturally. Has terrible table Okay, manner. Brett? Well, you know it gets awfully crowded when they get all scrunched up there together. Scrunched? On yeah. that little grass mat. I said that's my leg you're eating. Leg and foot? Yeah. That seems to be the answer. What do you say? My other leg. That's your other leg. <laughs> Charles, since you've come back from New York, you're holding your answers upside down. <laughs> I just wanted to point that out to you. Dickie Dawson pointed that out to him, and he said... Oh, am I? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't write him like that anymore. He had a hard time in New York. He really did. <laughs> yes, Madeline. Well, I was going to say friend, but then I didn't think that they would... Cook their friend. Well, they... So I just said person. Person. Yeah, it's my person. That's my person you're eating. Yeah. Well, that's my person that's you're eating. Yeah, yeah. I can't you get any women's lip complications. They're all yeah. around. Yeah, they're all sitting around. Uh, missionary. In yes. And the missionaries the guy, in the stew pot. Well, that's what they eat, don't they? Missionary. That's right. They eat missionaries. Well, it wouldn't be vegetarian. Guy puts it and he said, Ow! It's my arm you're eating. Oh. You I have see. to be there, of course. Yes, that's <laughs> 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 Do you have any churn butter? I, I must uh, have to be off now. Yes. You are off now. Oh, you going to save him? Are you no. going to save him? No, no, no. I'm just going to say this very quickly and move right along. Father, you're eating, and it's wrong. And let's go on to the next question. All right, on to the next question. The next question is for Nancy. It's your first round question, and it goes like this. Now, you all remember... Uh, Richard Dawson's TV show, Hogan's Heroes. Oh. Indeed we did. Yeah, yeah. 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 You, you remember that oh, show? Word yeah. of mouth killed us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> In which he played the marvelous fellow well, Newkirk there. Years. Well, Richard said to Colonel Hogan, Colonel, I don't know how he said it, but he said, because I don't know how... I'm Cockney, free. I spoke like that. Oh, so he goes, so he says, Colonel, I've come up with a terrific plan to make money. I'm putting a blank in the escape tunnel. Right. That's gotcha. what he said. Okay. I'm putting a blank in the escape tunnel. I got this. Oh, I've got this. Oh, I've got You do the worst Courtney action I've ever had in all my life. How did Newkirk talk? I forgot. It, it just uh, began yeah, writing down there. Colonel, I've talked. Colonel. No, the Newkirk. <laughs> Third year. <laughs> we were very lonely in that camp. <laughs> no, he spoke like that. Colonel, I got, I've come up with his terrific plan to make money. I'm putting a blank in the escape tunnel. In the escape tunnel. And then they cancel the show. I yeah. love Robert Blair. It's a shame. I was doing yeah. so well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nancy. He says, Colonel, I've come up with a terrific plan to make money. I'm putting a blank in the escape tunnel. 
show, movie show in the escape tunnel. Movie show. That'll join the great immortals like churn butter. <laughs> Gary, what do you say? She says this a movie is, show. This is especially, especially uh, uh, important when you're escaping from New Jersey to New York. I said a toll gate. A toll gate. A good answer. Yes, Brett, toll is good. What have you got? Have you got a good one? Oh, oh yes. Oh, actually, I have. He said, oh, call Pete and Blimey, where's my coat? Let's put in a toll booth. A toll booth. Of course, of course. <laughs> that hand <laughs> answer. Yes. <laughs> Charles. Hogan's Heroes was wonderful, Richard. Thank you, darling. I used Made to watch it. the Germans. I used to watch it when I came home from school. <laughs> <laughs> That was animal training school, of course. <laughs> he sucked you into that one, didn't he? <laughs> they say Hollywood wit is dead. <laughs> All right, Miss Madeline, honey, what do you say? I'm say putting a blank in the escape tunnel. Toll bridge. Toll bridge. Yeah. So far, we got all those tolls there. And you, Newkirk. Uh, me, sir, I am putting in your basic toll booth. A basic toll booth. <laughs> okay. Right. Right. He and what do you say? That's five toll booths we have so far. Well, I've never been one to be different, but and I'm not now, except not that now. if anything happened to them, <laughs> and have you ever seen that before? <laughs> if, if, if anything happened to them on the way out, they could always say they died with their booth on. Oh. oh. <laughs> now, well, what we have here, you see, is zero to zero. That is your basic tie. No. <laughs> what we have here yeah. is two dummies, is what we have here. No, I'm only kidding, girls. I don't mean that at all. Second round question coming up in a moment. Right now, this message coming up for you, friend. Today's Constellation Prizes are American tourists to go anywhere, lightweight luggage, continental styling and carrying ease, American tourists are the casual luggage that isn't made casually. And think of Richard Dial Shampoo, the shampoo the special managing agent that leaves your hair soft and manageable with a natural looking shine. And you'll take the good times home with four cases of Hires Draft Style Root Beer, quality and distinctive taste that has made Hires a favorite for 100 years. And though he's not 100, he's still a favorite. That's Gene Rayburn in Match Game 75 when it resumes in a minute. Here we are, friends. <laughs> and we carry on. And we are carrying on. Go, Becky. B was so lucky, I'll try it again. <laughs> ah, okay. Everybody plays because she didn't score the first time out. Uh, do you yes. have a look home, by the way? What's that? Do you have a ride home? <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, all right. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd... Okay. <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> now, listen to this. They threw George out of the tennis club because at the end of the match, he jumped over the net and blanked his opponent. <laughs> That's what happened. They threw George out of the tennis club because at the end of the match, he jumped over the net and blanked his opponent. <laughs> well, there are so many choices. Oh, it's this is tricky. an easy one. There's one really marvelous answer. Is there really? Yes, I can't tell you. I can't give you any kind of a hint at all. Yes. <laughs> and it's not a chicken joke. <laughs> it's, no, it's not a chicken joke. There. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Is it a fish joke? Something pretty fishy about it to me. <laughs> Ready for you, Charles. Waiting for you, Charles. You know, he hasn't improved one bit from his long vacation. You no. think he's been a little... His hair has grown a little bit since he's been ba back east there. Well, that's because I waltzed it while he was away. <laughs> <laughs> I never fail to wash it in a lovely sink of churned butter. <laughs> Now let's call on Becky, shall we, and ask her. They threw George out of the tennis club, Becky, because at the end of the match, he jumped over the net and blanked his opponent. It's really hard. Um, hit, hit with this racket or... Hit his opponent. Mm -hmm. He hit his opponent. Well, you're supposed mm -hmm. to do that, aren't you? No. Wow. Jump over the net and shake hands. What do you say? I think I said something a little more direct than I said. He flattened his opponent. He flattened his opponent. How about that? That's a man. Okay, there's one. Brett? Well, this may be just a dash Elizabethan. I said smote. Smote. Oh. There's another one. That's two. 
Charles. This is American, kissed. Oh. oh, leave it to him. <laughs> <laughs> well, not to me, certainly. Yes. Yes, he hit him. He hit him. That's three for you. What did he do to his opponent, Richard? Tell us all the story. Smoting, I think, is very bad for your health, isn't it? <laughs> is it? <laughs> Charlie, does this mean the prom is on? <laughs> Did he kiss him or did he hit him, Betty? I was surprised about George. I didn't even think he was a member of this club. He kissed him. <laughs> he kissed him there. Okay, so that's three for you. And now let's see how you do. You gotta, you gotta match three of them to stay in the game. Four will win another game. Tiny Tom Thumb said, ladies and gentlemen, his voice was much higher because his yeah. vocal cords, he said, Tom, ladies, but I can't do Ladies and gentlemen, I am the world's tiniest magician. Since I'm too small to pull a rabbit out of a hat, tonight I will pull a blank out of a thimble. What a lovely thought. Isn't it a beautiful It's like question. a poem. It is. It's, just make, it's, it's touching. It's what I'm it too is. small to pull a rabbit out of a hat, so tonight I will pull a blank out of a thimble. Is what Tiny Tom Thumb said. All right, lower tier is ready. Well, what about us up here? Already. I before he accepted. Okay, that Nancy. Tiny Tom Thumb said, "Ladies and gentlemen, I am the world's tiniest magician. Uh, since I'm too small to pull a rabbit out of the hat, tonight I will pull a blank out of a thimble." A pea. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yes. Shuck a pee right out of the pod and make it. Sounds like it have anything to do with a submarine? No. I don't know. That's a joke from last week. I know. I don't know. <laughs> they wouldn't remember. No, I said I said flea rhymes with pee and that spells pool. Yep. I would pull a flea out of a thimble. Right, sorry. Well, That's a reasonable I'm answer. Sorry, I thought only a. Teensy, weensy little flea with flea. Yeah. Flea out of a thimble. Charles? I said what I got a lot of in my kitchen. Ants. Ants. And a few uncles, too. I happen to know. Gonna match the rest of them to stay in the game, Nancy. Let's see what Madeline offers. But what's on my doggy? Flea. Flea! So that means Betsy wins again. Ants and ants. Okay, come on down. for a moment while we say goodbye to Nancy. We'll be leaving here with a total of $6,800. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Now while she's rolling around, we're going to do a little commercial here, okay? Uh, Becky had to run off someplace because we ran out of time. Uh -oh. We just uh, have a moment to thank uh, uh, Gary for being with us here for the uh, length of time that Charles was gone. He really uh, filled your shoes very well for this splendid job. But he's going to be back from time to time. Over my dead body. <laughs> that's, no. That's actually, she just, uh, again, she beat me to the gun, as it were. What, why? I just wanted to say that she's been a terrific sport, and I love her very much. Uh, yes, she is. She takes her... <laughs> and Charles, we're delighted that you ha you're back. What's that? <laughs> no, it's for Richard. <laughs> Richard. Ri He's busy right now. Take the message. Richard. We're not leaving the show, but well, what the heck? <laughs> yes, Alan. Everything I told you in New York is true. <laughs> wow. Now listen. You're all splendid, and we shall see you for uh, very soon, in the very near future. But when the next time we all get together, it'll be this group of celebrities whom you will have the pleasure of seeing. Jack Elberson, Jeff Summers, Charles Nelson Raleigh, Lynn Redgrave, Richard Dawson, and Patty Dort. So this is Gene Rayburn for Match Game 75. Join us next time, if you please. I thank you. Goodbye. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 75, a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. Stay tuned for 
Tattletales next over most of these CBS stations. Get ready to match the stars. Nipsey Russell, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Lee Meredith, Richard Dawson, and Joyce Bulefont. <laughs> The star set of Big Money Match Game 75. And now here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene Redder. Nice to have all of you here with us today. For nice any day. to be here, Ray. Is everybody ready? Red A. Yep. Listen, I got to see you. <laughs> I'll say. I, well, I, did you throw your cards away from the opening there? Yes. They're in the slot oh, there. I'll tell you, you mine said. said what, holy, what did yours say? Holy mackerel. And what did yours say? I wish, I wish. <laughs> I was just wondering what they're laughing at. For something I forgot to tell you your first time on the show. We do a lot of kissing here oh. on this program. You know, oh, sometimes know. if a contestant wins five or ten thousand dollars, the excitement. <laughs> the, yeah. He wanted to kiss Richard. The, uh, who did? <laughs> he oh, really? Mr. Reed. John Reed yeah. wanted to kiss Richard. Oh well. If well, sometimes we all get just carried away, and and we, you know, we all get excited and just kiss a lot. <laughs> So I thought we'd practice well, before. before. Oh, I guess you got to wait to win the just money first, huh? <laughs> yes. Would you want to kiss a man who's just sprayed Raid in his mouth? <laughs> Be careful. Now, let's say hello to John Reed. Uh, John's a current champ with $5,600. He started this game yesterday. He's being challenged by Hetty, who did quite well. We're going to finish the second and final round. You're going to have to match five celebrities to stay in the game. However, if you match all of them, you'll win another game. John, let's see what happens in a minute or so, so you hurry right back. We are ready, and I'll push this button, and this is the question for John Reed. Remember, got a match five to stay in the game, six will win another day, game. <laughs> Tarzan, say. Oh, oh, Tarzan. Jane Good, she make pocket in my loincloth. <laughs> now Tarzan have place to keep blank. <laughs> Hear that, John? Tarzan say, Jane Good, she make pocket in my loincloth. Now Tarzan have place to keep blank. Think about that for a moment or so. Was it Everybody an inside plays. pocket or an outside pocket? I don't know. I wasn't there when she did her little needlepoint trick there. She made pocket in my loincloth. Okay. Now Tarzan have place to keep blank. All right. Go ahead. Do it. Do it. Uh. Oh, he's just waiting to see what I'm saying, you know. <laughs> it's back to the old way. Yes. <laughs> oh, heaven. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I muss your hair? <laughs> <laughs> okay, John Reed. If you're ready, Tarzan say, Jane, good. She make pocket in my loincloth. Now Tarzan have place to keep blank. <laughs> Pocket book. <laughs> It was very lonely in the jungle. <laughs> Real success for old John Reed. Yes. <laughs> After a long... John says, pocketbook, Nipsey, what do you say? I don't care what John said. When a man goes swinging all day, he's got to have a lunch. A place to put fruit. Fruit. Okay. <laughs> Brett has to say pocketbook or the game is over for you, John. Let's see what Brett says. What? <laughs> The burden is on you, my dear. Why? Is that, why, why, why? <laughs> Just show the card, that's oh, all. Show and tell. Oh, golly gee I said a place to keep his cigarette. Okay, that means Hetty wins again. What are the rest of you guys? Okay. Come on down, Hetty. Congratulations. Okay. Now you stand by for a moment or so, and we're going to say goodbye to John Reed, who's won $5,600. And you got your winning card there, John. Thank you very much. Great to meet you, John Reed. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank 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 you. Th
Would you uh, step down the uh, stage here with me? Thank you. How do you feel? Scared. Oh, there's nothing to be scared of. This is the easiest part of it, isn't it? Take a deep breath. Okay, see, there's nothing to be afraid of when you can breathe that deeply. We polled a recent studio audience, Hetty, and we got their best response to this. Blank dry. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. If you match the middle one, you get $250. If we match a bottom one, you get $100. Three of the ding-a-lings are permitted to assist. Richard. Drip dry. Drip dry. <laughs> Drip dry, he said. Who? Brett. Brett, what do you say? How about bone dry? Bone dry. All right, that's two. Charles. Oh, Charles. No. <laughs> Blank dry. What's that? Something dry. <laughs> Something dry. Blank dry. Martini dry. <laughs> and draw. <laughs> I did he it said all myself. That in a burst of creative energy, <laughs> he said high and dry. So you've got high and dry, bone dry, drip dry. Do you want one of those or do you want one of your own? Drip dry. Drip dry, you say. See, I thought of one that no one said and I'm really surprised. Well, what do you say? Yeah. yeah. Canada dry. No one drank yeah. all that. <laughs> Well, maybe it did you would what do you say, audience? Wash, wash, wash and dry? Wash. You're worse than they are. <laughs> well, let's have, find out if drip dry is up there and if so where. May we see the one hundred dollar response? <laughs> drip dry it is! You're in the hundred dollars. Congratulations. Well, you got it right off the bat there. I wonder what's in the next one, do you? Well, let's find out right now. Would you slide it by, Earl? Hi. For high and dry. Whose was that? That was Charles, okay. With a little help <laughs> from a friend. Yeah. <laughs> now, let's see if drip dries up there. Uh, I mean, the other one. What's up there? 500 Canada dry. I'll bet. $500. Here we go. Canada dry. Did you think of that? No, I didn't. Didn't even cross your mind? No. Nope. All right. Well, there are too many calories anyway. Right so you want $100. Canada, that means you're going to play for $1,000 now. To collect that, you got to match one of them head-to-head -head exactly. Which one will it be? Richard. Okay, Richard, get ready to write. Hetty will face me, and here we go with the $1,000 question. Danny blank. Danny blank. D-A-N-N-Y blank. <laughs> All right, he's finished. Now, Hetty, what answer do you want to give us which you think will match his? Danny? Boy. Danny Boy, she says, will match him for $1,000. All right, Richard, what do you say to that? She says Danny Boy will match him. There's so many. Danny Thomas, Danny oh, there. Kay, and Danny Boy. Danny Boy! So right after we do a little business, we congratulate you. All right, come right back. Now, we're going to play another game. If you're ready, Heidi, let's introduce uh, our new player here, Anna DiGiulio. How are you, Anna? Where are you from? I live in um, Castro Valley, California. Castle Valley, California. <laughs> Castro Valley. Oh, Castro Valley. Oh, yes, sir. I'm sorry, I'm not too familiar with it. Is that it's a suburb? In Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> it's in Cuba. <laughs> it's kind of small. It's near Oakland, California. Oh, all right. We welcome you. What else you want to tell us about yourself, Anna? Well, I'm a stewardess for uh, an international airlines, and I'm based in Oakland. In Oakland? Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. All right. You ready to play? That's enough, huh? Yeah. Well, no. Do you tell us more? Oh no. What else no. you want to know about it? Just ask her any questions that'll, you want to ask. That'll do. Her. What's that? That'll do. That'll do. Uh, Richard, you'd like to know something about her? Do you play around? <laughs> Enough questioning. We shall carry on now with revealing the first round questions. Anna, what do you say here, A or B? I'd like A. You want A? Yes, a for Anna. Okay, everybody please. Murray the mechanic said, women are just like cars. Whenever my wife starts giving me trouble, I drive her down to the station and blank her up. <laughs> women are just like cars.
just like cars. Whenever my wife starts giving me trouble, I drive her down to the station and blank her up. I got it, honey. A couple of very, really good choices here. This is, there is no reason to have any trouble with this question at all. Oh, well, wait a minute. I just think... No reason whatsoever. Well, darling, I'm not having any trouble. He is. Have you seen Pitiful Pearl down there? What? Are you having he trouble? He's wearing black... What, what is that number she's doing on America? Does she want everyone to feel no, sorry? No, she's wearing a very dignified, neat thing. Very it's dignified. basic blue with pearls. Basic blue with pearls? You wear your pearls often, don't you? I certainly do. See? I Nothing wrong with wearing I wore my T-shirt, but I didn't have any to put in it. <laughs> That's the first time you've spoken the truth today. <laughs> and are you ready? Uh, if you Murray the mechanic it. said, women are just like cars. Whenever my wife starts giving me trouble, I drive her down to the station and blank her up. Crank her up. Really? You're going to tell me it's well, bad. Well, I don't know whether it's... When was the last time you saw someone cranking up a car down at the station there? Oh, they She's have, a lot you know, older than she looks. Oh, you have... mean lift her up? Yeah. On the lift? Right. The thing that they do the grease job right. with? Right. Oh, a I see. A loop job, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is that part of your answer? <laughs> Or oh, just a crank her up, or lift her up, or elevate her, yeah. anything like that. Yeah. Yes. Or yeah, or jack her up. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Nipsey, what do you say? A woman's age is like a speedometer on a second-hand car. We know they've all been turned back. We just don't know how far. That's right. Say. I say, I say, uh, 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 f uh, f fill her up. Fill her up, <laughs> yeah. That'll help there. As long as the octane is high enough. I'm, I'm sorry, dear. Fill, fill her up. Fill her up. No, I wouldn't have said crank her up. I wouldn't I have said fill her up either. What would what you would have you? said? Well, I'll well, tell you in a minute if it comes up here. I said tune her up. Tune her up, I think. Is that what you said, too? Tune her up, yeah. What did you say, dun, Richard? Dong, dong, dong. <laughs> Some enchanted evening. <laughs> tune her up. <laughs> That's an old punchline yeah. joke. <laughs> and the three upstairs said fill her up. So far, the two downstairs have said tune her up. Let's see if we have an evenly divided house here. I didn't know how to spell this. I was going to say rever up. Rever up. Rever up. Rev. R-E-V. Run, run, run. Yes, I know what you mean. I didn't know how to spell this. I love it when you get mad. The filler up. So we had four fills and two tunes and no match there. Now let's see if Hetty scores with hers. The Undertaker said to his assistant. You've got to be more careful when you close the coffins. <laughs> when we lowered Mr. Harris into the ground, I noticed his blank was hanging out. <laughs> Could I have another reading for the East Coast? The undertaker said to his assistant, you've got to be more careful when you close the coffins. When we lowered Mr. Harris into the ground, Yes. I noticed his blank was hanging out. <laughs> oh, okay. No, just uh, remember your shoulder di discipline now. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> the first time I've ever struck a lady in my life. Here comes the second time. <laughs> I wouldn't hit you. <laughs> All right. Hetty. The undertaker said to his assistant, you've got to be more careful when you close the coffins. When we lowered Mr. Harris into the ground, I noticed his blank was hanging out. His arm? His arm. Good answer. Arm, finger, something like that. Let's see, what did you say? I got a letter from the undertaker today. Yeah? What did it say? It said, unless I pay the last installment on my mother-in-law's funeral, up she comes. Mm. <laughs> his tie. His tie was hanging out. That's possible, Brett. I said that his uh, tail was hanging out as he... Coat tail. Yeah. Coat tail was hanging out. Charles, you're well. I, I said a tie. Two ties and a coat tail. Actually, it was a bow tie to show you how bad that assistant was. Yes, uh... <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> no, it's all relative, I think. Hand? Hand. There's a match for you, Hetty. There's one for her. 
Okay. My mother-in-law said to me, if I ever ill-treated my wife, the day I buried her, she'd dig her way out of the grave, come back and haunt me. Yes. Well, we buried her today, and I fixed her. How'd What'd you do? you do? I put her face down. To hell with her. Let her dig. <laughs> She's still digging. Tired. 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 <laughs> now, Joyce, you finally thought of something. I finally thought of something. What? It's dumb. It's the same thing Brett said up there. It's coattail. Coattail. Okay, so that's that one for that Eddie, <laughs> none for Anna. Round two coming up, but first, this message is coming your way. Today's Constellation Prizes are West Fox Big Ben Futura, traditional Big Ben quality, colorful, easy to read dials, adjustable alarm for West Fox, a Pally Industries company. And from Marco Barbecues for hot, wonderful eating when camping and picnicking, you'll take along your own portable town and country from Arkley Industries, Little Rock, Arkansas. And Sarah Company quality jewelry, textured golden tone links and rectangular shape for a modern tailored ensemble by Sarah Company, the jewelry you'll buy in your home. That's game 75, starring Gene Rayburn, continues in a minute. Okay, here we go with round two. Anna, are you ready? You make your selection here. B. B it is. Here we go. Can we hurry this up? I've got to go to dinner. <laughs> All right, hurry up. Clarence the carpenter went to sleep and dreamed he was a magician. Aha. Uh -huh. When he woke up, he was shocked. He discovered he had sawed his blank in half. <laughs> This is Clarence the Carpenter. He dreamed he was a magician. When he woke up, he was shocked. He discovered he had sawed his blank in half. You know, that's really a... It's catchy, that melody, but it's most unrememberable. I mean, if, that's that's true, not, isn't it? I mean, cut it just for one second. All right, sing it. Dum, dum, dum. See? It's hard to remember, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Okay, turn it on. Great for dancing, though. Thank you. It's Where have I heard that before? I've heard it someplace before. Brett, we're doing all the whole, his whole old vaudeville act while we're waiting for you there. Well, I all right, had to here finish we go a letter. Anna DiGiulio. Clarence the carpenter went to sleep and dreamed he was a magician. When he woke up, he was shocked. He discovered he had sawed his blank in half. His body. His what? His body. His body. <laughs> I ain't got nobody. I figured I'd better do it before somebody else did. <laughs> what do you say, Nips? His better half, his wife. His wife. <laughs> Saw a lady in half. Yeah. Don't magicians do that? That's right. They very seldom That's do it to themselves. That's right. That's a good answer. They usually saw a lady in half. What do you say, Brett? Well, I Speaking said... Speaking of ladies. I, yes. Yes. Uh, I said loved one and or wife, because it's 1975. See? Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Charles. Charles, get your knee off I my knee. Wife. <laughs> wife. So far, they're offering three wives, wow, Anna. Three what do you wives. say? I would have thought of body, but you can't reach the saw around your waist very well, so I said leg. Leg. Part of your body. No, that can't be because he's got a whole body in half there. Show us what you were doing there. No, that's, that's all right. <laughs> well, he says wife. Now, you got to match Joyce to stay in the game. Joyce, she says body will match you. What do you say? Well, I say he wanted to see his better half, so he saw his body in half. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it's more than a tap. Now, Eddie, all you need is one match to win the game. Ready? <laughs> Smokey the Bear has been paying blackmail ever since a camper took a Polaroid picture of Smokey with a blank. <laughs> Aren't you sorry you're not playing this one? <laughs> Am I playing this one? Yes, you are. Everybody except Lee. Um, Smokey the Bear. Right. <laughs> All right. A picture with what, dear? One more time. Smokey uh, the yeah. Bear has been paying blackmail ever since a camper took a Polaroid picture of Smokey with a blank. <sighs> oh, there's uh, oh, I'm ready. It's I'm such ready. an easy oh, one. Oh, pardon me. Isn't this an easy one? Well, All right. All set. Here we go. Hetty, all you need is one to win. Think carefully now. Smokey the Bear has been paying blackmail ever since a camper took a Polaroid picture of Smokey with a... Cigarette? Cigarette is good. <laughs> Cigarette's a perfectly good answer. Because it's, it's good enough for her. It's good enough. That wins the game. What are the rest of you got?
Okay, you stand by for a moment here or now while we say goodbye to Anna DiGiulio. We've got a gift for you together with our thanks. Thank you so much, everybody. It was a pleasure meeting you, Anna. Anna DiGiulio. <laughs> goodbye, my dear. And while we're spinning her off, we'll spin this commercial message for you. Here it is. Here we are, ready to say goodbye, but before we do, we're going to have a little uh, word of wisdom. Do you have some words of wisdom that you'd like to pass along to everybody before we leave I'd here? like to speak for myself today, if you don't mind. Oh, all right. Anything you say. I am a bachelor, and I will not marry till the right girl comes along. But while I'm waiting, I don't mind dating girls that I know are wrong. Yeah. Now, is there anyone who'd like to say a few words for the opposition? <laughs> there is no opposition. Listen, you were all splendid today. Right, and is there you. anybody have any movies or shows or anything to plug? Have you been working but doing I anything? I was on the Bob Crane show just a short time ago, but you all missed it. Yeah. Because it's already happened. <laughs> well, mine hasn't happened yet. I opened in Las Vegas at the Desert Inn, July 1st. Okay. And Did you, you sir? Newberries? I'll be at Newberry's Thursday. <laughs> Thursday. Now, where can we find you? With the Sunshine Boys. Okay, yeah, that's right. Lee Meredith is in the Sunshine Boys. Now, this is Gene Rayburn, Match Game 75. Join us next time. Goodbye. <laughs>
It, it's a talk show, right? Yes, yeah, a talk variety talk show. It's a lot of fun. Now, are you a regular? I'm a regular. Called me. Yeah. <laughs> He never asked me to be on it. I'll have to talk to him. No, I don't want to be on it. I, I do. It's too late now. He had his chance. So. I have no pride. <laughs> All right, Judy Ross. Steve said I'm taking a correspondence course in lion taming. I don't have a lion at home, so I practice by using a whip and chair on my blank. On my cat. On my cat. Oh. Gee, that hadn't crossed my mind. Uh, Brett, what did you say? <laughs> You know, I say she's too clever and too cultured for this this little number yeah, that's we're really doing. Quite up a good here. answer, isn't it? Yes, I said wife. That's just what I was saying. Remember the things past. Yes. <laughs> Charles, I said the correct answer. Oh, I can't stand him since he's come back. <laughs> Richard, are you correct? Naturally. <laughs> <laughs> that's four for Judy. Are you correct? Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Oh, okay. Now, Bev, you got a little uh, job ahead of you here. You got to match five to stay in the game, six to win. <clears throat> the missionary said to the cannibal, Ow. He said, <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> he didn't say that. He said, If you promise to let me go, I'll let you have my blank for dinner. <laughs> if you promise to let me go, I'll, I'll let, let you have you my have blank my for dinner. Blank for dinner. Right. If you promise to let I me go, I'll, I'll let you have, have my blank, blank for dinner. Hi, honey. <laughs> devilish devil. Uh. Everybody finished down here? Oh, yes, no. she's got a good idea there. Okay, put it right in the saw. You did that. All right, Charles? Coming, Gene. I'll be there. Here we go. Anything you say. All right, Chuck. Here we go. <laughs> now, uh, Bev Owens, the missionary said to the camel, camel little, 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 Six wives, Bev, wins a game. Five ties. Four blows it. What do you say? Everybody plays. John, you are up first. <laughs> you got it. My uh, wife! Uh, right. did, uh, did I hear you say wife? <laughs> do the name Ruby Vigonia <laughs> You was married to Ruby. <laughs> yeah, I knew you was going to get out, but I didn't know you was married. What do you say there? I say I'm gonna sing it till I know it. Right. There it is. <laughs> going great guns, Bev. Charles. I really was gonna put wife, but I thought, why put down the institution of marriage? No. Why? Well, I said mother-in-law. Mother-in-law. <laughs> now you gotta match the bottom tier to stay in the game. Trish, you're up. I really thought wife was a dumb answer, and that's all I could think of. Oh. <laughs> Two more to tie. Richard, you offer this lady a wife? It is rather a chauvinistic question. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. No it question about it. marriage and all the vegetarians right. in the world. El wife. El, El wife. Yeah. You match that lady, you get a tie. What Just do you what say? That's what I like, a little pressure again. <laughs> yeah. But this time, I'm on a roll, kids. Wife! Wife. Five to five. Okay, that means we've got to go to a tiebreaker, and we will indeed go to a tiebreaker right after we go to this. <laughs> now, in order to go to a tiebreaker, we have to erase the things. You see how that works? And here's a tiebreaker. One for each. The one who's done the most will be the winner. What do you say, Judy? I think I'll go with B this time. B it is. Right. When Matilda the Hun, <laughs> the world's most horrible woman, went boating, she fell overboard. So the captain tossed her a blank. <laughs> Do you understand the input? Oh, importance? I got it! When Matilda the Hun, the world's most horrible woman, went boating, she fell overboard, so the captain tossed her a blank. Do you get the picture? This horrible lady fell overboard, and the captain tossed her a blank. I got it. 
with sweetheart. You got it. Talk to me. I'm Brian. Ready? Ding, 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 ding. Ready, Charles? Oh. All right, Judy Ross. When Matilda the Hun, the world's most horrible woman, fell overboard, uh, wh while she was boating, uh, the captain tossed her a blank. Well, if she was really horrible, I guess he would toss her an anchor. I guess so. The audience thinks she's a winner. Here I go again. I said a lifesaver. You didn't understand the question, did you? All right, when I told Marilyn you. Marilyn Monroe falls overboard, <laughs> you toss her a lifesaver. Yeah, but when the horrible woman falls overboard, you toss her an anchor, like the lady said. I'm what are you passionate to women? <laughs> I want you to know. Yes. I'm. I'm in. I'm getting a lot of class on this show because I'm beginning to match Judy. Anchor. All right. There's an anchor. There's one for her. Charles, are you ready? Charles is drawing a picture. Here, dear, hold this a while while oh, you're yes. in the water. Yes. Yeah. I said anchor. <laughs> She's looking for an anchor. What do you offer? Uh, anchors, anchors away, my dear. He's what? A good yeah. And threw her an oh. anchor, and your anchor kind of I forgot yeah. the other end. That's all right. Yeah. All right, so that's three anchors for Judy Ross, and now let's see what Richard gives this lady. Well, she's now an anchor woman at ABC. That's right. Okay. There's four. Marcia, do you make it five? I'm stunned. Why? That's three correct answers in a row three for you? Three in a row. Oh, not really. Yes. Oh, dear me. Yes. Well, Bev, you ready for this? We were in the same spot last time. You needed five to tie, six to win your title. The Kissing Bandit. Oh. Sent to Gloria. <laughs> it oh, it sounds like a role I could do. <laughs> No, the kissing see. bandit said to Gloria, you're going to play Gloria. No, I'm no. playing the kissing bandit. Oh, all right. He said to Gloria, forget the kiss, lady. You've got blank. What? The kissing bandit said to Gloria, forget the kiss, lady. You've got blank. Oh, the kissing oh, bandit said, oh, I get it. Forget the kiss, lady. You've got blank. Okay. Upper tier is ready. Flower tier is ready. And we come over here to Bev Owens. The kissing bandit said to Gloria, forget the kiss lady, you've got... Bad breath. Yeah! Bad breath. They like hers too. What do you say, Johnny boy? <laughs> Bad breath and dance. Uh -huh. Oh, oh. All right. Now, Brett. Because I object to these kinds of questions and <laughs> answers, I put the, uh, the halitosi. <laughs> halitosi. That's two for Bev. Charles is the kissing bandit. <laughs> Am I condensing? Yes. <laughs> bad breath. You've got the part. Okay, cast him as a bad as a, Yeah, what do you say? Oh. Oh. Yeah. oh, have you ever smelled uh, a hue? Oh. Yes, no. <laughs> well, it's, it has bad breath. It does. Uh, one more to tie, two to win. Mm. Here we go, Richard. The lady was suffering from what we call in the business HBB. HBB, what is that? Altosis and bad breath. <laughs> bad breath. Tie score. Marcia, you say bad breath. She wins the game. Do you know there's a spider on his finger? Do da do da. A few bars. No, no. No. <laughs> Be still my heart. Bad breath and her hell attack. Well, Judy, that was close. You tied it, and uh, and you lost by one there. But we've, we've got a gift for you, together with our thanks Thank for being you. with us on Match Game 7. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Now, here we go again. Oh, no, we're not going to go again. We're going to stop for a commercial message right here now, and you stand by for a moment. Roll a thing there, whatever you got to roll. Today's Constellation.
consolation prizes. Our Presto's electric fry pan provides the convenience of electric cooking with the ease of submersible cleanup. Wash and save your dishwasher from Presto. And Hager Double Knit Slacks, contemporary styling with a comfortable fit. They're machine washable in a wide range of beautiful colors and patterns. Hager Double Knit Slacks. And treat your kids to a good hot nourishing dish for the supply of Franco American spaghetti or spaghettios. They only cost about 15 cents per serving. The Match Game 75 gang will be back with Gene Raver in one minute. Here we are. We're just having a discussion of 20th century English novelists. And now we're going to have a go at the big money here with Bev Owens one more time. Bev, we polled a recent studio audience and we got their best response to this. Hit the blank. The answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. You match that, we get $250. And the third, we get $100. Whom do you call on? Richard. Richard. Hit the road. Hit the road is one. Trish. Trish, what do you say? Hit the... He took mine. He took yours? <laughs> uh, yeah, you're up anyway. Hit the, the, the bullseye. Hit the bullseye. <laughs> I told you. All was... right, one more. Brett. Really less what do you how say, about, Brett? How about hit the deck? Hit the deck. Hit the deck. Okay. So you get hit the road, hit the bullseye, and uh, hit the road, hit the bullseye, and hit the deck. You got six. <laughs> no, well, you want one of those six? I'll take hit the road. Hit the road? Okay. That's what the Richard gave you. Let's find out if it's up there. And if so, where? Now, let's uh, reveal the $100 response. Hit the sack. Oh, I wish I were there right now. <laughs> Looking for Hit the Road, here's a $250 response. Hit the Road! Congratulations, Bev Owen. So that means your total now is $6,300. You're going to play for an additional $2,500. Before we do that, let's find out what's under the $500 response. Slide it, Earl. Hit the ball. Hit the you ball. know I had ball and deck, and I chose deck. Really? Isn't that funny? Heidi, did Why you think did you of that? Why did you give me one of those? Now, now you say it after I show it to you. Yeah. Anyway, here we go. For $2,500, remember, you have to match one of them head-to-head -head exactly. Whom do you call on? Richard. Okay, Richard, if you're ready, we'll uh, have Bev face me here and give you the $2,500 question, which is as follows. Palm blank. That's P-A-L-M blank. Palm blank. Okay, he's finished. Now, what do you say to that, Bev, to match him for $2,500? Palm blank. Palm tree. Palm tree. Okay, she says palm tree will match him for $2,500. And now we call on Richard and ask him to tell us. Show and tell, if you please, sir. Why don't you stay with Brett? Although, we could stay... Uh -huh. The kissing bandit, I would pass by. <laughs> oh, isn't this war a scream? <laughs> now, are you ready? Uh -huh. You know how much we got? You got $8,800, and here comes your new challenger, K. Popejoy. Okay. Hello, K. Hi. How's K. Popejoy today? <laughs> we'll give her a chance to calm down over there while you tell us a little bit about yourself, if you would, please. Well, I'm single and sort of single. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we know what she means. <laughs> and I uh, do custom do. fashions and designing in my home. Custom uh, fashions and designing? You mean clothing? Yes. Oh, that's a good gift. And I water ski, I paint, mm -hmm. and most creative arts. Okay, that's enough. I think she's a very accomplished lady. All right, Kay, good luck to you. Let's Thanks. begin. Push this button and ask Kay Popejoy to make a selection. A, please. A it is. Here we go. Are you ready? Uh-huh. We ready? Yes, yes. Now, I guess everybody in this room will remember how great Richard Dawson was in Hogan's Heroes when oh, he played... I yeah. Yeah. Do you remember? He did that for six years, and he did it very well. 
Were you a corporal or a sergeant? Or did you have no rank? I was a corporal. Corporal Newkirk, yes. Well, anyway, he said, the Germans really hated us. As punishment, they brought a television set into the prison camp and made us watch blank. <laughs> I'll let, uh, the, I'll let no. Newkirk read it there while okay. you, I'm giving to him. I never saw that show. Uh, the Germans really hated us. As punishment, they brought a television set into the prison camp and made us watch blank. Do da. Do da. I think I do a better Newkirk than he does. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> All right. I don't understand that. You don't understand that? Well, I guess so. Well, that's an easy one. Richard, you were wonderful. My mother used to let me watch it when I came home from school. <laughs> You were probably the only 48-year-old in. <laughs> That's great, Charles. <laughs> okay, here we go. Now, Kay Popejoy. You remember Richard Dawson, Hogan's Heroes, Newkirk. And Newkirk said, the Germans really hated us. As punishment, they brought a television set into the prison camp and made us watch blank. McHale's Navy. McHale's Navy. <laughs> A loser, but funny. Well, she said McHale's Navy, a funny answer. Well, I know better. I said the empty screen. <laughs> they turn on you quick, don't they? <laughs> what do you say? Well, I but they made them, we made them watch Charles. <laughs> Charles? <laughs> this one? Charles Nelson Reilly. Oh, I see. <laughs> what do you say? Just the opposite. <laughs> uh, they brought a television set into the prison camp and made us watch McHale's Navy, according to her. Well, actually, they were going to make them watch the reruns of the show, but then they decided to make it commercials. Watch commercials. Oh, yeah. that. That that yeah, they don't like that either. Hey, it's hard to please this bunch. I mean, the McHale's Navy is the best one they've had so far. What do you say? Well, that would have been a pleasure to watch McHale's Navy. Yes, it was a good show. They made us watch Hogan's. Hogan's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> ugly. <laughs> That's the answer. What do you say there? Oh, gosh, Jane. Hmm. It was a toss-up between my mother, the car, <laughs> and uh, the match game. Oh! I know. My mother, the car. I that was uh, that was a new low in television, as I remember. <laughs> Where are we here? Uh, that was your first round question, and yours is to come up a little bit later. But right now, we've got to do a little business, and this is it. Now, we've got a part company, but uh, we'll look forward to seeing both of you pretty ladies next time, okay? Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I want to thank you all for being so splendid. And uh, you are going to finish out McHale's the week. McHale's Navy. <laughs> I say you are going to finish out the week. I don't care what anybody says. We have no split weeks on this show here. You know yes. that Marsha's going to be on the... Uh, Which well, she's always on the Bob Newhart show. Yes. The next season, she's going to be married on the show. Really? Yes. They haven't told me. Well, Gene, it may not be you. Don't get your don't give up your day job yet. Oh, all right. Goodbye, we'll talk. Okay. Goodbye. Join us next time at Match Game 75. Gene Mayburn here. Goodbye. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 75, a Mark Woods from Bill Tottenham production. Get ready to match the star. Bert Condi. Brett Summer, Charles Nelson Riley, Joanne Flew, Richard Dawson, and Joyce Bulafon as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene Rubber. Yes. All right. We are assembled here on this day 
for the purpose of... <laughs> Sounded like a eulogy. Yeah. It's fun and games time. You're all ready to play? Sorry, Could I make one of my famous public announcements? Oh. You have an announcement. <laughs> what do you have to say? Now, you know how I feel about Joyce. Uh-oh. And yeah. I really hate to admit it, but she has made... I tell you, it pains me. I can hardly get the words out of my mouth. She's made a wonderful record. She oh, has. that's right. You have. Doing I what? Did. You're singing and all that. Yeah. What kind of songs did you sing? She doesn't it's sing. A country, but... <laughs> it's, it's a country western song. You went down to Nashville yeah. to do that? No, I did it right here with a great guy, Billy Adams, yeah. Yeah. did the uh, music, and you I did the lyrics. Him he's wonderful. He's terrific. Oh, You'll okay. hear a lot from him. <laughs> he's really good. Cool. And you too, my dear. <laughs> What's your record called? It's called Why Is My Daddy Gone is one side. The other side is the theme song from Benji, I Feel Love. Oh. And it's uh, one side's it's kind of very it. sentimental and the other's very upbeat. Okay, yeah, we're going to look forward like to hearing Oh, I'd like to. We have to get a rabies shot to buy the album. Let's go. <laughs> here we go. Let's, and let's say hello to shot. Diane, our Miho, and Oliver Chamberlain, our two players here. You all ready? This little lady has won $6,200. And Oliver has had his first round question. And we're going to give you a question in a moment or so and see how you do with yours. But right now, we've got to do a little business, and this is it. Ready? Here we go. All right, Diane. Go. Everybody plays. This is her first round question. Yes. When all the lions at the circus died, Arturo the lion tamer put the fat lady in the act. <laughs> now... Arturo cracks his whip, and the fat lady blinks. <laughs> when all the lions at the circus died, Arturo the lion tamer put the fat lady in the act. Now Arturo cracks his whip, and the fat lady blinks. See, she's... Oh, I understand One of the it. lions, she's on all fours there, in the cage with Arturo. They lock the door. Okay. Ready up there. Ready down here. Ready Just over put there. it in the slot there. Okay, now we're ready to call on Diane Armijo. <laughs> when all the lines at the circus died, Arturo put the fat lady in the act. And uh, now Arturo cracks his whip and the fat lady blinks. Roars. Roars. <laughs> rah, rah, rah. She says it's the MGM lion. Yes. The fat lady does do that. She does. She goes, Roar! Yeah. but she also jumps through the hoop, which I jumps pay a dollar a quarter any time to see. Yeah. <laughs> Brett, what do you say? I didn't have anything to read last night, and I was reading my contract, and it specifically states that the contestants must not be cleverer and wittier than the panel. I said, uh, it jumps on the stool. <laughs> <laughs> jumps, all right. Charles. But you know lions jump. Yes, I know. Right. Stool. That's, That's the way they explain do it. it. Yeah, <laughs> just shoot. Forget Give it. Puppies, a... poodles, horses, seals go through a hoop. Oh. I said, I think it's a match. Snarls or growls? Yes, sure. Okay. Yeah, there, there, there you are. Okay, it's one for Diane. <laughs> now Arturo cracks his whip and the fat lady roars, according to her. No. How about according to you? No? She jumps through the hoop. Shh. Jumps through the hoop. Okay, Richard. And for all those who love that answer, <laughs> son of jump. <laughs> what do you say, Joyce? Well, I happen to know before those lions died. Oh, were they lions? Yes, yeah. they were Before lions. they died, now, that that lion tamer them. was very scared to death to go in there, and he yes. wouldn't go in. So the, the owner death. of the circus said, we'll pull all of its teeth out. And he said, I don't want to be gummed to death either. Uh, he said that. You have a feeling she's doing a spin-off for a pilot here. <laughs> and it's going to fail. I said, growls. Should... It's the same growls thing. Growls and rolls are the next two for you. Okay. <laughs> Round two coming up. And Oliver. B, please. B, it is. Here we go. <laughs> dumb Dora was so dumb. Oh, no, 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 no. She jumped through a hoop. Yes, sir. <laughs> She growled like a lion. That's no, Dumb Dora was so dumb it took her an hour to cook blank. Dumb Dora gotcha. was so dumb it took her an hour to cook blank. Got it. Wait a minute. Finish. Oh, you finished this? So Why it's so hot it here on the plantation? Yes, it is. <laughs> I'll show you how that card trick in Hogan's here. Yes. 
<laughs> All right, everybody ready up there. We're waiting for you. That's dumb. <laughs> dumb door was so dumb it took her an hour to cook. Maybe go and have the baby. What is, well, I wish she'd have that baby and come back sensible. Okay. Now, Oliver. Dumb Dora was so dumb, it took her an hour to cook... A two-minute egg. A two-minute egg. That ain't bad. <laughs> took her an hour to cook a two-minute egg. Bert? Well, uh, I would have to say that that's probably one of the brightest answers I've ever seen. Actually, I said a one-minute egg, which I think qualifies. It's that's only a minute. minute. Brett? Show them a smart answer. I don't eat answer. eggs that give you high cholesterol. I said instant rice. Instant rice. <laughs> See, that's, that's the joke. Dumb Dora was so dumb it took her an hour to cook minute rice. Instant rice. Get it? Well, you kind of. That's a good answer. Two minute eggs. Two minute eggs. Don't get hostile at Oliver. I'm not getting hostile at Oliver. Oh, You're getting hostile at Oliver. Then. No, what do you I'm say there? Surprised. It's instant coffee, not instant rice. Who said? If you bought one, a two minute, a one minute, two minute, how about a three minute egg? Yes. Oh, that's a one, that's a three. All right. All right, we're cooking eggs here. What do you got? <laughs> we're cooking eggs. Dumb Joanne was so dumb, she yeah, couldn't did. understand the joke. <laughs> how so about the question? And it's Brett's fault because she forced me to write something in aim down. <laughs> she did it herself. Herself. Took her an hour. Well, herself. Took her an hour to cook herself. And this lady's gonna be a mother very yes, soon, right. you know. I don't cook. You're gonna, you're gonna be entrusted to raise a child up for adoption. And <laughs> teach it and educate it and all that. Dear me, I oh, fear. Yeah. Yes, Richard. Oliver, you're in the liquor business, aren't you? Right. You'll drink to this, surely. Three minute right. egg? Yes. yes. Three minute egg, that's two for you. Okay, my dear. One minute, two minute, three minute, four minute egg. All right. Why not? So, now, right now, it's four to two, and we've got a question for you in a minute or so, but right now, we've got to do this for you. Right, here we go. Now, in order to stay in the game, you must match two celebrities. However, if you match three, you will win the game. Really? Uh, Joyce does not play. Who else? Charles, you did not play, correct? Harry the writer went berserk and tried to roll his blank through the typewriter. Harry the writer went berserk. Tried to roll his blank through the typewriter. Harry the writer. Harry the writer went berserk. Tried to roll his blank through the typewriter. Okay. All right. It's a short show, Mr. Tattletales. Sorry about that. I'm trying. Eleven o'clock Eastern, ten o'clock Central and Western. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. I'm going to come up with it. No, you. <laughs> This is a All euphemism, right. of course. You understand. Okay. That. Diane. Harry the writer went berserk, <laughs> tried to roll his blank through the typewriter. His pipe. His pipe. <laughs> now you leave her alone. She's cute. Stop that. She said he tried to roll his pipe through the typewriter. Yes, he could do that. If he smoked a pipe, he would do that. Well, writers smoke, you know. They... Sometimes they do that. I said he tried to roll his pencil through the typewriter. Pencil. <laughs> oh! All right, Brett. Some of them are on my side. Yes, That's darling. a hard question. It is hard. What do you go say? either way. Oh, Went berserk, either. tried to roll his blank through the typewriter. What's wrong with Bert? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Roll his bird through the typewriter? I said he tried to roll his wife his through wife. the typewriter. Got a match of remaining two, and oh, you are one. Oh, We're up to you. She says, you pipe. What do you say? Oh, I said something more obvious, like his hand. His hand. So that means Oliver wins again. Okay, sir. Congratulations. Are you stand by for a moment? You're going. You're a splendid lady. Did you have a good time? Oh, yes. I had and a great time. And you've got $6,200. And it was a pleasure meeting you. Diane Arneo. Goodbye, my dear. Okay. Now, you know how this part of it goes. You've seen the show enough, haven't you? Right. Okay. We polled a recent studio audience, Oliver. 
and we got their best response to this. Trench blank. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. If you match it, match it you get $250. <laughs> That's a buy one, you get $100. I don't believe that. I don't believe this is happening to me on this stage. But what the heck? We've all got it. Uh, you want to call on one of the... Well, no, maybe you better not. Maybe you just better think of three yourself. All right. Go ahead. Okay, uh, Bert. Uh, how about trench mouse? That's probably what I have. All right, there's one. Charles? What Peter Falk wears. I love him. That's the trench coat. Yeah. Trench coat. I think I go with all the men. Richard? And Richard. Present. Dead. Son of trench coat. I don't know. <laughs> to be in a third position is tough. Yeah, I don't know. It really is, Mel. Trench. Uh, foot. Trench foot. Foot. <laughs> no. no. Trench hand. <laughs> That's when you have trench mouth and you go. Oh, <laughs> 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 I tell you, I really, I, now wait a minute, I really cannot think of a third answer. Can you? Trench warfare. Trench warfare. I'm sticking with trench hand, yeah. like it or not. All right, now, so you got trench mouth, trench coat, and trench hand. Trench coat, man. You said trench coat? All right, yeah. What? By the way, I would like to mention, um, August the 9th, I have a telethon for Trench Hand. <laughs> Please give all you can. <laughs> all right. Uh, we are... <laughs> oh, it's silly time, isn't it, Oliver? <laughs> and we're laughing at your money. <laughs> okay. Trench coat is the answer uh, that he has chosen. It's the one we hope is up to the $500 response. Well, let's begin by revealing the $100 response. Trench digger. Oh, digger. That's what you were trying to say in the audience, oh, right? Oh, I finally understood you. There, there. All right. Trench coat, are you under the $250 response? Trench mouth. Put your mouth hand. where your coat is. Here it comes. 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 Here and you got to match one celebrity head to head exactly. Which one will it be? Richard. Oh, my. oh Richard. <laughs> the one who gave you that Just wonderful a second. answer. Trench foot? <laughs> to give to prevent trench hand. <laughs> Please, send everything you can. <laughs> We've got to stamp this out. All right, I'll say. Okay, you face me. All right. There's a $5,000 yes, answer. Yes, quiet. Wait, yes. let's get going. Hand blank. I'm only kidding. That ain't it. Come on, I've got to win some money here. What is it? It's say Dolly blank. That's D O L L Y blank. What? Dolly blank. D O L L Y blank. All right. There it is. All right, now he's finished. Oliver, we uh, ask you to give us an answer which you Shh. think will match his for $5,000. Dolly? Dolly Madison. Dolly Madison. Do you expect an Englisher to know about our early American history here and say Dolly Madison will match him? Are you out of your mind, Oliver? I hope not. He is. <laughs> All right, Richard, time to show and tell. Now, a lot of people do not know Dolly French Hand. Uh, very <laughs> close. <laughs> I'm sorry, I said Madison. Yeah! Yeah!
Now, we're ready to start another game. Would you all please welcome Beverly Hill. How are you? Fine, thank you. Now, Beverly, would you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. And... No. Yeah, I really am. I know what you, your real name was Orange County for a while. Yeah. No, it was that. Uh, Mother had a weird sense of here. It was San Francisco. <laughs> Pretty. San Francisco, was that your mother's name? No, she was just playing around in Daddy's name. Well, my girlfriend told me to say that. I don't know why. Oh. But anyway. I'm... Is Beverly Hill your real name? Yeah. That's my real life name. And you're from Memphis, Tennessee? Memphis, Tennessee. You're visiting here or do you live here? I'm on vacation. Uh, what do you do? Well, I'm involved in a lot of activities down south, like the oh, cotton that you are. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to stay the over, cotton honey? The cotton <laughs> and I work with the fire prevention program. And yeah, I bet you start some too. <laughs> <laughs> with the World Football League, the Memphis Southmen. Oh, you? Do, what do you do for them? Don't well, answer. I take care. Of them. <laughs> you, you take care of the quarterback? No. <laughs> I'm administrative assistant to John Bassett. Oh. Of the Memphis Southmen. Well, that's the an interesting. John you, Bassett. You have a very interesting <laughs> life, don't you? Yeah, it's really fun. All right, you ready to play this game? I think so. All right, I'll push this button and ask you to make a selection. I'll take A. Okay. A. Beverly wants A. She's, she's going to take A. She's got A. She's, she's got, got A. She's yeah. got A. She's got A. She's got A. But let's give her the question. All right. Send Text. as much as you right. can. <laughs> That's our new poster. <laughs> hey, send as much as you can. I'm sorry. All right, here we go. Listen carefully, one and all. Tex was amazed. When he visited his home on the range, he found the deer and the antelope playing blank. Now, I have to ask the first part of that question, dog. Well, the deer and the antelope Listen now, play. fella, Tex was amazed when he visited his home on the range. Yes. He found the deer and the antelope playing blank. Yes. Okay, Don, you all got it. Home, home on the range, where, where the deer and the antelope play. We sound like a couple of drunks, you know that? Aren't we? Oh, no. no I'm just... If you know Gene Rayburn doesn't drunk, I've never trusted a man who doesn't drink. Oh, she's got it, hasn't she? Yeah. See that? Yeah, that's trench hand. That is... That's trench hand. That's so you can recognize it. That is your basic trench hand. It's an ugly scene. We can stamp this out, folks. Cut! <laughs> Beverly Hill. Yes. Tex was amazed. When he visited his home on the range, he found the deer and the antelope playing... House. House? House? <laughs> House? We play down south. I'm going to have to visit Memphis, Tennessee. Come on down. He found the deer in the antelope playing house. I, I never, I never eight syllable knew. Word. I never knew that it was an eight syllable word. Yeah. Hey, I was. <laughs> no, I said that finding the deer in the antelope playing the pin the tail on the donkey. Pin the tail on the donkey. Well, it's an old game we play in the yeah. south sometimes. What do you say there, Brad? We play that game, you don't know. I say I'm crazy about Beverly Hill. Yeah. Uh, thank I you. I'm crazy Beverly about Hill. you too. Shh. Oh. She's got wonderful taste besides. I said they were playing bridge. I wish I thought of Howes. <laughs> no, I wish I did too. So does she. Charles, what did you think? I couldn't say Howes because I have so much dental work. <laughs> Poker. Poker. <laughs> What came into your little mind? <laughs> I'm from the South, and I never talk like that. She's no. Lovely. Yes, she is indeed. I said tag. 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 They're playing tag. All right, what Richard. What a boring answer. <laughs> <laughs> I hear the question of what animals were actually he involved. He home on the range. He found the deer and the antelope playing. They're playing doctor. <laughs> playing doctor. <laughs> It was in my day. <laughs> <laughs> but you're just send in. <laughs> All right, come on now, show us your answer. Well, I just, I, um, I was on the same ranch and I said they were playing doctor. <laughs> Really? Yeah. yeah. You, you, you copied from him, is that, that it? You no. copied from me. 
All right, so that's none for you, and your question will come along a little bit later. Right now, this for you. Go, Charles. We've got the trench hand receipts for the 1965 campaign. $4.08. That's it. Come back in March, get 75. Goodbye. Johnny. Let's get a good look at it and, and hear about it. Look at this. It says, Fanny Flagg wears falsies on his chest. <laughs> it doesn't say on his this chest. This is from Billings, Montana, Jim and Sarah Walton. Yeah. Dear Mr. Dawson, we thoroughly enjoy you on Match Game, as well as Brett, Charles, Gary, and all the rest, and of course, Gene. But we always feel sorry for you sitting next to darling Fanny Flagg, and you look so drab. Anyway, we've decided to make you a sweater that will outdo anything that Fanny will ever wear. We hope it fits you, and you'll wear it the next time that Ms. Flagg shows up. P.S. A note to Jean. Match game's very enjoyable because everything is so relaxed and everyone has a lot of fun. How good it would be if other game shows took your uninhibited attitude. P.S. Please excuse the pencil. They do not allow no, us anything <laughs> sharp. You didn't um, take a look at it, Brett. There. Fanny flag wears. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we thank the Waltons. They said nice things. Thank you, the Waltons, wherever you are. We. <laughs> Grandpa, <laughs> Grandma. Yeah, the Waltons. John all Boy. No, John we do Boy, appreciate it, and uh, it's nice to be appreciated. <laughs> Because we are, we have a tendency to get a little tense here. And uh, uh, hello, Nita Braley. Here's the champ. How are you today? I'm fine. Good. Getting better all the time. Good. I'm glad to hear that, Nita. Me too. You know, you told us yesterday that you have a grandchild, 18, two. two. One is 18 years old. Right, Mark. You don't look that old. You don't have that many look wrinkles. Close. No, you don't. You, you look like you're in grand shape. I'm well preserved. <laughs> I didn't say that. Listen, Nita, are you ready to have a go at over $5,000? I certainly am. All right, we'll find out if she wins it or how much right after this message. Now, we're ready to try it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, Nita, we polled a recent studio audience and we got their best response to this. Wall blank. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. If you match the next one, you get $250, and the bottom one, $100. Whom do you call on over here? Oh, Brett. Brett, what do you say? How about wallpaper? Wallpaper. Richard? Richard? Wall Street. Wall Street. Okay. And Fanny. And Fanny. Is W A L N U T. Oh, that's never stopped them before. That's right. I've never stopped them before. Yep. So, walnut is what she's got there, and wallpaper, and wall street. You want one of those, or have you got a better one in your head, Nita? I'll take one of those. Which one? Wall street. Wall street is what she's looking for. That's the answer that Richard gave you. Let's find out if it's up there, and if so, where. We'll begin down at the bottom, as we usually do, as we reveal the $100 response. 
Wallflower. The story of Fanny's life. I'm glad you didn't take it, too, because it's only worth $100. <laughs> Let's find out if your answer is under the $250 response. Wall Street is indeed. Congratulations. Well, now that's a little curious. What do you think is under the $500? Paper. Paper. Really? All right, they're right. Wallpaper it is. Whose answer was that? That was Brett's answer. Yeah. Okay, now, Nita, you got the $250. That means you've got a total of $350, and you're going to play for $2,500 now. To collect, you've got to match one of them head to head. Time to choose one. I'll choose Richard. Okay, Richard, you get ready to write. Nita faces me. And this is the $2,500 question. Hydrogen blank. Hydrogen blank. Hydrogen blank. All right, he's finished. Now, Nita, we call on you and ask you to tell us what you think will match Richard. Hydrogen. I think if it's monoxide or dioxide. Wait a minute now. Monoxide. Well, she says monoxide. Is there such a thing? I don't think there is such a word in the English language. Is there? She means peroxide, probably. Peroxide. Yeah, peroxide. Is that what That's you mean? That's what I mean. Peroxide? Are we going to allow that? Because she was trying to think of peroxide yeah. and said monoxide instead. All right. It's, uh, Hans, that's kind of an esoteric answer. Is that all you can think of? <laughs> that's all I can think of. Yeah. Except balloon. You don't use, uh, you don't use peroxide in your hair? No. Not, not anymore. Not. I did that myself. You did. All right. She says hydrogen peroxide will match you, Richard, for $2,500. What do you say? I wish all that struggling was going to help. I could just think of that big explosion. The hydrogen bomb. No, peroxide. Oh, peroxide. $2,850, an unlikely possibility. I, you know, I thought everybody was going to say hydrogen bomb and hydrogen peroxide. Both of them said it, and she collected the loot. Okay, now, Nita, you're going to meet another challenger right now. Let's welcome Judy Norton. I guess you two ladies know each other, don't you? Oh, sure. Now, Judy, we'd like to find out a little bit about you. Well, I'm married to an attorney, and I have a four-and-a-half-year-old son who happens to be Brett, with two T's, <laughs> and a crazy seven-and-a-half-year-old Vishla. Uh, oh. goes... It's a short-haired pointer. He's a dog. A short-haired <laughs> pointer. <laughs> I don't even know that breed. I guess I don't. He's Hungarian. A Hungarian dog. I see. Is your husband he's a Hungarian? Red... No. No, he's a redhead too. Your husband is a redhead no, and Hungarian. The dog. <laughs> That's interesting, isn't it? Say the secret word and the duck will come. No. Okay, Judy, we'll start this game in a minute or so. But right now we got to do a little business, and this is it. Okay, Judy, ready. Ready. Let's begin, shall we? Round one coming up. Judy, may, make your selection. A, please. A it is. Everybody plays. New game. I have a little riddle for you. Are you ready for a riddle? Yes. Yeah. Mm. What do you call an Indian who sits in his teepee wearing nothing but feathers? The answer, sitting blank. <laughs> what do you call an Indian who sits in his teepee wearing nothing but feathers? The answer, sitting blank. You like that question, Judy? Yep. <laughs> All right. What do you call an That's Indian? That's cute. Put it in there. It's <laughs> cute. Okay. Got one, Brett? No. But I'm no. thinking for you. See, I She's have to concentrate. She's stuck with the image. She can't get beyond it. What do you call what an Indian who sits in his teepee wearing nothing, nothing but feathers? feathers? Answer. The answer? Something sitting blank. Sitting, sitting blank. Sitting blank. Uh, yeah. Blank. blank. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm uh, sitting. Come on now, bro. Well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> now, Judy Norton. What do you call an Indian who sits in his teepee wearing nothing but feathers? The answer: sitting. Bird. Bird. 
That's very good. She said, sitting bird, isn't that a cute That's answer? Terrific. You got another rotten answer for this sweet looking lady? I just had sitting bear. Oh, sitting bear. Bear. Oh, that's good. Yes, of course. You're not bear with feathers, are you? Right. <laughs> not quite. What do you say? Well, Is he's a good answer? Not bad. Well, what happens when you don't have any hair on top of your head? You're bald. And all over your whole body. Sitting, sitting bald. bald. <laughs> <laughs> not with feathers. You're right, But the Rick. feathers weren't on his. Oh, they weren't? He's sitting there, the question sits in his teepee. Da, 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 da. Shh, quiet. Sitting in his teepee wearing nothing but feathers. I think this is a match. I did have bird, but I changed it because sitting duck is so popular. <laughs> no. no. Well, they can't match a specific with a general, so that's, that's the rule. Kate, you're up. Oh, well, I thought I had one sitting chicken. Chicken? Oh, chicken. <laughs> sure, that's yeah. a bird. It is, We're but it's, uh, you know, like there are a million different kinds better. of birds. <laughs> and Richard. I'm amazed they wouldn't accept a uh, duck or chicken, but maybe they will. This, I'm going to appeal to the judges. Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Oh, well, I, I oh. think that makes a definite. I obviously do not appeal to the judges. <laughs> birds. Listen, Miss Hams. You appeal to me, though. Thank you, dear. Uh, I would like to say that people with red hair think, think very well and think very logically because I put bird. <laughs> Okay. That's amazing. So that's one for you, and now let's see what we've got for Nita here. Marge really looks like a potato. How much How like much a potato, potato does potato she does look? look? I'll tell you, at the restaurant, she wandered into the kitchen, and the chef tried to blank her. I get it. Marge looks like a potato so much, the chef tried to blank her. <laughs> Uh, it's ridiculous thing I There's ever. so many wonderful choices. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> we haven't got all names. Oh, I'm sorry. I was making it. Yes. Uh, Good morrow, Kate, for that be your name, I hear. Nice. Oh, yes. Brett, you ready? Okay. Yes. Oh, I think Come on he's now. slowing down. Do not like tarry. You. Now, Nita. Marge really looks like a potato. At the restaurant, she wandered into the kitchen, and the chef tried to blank her. Baker? Baker? Okay. Oh. Uh, Avery? I love it, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I were the chef, he tried to peel her. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's very good. No, no, see, that's really a good answer. It is. Yeah, bake is not bad, but peel is probably a little better. You what know, do you Mark? say? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I say it doesn't match Mrs. Braley. That's what I say. <laughs> that's true. And I say bake is better. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Nita, that's one for you. Charles? I hope this is right, babe. Babe, yes. <laughs> All right, Kate. I put Peel. Peel. All right, you match. What's his name up there? And Richard. I hope this is right. <laughs> Peel. Peel. <laughs> no, no, no. Ah, well, you That's... cannot win them all. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say, Fanny? I know this is wrong. <laughs> I said <laughs> mash. <laughs> In a round one, it's uh, two to one in favor of our current champion, Nita Braley. We go to round two and ask Judy to make her selection. A, please. A it is. Uh, five play. Fanny does not. Oh, good heavens. John's. John's camping trip was a disaster. Smokey the Bear blanked his Winnebago. Smokey the Bear did what to his Winnebago? Smokey the Bear blanked his Winnebago. Do you know what a Winnebago I don't is? I know what a Winnebago is. It's a motorhome, yeah. you know, where you sleep in and oh, travel really? and camp. It's a camper. Why didn't they put that there, motorhome? Well, a Winnebago is oh, no, a trade a little... name. Probably the writers. The writers are... they get a Winnebago through the, the mail. Yeah, they the the name. They get one free, Smokey I suppose. The Smokey the Bear blanked his Winnebago. That's not true, Oh, I get it. You don't get it. No, you don't get it. No, no. Listen, while they're doing their thing, we ought to uh, tell everybody what uh, this lady does on television. Right. Yes. What do you do? <laughs> I'm not going to do it. The Rookies. Yes, The Rookies. Yeah. And you've done that for several seasons. We're now, on the fourth you? season yes. now. Thank you. Which is marvelous. Thank you. The time thing, isn't it? Yeah. What's that? We've t we were on Monday nights, yeah. and we're going to be on Tuesday nights at 9 o'clock now. I see. Yeah, you can't mention... No, we can't mention, uh, I'm sorry, the, the network, network, because network. It, it's not CBS. I'll give you a clue. It's as easy as ABC, but... No, you can't say that. <laughs> what network it is? No, you can't say that. Okay. Okay. What's the new time? Judy. 
John's camping trip was a disaster. Smokey the Bear blanked his Winnebago. They're gonna boo. Uh, mauled. Mauled his Winnebago. Uh, Put out. What does that mean? They're a bunch of dummies. Dummies! Avery? Obviously, Smokey the Bear burned his Winnebago. Burned his Winnebago. <laughs> All right, she said mauled his Winnebago. Brett? Why? I don't know. <laughs> Ask her. Why? A, a burn. I said burn. Burn seems to be the answer because he's connected to you know, campfires and all. I hate to match. Three burned up there. Now, Kate. Does this match? I said wrecked. Yes. Now wait a minute. Yeah, yes. it does indeed. Wrecked is going to be one. Wrecked and mall is a match. Richard. Does this match? Eight. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm so near. That's three in a row, Richard. Well, I was, I was so, I'm in shock over peroxide. <laughs> okay. So right now, in the middle of round two, the score is two to two, and we'll come back to you right after we do this for America. Now, second and half of round two, our final round. Nita, you need one match to win another game. Listen carefully now. Tarzan got drunk at the jungle party and stuck his blank into an alligator. <laughs> May I see your ID card? <laughs> Did you see Jaws? Oh, yes. Wasn't yes. it wonderful when he yes. ate Robert Shaw? Right. That was my favorite part. I hate Robert Shaw. <laughs> was he really ate him? I hope no. so. Tarzan got drunk at the jungle party and stuck his blank into an alligator. I, uh, Charles, if you finish. No, it's all right. He can take his nap now. He doesn't write this round. Oh, he doesn't write this round. Two people do not write. Oh, all right. Now we're all set. We'll call on Nita Britt. Tarzan got drunk at the jungle party and stuck his blank into an alligator. His foot. His foot. His foot. Okay. One foot will win the game. Avery, do you play? One yes, foot. You do. One foot. One will win foot the game. would win the game. Well, right. I don't know about that because I thought he was very drunk. You see, <laughs> he put his loincloth. Put his loincloth there. Yeah. Yeah. Put a quarter in the eye and thought it was a washing machine. Okay, we come down to Kate Jackson. Oh, I. But he put his hand. His oh. hand. <laughs> My kingdom for a foot, says Nita Braley. What do you say? He was very drunk. Very drunk. He put his banana. <laughs> <laughs> That always keeps them away. A banana Makeup. a day. Makeup, could you powder down those hands? They look so real on camera. It makes me nervous every time we get a shot of you. What? What? One foot is what Nita Braley One wants. A foot. foot into an alligator. Well, I said that Tarzan put his friend Cheetah in. <laughs> his friend Cheetah. So this game ends in a tie. What do you think of that? So that means we've got to go to a tiebreaker. And there it is. One question for each of you. We'll wipe this slate clean. And uh, the one who scores the most naturally will be the winner. Judy? A. A it is. Here we go. A tiebreaker question. Okay. Everybody plays. The 102-year-old Boy Scout said... <laughs> <laughs> is he going to make it? Who cares about starting fires? I deserve a merit badge just for starting my... Well, <laughs> I'm 102, uh -huh. but I still get ideas. Yeah. 102-year-old yeah. Boy Scout said, who cares about starting fires? I deserve a merit badge just for starting my blank. <laughs> you finished. Uh -uh. I love your old man. I think it's cute to bug's ear. Belongs to Tim Conway. Mm -hmm. Ready, Charles? Come on, Tim. All right. <laughs> He's ready at last. Judy, the 102 year old Boy Scout said, <laughs> Who cares about starting fires? I deserve a merit badge just for starting my heart. 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 She said heart. Avery, what do you say? Didn't we have heart? Heart. No. We had heart I... in another context, yeah, another question. Right. What I had was starting my day. 
starting my day. That's sweet. Uh, that's Topic sweet. Lovely. Yes, Brett. You know what I love about Avery? What? Oh, no. He's no. so consistently wrong. No, no, he's given some good answers. They just didn't match. That's well, all. That, well, that makes you wrong, right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I need you for this. Yes. You got to have hearts. That's one for Judy. Charles? And if that doesn't work, try it this way. Heart. Mm. Heart. That's two for Judy. Okay? Day. Starting my day, all right? Just so got like Avery. Two days Wrong. and two hearts. <laughs> Don't cry, Kate. You can get worse, you know. tales can come true. <laughs> <laughs> can happen to you. When? If, if you're young at heart. You bet your bippy. Oh, that's three for Judy. Okay. You can offer a song with your answer? You've got to have heart. <laughs> well, that turned out pretty good, didn't it? That's four for you, and your question, no. All right. You want to do the commercial, or you want to not do the commercial? Make up your mind. Let's toss a coin. We're going to do the commercial. Yes, we are going to do the commercial, and this is it. We are coming out on camera two. This is camera two, folks. Everybody notice this is camera two. Oh. Brett, stop coughing at the end of the show. <laughs> I'm just trying to get a little sympathy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Did you all have a dandy time yeah, today? Yeah. And you all promise to come back next yes. time. Good. And you all promise to come back next time for Match Game 75. This is Gene Rayburn. Goodbye. <laughs>
I'm employed for several libraries in Oakland, and I also commute to San Francisco, and I work for a record producer manager of a rock group out of the San Francisco area. And that's why you go to San Francisco? Well, basically, not Oh, that. all right. I don't want to ask any more about that. <laughs> Please don't. You want to go to San Francisco? That's all right with me. Okay. Now, what interesting little things do you want to tell us about yourself, Dottie? Well, I'm originally from New Jersey and now living in Ventura. I have two children, a boy, Michael, and a girl, Kimberly, and I'm very happy to be here, and I hope I get a chance to kiss Richard. Oh, really? <laughs> now, wait a minute. What have you got for me? A kiss, too. Oh, you have a kiss, too. All right. Before either one of us can kiss you, you have to win some money. All right, we'll find out if that's going to happen or not. Now, I want to remind both of you that you're going to be trying to match as many of our celebrities as you can, and the winner goes on to play the big money super match, which can pay off over $10,000. Now, we'll push this button and ask Karen to make her selection, A or B, if you please. B. B. Here we go. We're off and running. Off and running. King Kong said... Uh, hi, this is hey. <laughs> hey! Hey! Anybody got a huge toothpick? I've got a blank stuck between my teeth. That's what King Kong said. I need a huge toothpick. <laughs> I got a blank stuck. All right, I didn't see your answer, but you're finished. <laughs> you're so handsome. Archie's sweet, but you must get oh, to the business okay. at hand here now. There'll be time for that later. Darling. Come to my dressing room after the show. And as <laughs> Groucho Marx said many years ago, bring a loaf of rye bread. No, he didn't say that. Yeah, Groucho Marx said that. No, he didn't say that. Who said that? Karl Marx. Karl Marx said that. <laughs> Charles, we're waiting for you. There has to be one slow-witted one in every group, and Charles is ours there. All right, here we go. Karen, King Kong said, hey, anybody got a huge toothpick? I got a blank stuck between my teeth. Don't boo. A banana. A banana. What? <laughs> it's all right. She'll go back to San Francisco if you're not careful. Leave her alone. William, what did you say? I said, King Kong said, I've got a girl stuck between stuck. my teeth. Okay. That's good. It's not bad. He certainly mm -hmm. had wide spaces between his teeth, didn't he? Oh. It was a very small girl. Oh, I see. Brett, he what do you say? braces. Oh, he did? I said he had a arm he stuck had between arm his stuck. teeth. Oh, no. Just a minute now. Leave her alone. Go ahead. Charles. <laughs> he was in a movie. Yes. So yeah. he had a movie star stuck in his tooth. Movie star? <laughs> Fay Ray could have gotten yeah. stuck between his teeth. That's uh, All of those are logical answers now. Now, what do you say? I, I remember the movie. Now we come to the illogical. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Yeah. I saw the movie and I also saw some of the edited versions. Yes. And they, they, the fella had, uh, you know, natives stuck between his. Oh, really? And so I figured, well, why not between his teeth? Had a native between his teeth. Yes. Okay. <laughs> now, now oh, we'll come to the logical, to that answer. logical <laughs> answer from Richard. Well, thank you, Gene. <laughs> <laughs> I said person. A person. <laughs> Karen says, I've got a banana stuck between my teeth, is what King Kong said. Now, what do you say King Kong said? It ain't a banana. It ain't? <laughs> what? What is it? Well, I saw that movie. Don't, okay, don't say it. Come on now. <laughs> a you building. Leave her alone. Yeah. A building. <laughs> no, now listen, it could have been any one of those things, the airplane or any of those things flying around. Sure. That was okay. Now, Dottie, this is all yours. You ready for that? Here's Dottie's first round question. All right. Donna phoned the psychiatrist. Doctor, you remember my uncle who thinks he's a hot dog? <laughs> well, he just covered himself with mustard, and now he's sitting on my blank. <laughs> Dog or think I shall walk among dog. you with trepidation in my heart. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't touch Ever. that with a, a microphone. Now, now, don't think so hard. You're going to strain something, and then we're going to have to send you to first aid. And Could there you hum are. a few bars of Miss America? Yeah. She might remember to play. <laughs> now, we're all set, and we come to Dottie. This lady, Donna, phoned the psychiatrist. She said, Doctor, you remember my uncle who thinks he's a hot dog. Well, he just covered himself with mustard. Now he's sitting on my blank. Bed. Bed? Oh. 
don't you don't you feel warm and loved and wanted? Uh, Shut up! <laughs> okay, you tell William. Tell him, fat lady. Yes. <laughs> now he's sitting on my blank. She's his bed. Well, uh, if he's full of mustard. Yeah. And, and he he's, thinks he's a hot dog. And he thinks he's a hot dog. He's got to be sitting on her yeah. bun. <laughs> By that, of yes. course. No, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 I said very similar to Williams, uh, but in the left one, she recently had a shot, so it's bun single. Bun single. Yeah. Now, you remember my uncle who thinks he's a hot dog? Well, he just covered himself with mustard. Now he's sitting on my blank, and uh, she said, Dottie said, bed. An unlikely possibility, well, but nevertheless, it may come up. with mustard, covered. I assumed that he would be sitting on her kitchen sink. <laughs> That's right. Kitchen sink is what it says there. Uh, I'm gonna have that analyzed. <laughs> <laughs> We've only just given. <laughs> <laughs> All right, choice. I don't have to. I, I could match, couldn't I? You could match if you said bed. I didn't. I said buns. You said buns. <laughs> okay. So there's our. First round, and uh, we have no score, but we've got uh, two more questions, one for each of these ladies, and we'll see how uh, round two progresses in a moment or so. We are ready to push the button, go to round two, and uh, now let's see, since we have no score, she went first last time, why don't you go first this time, just for the heck of it, huh? I'll take B. You'll take B, that's it. You got it, Dottie. The doctor said to the patient, Madam, if you want to ring for the nurse, pull on this cord, don't yank my blank. <laughs> yes, Charles, are you having trouble? No, I'm fine. Oh, that's good. This way again. What, will you read it? Did, I, you jostle, did I jostle like you, sir? Reading. I didn't mean to jostle you. There you go. <laughs> Like an, uh, Jean Charles would like another read. The doctor said to the patient, Madam, if you want to ring for the nurse, pull on this cord, don't yank my blank. He's the first oh, one. Oh, the finished. doctor. The doctor said Oh, the that. doctor. The doctor said to the patient, Madam. All right. I have it anyway. No help from the audience, if you don't please. We appreciate blank. your enthusiasm, but you know, you may be calling out rotten answers. And we can't have that now, can we? All right. Everybody ready? Here we go. Joyce, what? Oh, Joyce. I'm learning how to spell. Spelling doesn't <laughs> count. Just put that in. Just, uh, just give us a clue. I got the eye. I know what you're trying to say there. All right. Here we go. The doctor said to the patient, Dottie, Madam, if you want to ring for the nurse, pull on this cord. Don't yank my blank. The stethoscope, is that? Stethoscope, that's a stethoscope. So she says stethoscope, what do you say? Well, I mean, the patient was obviously mad, the doctor was a psychiatrist, all psychiatrists we know, they talk like this and they have the beard. Beard, don't pull out my beard. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I did an accent, I told a story, and I That's got right. a boo. That's right. You're a mean butt. Mean group. <laughs> mean, mean yeah. group. Brett. I'm discarding this group. I'm just saying belt. And belt. Go straight off. <laughs> They're coming for us. Charles. Well, you know, usually on the nighttime show, I let it go for about, I think it's 10 or 11 minutes. And then just for a change of pace, <laughs> I come up with a match. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. One for you, Daddy. He says, man, if you want to ring for the nurse, pull on this cord, don't yank my blank. And she said, stethoscope. What do you say? Well, I was going to say zipper, but I didn't. <laughs> I'm glad you did. Stethoscope. Stethoscope. Okay. Now, Richard. I had a picture in my mind of the doctor leaning over the lady patient. Yes. And he said, 
When you want the nurse. Yes. Ring the bell. Yes. Don't yank my tie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Disgusting. <laughs> You went through all that to get a buzz. Well, what am I going to do? I had a wrong answer. <laughs> Joyce. I look embarrassed. <laughs> Show us what a wrong answer really no. looks like. Uh, this, is a, you know, this is a super answer. Not in your it ain't college. spelled right. <laughs> I asked Richard's help. I'm sorry it took so long. But Don't involve me with his spelling, <laughs> please. <laughs> Come here now. <laughs> what rotten spelling looks like. Get out of there. <laughs> yes. This is how she spells tie. That's tie. <laughs> All right. So, what do we got here? You got three, and you've got to match three to stay in the game, four to win the game. Ready? Here we go. I have a letter. Oh. It's a letter addressed to Heloise's household hymns. Oh. Dear Heloise, oh. how can I improve the appearance of my head? How? Signed, Kojak. <laughs> and she answers, Dear Baldy, blank your head. <laughs> blank your head. Now, some, one or two may come to mind immediately. <laughs> Wait a minute. What is going on here? I don't know. You have a very limp. <laughs> Listen, if you got a screwdriver, give me a screwdriver. It's really don't stand there. Get me a screwdriver. Do what I tell you to. <laughs> I'll have a Bloody Mary. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I'll fix that for you. Wait a minute. It's real. I forgot the question. <laughs> no, there's a card. Read your own card there. Wait a minute. I There's a letter to Eloise Hazard. Yeah. That's right. Doctor, will I ever play the piano again? Yeah, sure. Screw <laughs> your mm, There we go. Very nice. There it is. Now, the show's is really it still rolling, limp? Oh, yes. It's still limp. Can I think of this? Give me that card. <laughs> Put that in there. I didn't spell it right. Sign Kojak. Dear Paulie, blank your head. Very Everybody good, ready? John. Lee, would you put that in the slot? We're just stalling all this time waiting for you to get your small mind going on this enormous problem. Now, let's go. I love Fair. it when you're strict. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I need is Letter to Heloise's speak. household hints. Dear Heloise, how can I improve the appearance of my head? Sign Kojak. Dear Baldy, blank your head. Soak your head. Soak your head. Little lady, we good answer. Very good answer there. What do you say? I figured if it was a pretty girl asking the question, she'd want to see herself on the top of his head. Polish. Polish yeah. your head. That's good. Yeah, That's I like good. that. Yeah. You got a good one, too? Well, you know, in Maine, we're awful clean and neat. We yeah. believe that cleanliness is next to godliness. Do you right. know that Joyce went to private schools? She did. That's, That's why, why she I can't... kept my children in public schools. Yes. 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 I said wax and or polish. Wax and or polish. It's not getting close to soak your head. We I may have a boring answer. Paint your head. So Paint your head. Paint your head. Uh, Karen, you got to match the three bottom celebrities to stay in the game. And Lee, you are up. I'm sorry. I couldn't. Why well, you made me do it too fast? Cover your head. Cover your head. What do you have there? Thank you very much for being with us here on Match Game okay. PM. It was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. And good luck on your trips to San Francisco. Okay. <laughs> right. Goodbye, Karen Mouton. While she's spinning off, we'll give you these messages. You ready? Here we are with Dottie Styes, and it's time for the Big Money Super Match, where you can win over $10,000. Now, to do that, we have two audience matches for you, and whatever you win in these audience matches, you'll have a chance to multiply by 10. Are you ready for this? Yes. Okay. Uh, here we go with the first one. We pulled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Blank lift. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. If you match the next one, you get $250, and the bottom one gets you $100. Three celebrities are permitted to help. Whom do you call on? Richard. What do you say, Rich? Fork lift. Fork lift. That's a well-known thing in industry, right? Lee. Lee, have you got one? Face lift. Face lift. 
Look at that. All right, that's two. William. William Shatner. Oh, my gosh, I've got to think of something for lift. Yes. Uh, um, yes, uh, what's that? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ski lift. Ski lift. <laughs> you know, for years and years, I've been saying, if he's got anything, William Shatner has a quick mind. <laughs> I, said it. I, learn, I learn lines yeah, very quickly, alert, Jim. Quick, you no, know, all right. Now, you got forklift, facelift, and ski lift. You want one of those? Forklift. You do? Okay. Forklift. Did you let the audience uh, influence your selection on that? No. No, you didn't. That's your own choice. Okay. Forklift is what she is looking for, and she, of course, hopes it's under the $500 response, but we'll begin at the bottom and reveal the $100 response. Facelift. All right. Looking for forklift. Here we go with a $250 response. Ski lift. Well, you got two out of three that the celebrities gave you. Let's see if uh, forklift is under the $500 response. <laughs> forklift. You've won $500, which means the least you can be playing for is 10 times that $500 or $5,000. Now let's see how much more you can win with the second audience match, and here it is. We polled a recent audience, got their best response to this. Blank the cat. Now, Blank. Look, now I want the cat or the cats, because once it, I couldn't see over there. It's just the cat the singular. Cat. Blank the oh. cat. All right, whom do you call on? Brett. Brett. <laughs> how about Felix? How about Felix? <laughs> Charles. Charles, have you got one? I got a lousy one. Well, let's have it. Let out the Let cat. out the cat. <laughs> All right. Joyce? Joyce? Why do you do that? Take the garbage. Say put out the cat. Oh. Put out the cat? Yeah. Get, he, what did okay Charles to say? Go get from out? Let out to put out? <laughs> let out the cat. You, you want to say put out the cat? Is that yeah, your I answer? Yeah, put out is All funny. right, so you got put out the cat, let out the cat, if your grammar is rotten, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Felix the cat. You want one of those? Felix. I you want Felix. Felix. All right. She's looking for Felix the cat. Let's find out if it's up there. Is it under the $100 response? I ask you, fair and square. Morris! Oh, oh yes. I love Morris the cat. He is really one of the great actors of our time. Mm. Now, we're looking for Felix the cat. Here's a $250 response. Fritz the cat. <laughs> Last chance for you, Felix, wherever you are. Are you under the $500 response? I ask you now. Felix, you are. All right. Now, Dottie, you want another $500? We multiply that by 10, which makes another $5,000. We add that to the $5,000 you won previously. Gives you a $10,000 pot to shoot for. To collect, you got to match one celebrity head-to-head. -head. Exactly which one will it be? Richard. All right, Richard, you get set to write. Here we go. This is worth $10,000. Stick of blank. Stick of blank. Now he's finished. Dottie, we need your answer. One you think will match his. Stick of... Gum. Gum. All right. $10,000 at stake here. Richard, may we see your answer, please? I want a kiss. This little lady just won $11,000. She's very happy. You were marvelous. Join us next time for more laughs and excitement on Match Game PM. Gene Rayburn here. Goodbye. Some contestants will receive from Charm Glow, the all-new portable electric barbecue, a real barbecue flavor, self-cleaning, automatic temperature control for precise cooking from Charm Glow products, Antioch, Illinois. And a skip tote worth over $25, crammed full of fresh and lovely makeup by Maybelline. Have a ball, try them all. And the Schick Fresh Air Machine freshes any room in the house, automatically sprays every 15 minutes, a fresh gift idea for yourself or a friend. 
And a car care assortment featuring Turtle Wax, the world's largest selling car wax. Cleans, polishes, protects in one easy operation. Turtle Wax with a hard shell finish. And to keep your car running smoothly, 33-quart cans of Castrol ZTX motor oil. The motor oil of champions for all models and sizes of cars. Castrol represents for cars, motorcycles, and snowmobiles. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game PM, a Mark Goodson, Bill Chapman production. Get ready to match the stars. Bill Daly, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Kate Jackson, Richard Dawson, <laughs> and Betty White as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game PM. And now here's the star of Match Game PM. Well, let oh, the good yeah. times roll. Are you ready to let the good times roll? Honey, that, that's not uh, uh, Jimmy Walker. Oh, that's Bill Daly. Oh, Bill Daly, yes. He sometimes I gets confused, him. you know, poor little How are you, Bill? Great. I just come back from your, your hometown up there. Beautiful in the east, isn't it? Oh, wow, it's really nice. Beautiful yes. anywhere, come home. That's yeah. <laughs> I went to Maine on my vacation. Yes, I know. You didn't call, did you? Oh, well, you, I tried to, but Helen answered the phone and oh, I hung oh, right oh, up. Oh, all right. I, yeah. I called and you didn't answer. It was that's really that's embarrassing. That's and you were there. That now. Welcome, Kate. Thank you. All right, shall we say hello to Joe Bauer and Susan Holly? How are you? Oh, fine. Susan? Let's find out a little bit about Susan Holly, shall we? Okay. I live in Palos Verdes with my husband, Rich, and our daughter, Noelle, who's eight Oh, wait a minute. Old. Your husband is a wretch? <laughs> no, no. His name no, is Rich. Rich. Oh, Rich. <laughs> oh, I see. All right. Go on. And uh, we have an eight-month-old daughter, Noelle. Yes. And we love water sports and tennis and yoga. Your daughter is going to grow up with the name Noelle oh. Holly? Yes. Oh. Is she going to hate did you, you do that honey? To that sweet little girl. Was Ivy already I just... taken? <laughs> Ivy was taken, yes. Holly in the <laughs> okay, good luck to Susan. Thank now let's you. find out about Joe Bauer. Well, Gene, I'm a uh, native born California, <laughs> Californian. Uh, live in uh, Monrovia. Where, Where do you my... live now, Joe? Make up your Monrovia. mind. Monrovia. Monrovia. Right. Okay. With my wife, and uh, we what? have five grown children, yeah. one grandchild. Oh, that's nice. And uh, I like golf, pocket billiards, and uh, playing piano. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> Joe. Now, we wish you both the best of luck. I want to remind you that what you're going to be... What is pocket billiards? That's a uh, pool, you know, pool. Oh, it's uh, pocket pool? Yeah, yeah. eight ball in the side pocket and all that. Uh, each of you will be trying to match as many contestants as you can during this period. The winner will go on and play the big money super match, which can pay off over $10,000. All right, Susan, I'll ask you to make the selection. A or B, please. A. A it is. Here we go. We're off and running. Listen to this now. Betty White. Oh, she's so adorable. She is. For a woman her age. <laughs> Wait. Wait till you find out how adorable she is. She made a deal with the Godfather, and she traded Alan Ludden for a blank. <laughs> made a deal with the Godfather, traded Alan Ludden for a blank. All right. <laughs> Did you hear that, Susan? Yes. Okay. Okay. 
Two feeble and three I'm, ready. I'm, four. I'm ready. Now, Good. I know that comes as a great shot to one and all. Betty Charles is, is furrowing her brow. She's thinking carefully because she doesn't want to place Alan in jeopardy. Charles, what are you doing? Or password. Or in password. Uh, words. Uh, yes. right. Two all great right, minds think on, alike. Steve. Betty White. You may stop the music when the star is talking, please. Thank you. Betty White made a deal with the Godfather. She traded Alan Ludden for a blank. I'll say she traded Alan Ludden for a bowl of spaghetti. A bowl of spaghetti. That's what I'll say. <laughs> what you're saying, Susan, is that she has a low opinion of Alan Ludden. <laughs> Because a bowl of spaghetti is worth about 68 cents, isn't it? Well. All right, she traded Alan That's Ludden with the Godfather. That's worth more than Alan <laughs> What do you say, Bill? She said a bowl of spaghetti. I would say a bowl of linguine. No, I just thought what I got. What do you uh, got? Knowing Alan Ludden, he's a neat guy. I say she traded him for a hit. Okay, a hit man. A hit man. Okay. Traded him for a hit man. Not funny, but it's my, my first time on. So. <laughs> So no, you no, can, you're putting you it don't, so What do I do? You tear it up or you destroy it, it. it. Yeah. An answer yeah. like that. Was that? Wasn't that funny? Wait a minute. I'll hold it. No. Uh, Here's a pack of matches that say bath night. What does that mean? I don't know, but just show oh, us your card. Oh, what are we playing? Oh, We're playing. She, she traded Alan Ludden for a blank. Alan Ludden. Oh, it's so sweet. I'm just going to cry. For a brand new puppy dog. For a brand new puppy dog. And the dog Yeah. Because he was not housebroken, I take it. So I said, well, I better... <laughs> what do you say, Charles? Well, uh, Holly, uh, Miss Holly, Mrs. Holly, Merry Christmas. <laughs> uh, we were on the same wavelength, but I chose she, a pizzeria. A pizzeria. That's the whole establishment. Betty White made a deal with the Godfather. She traded Alan Ludden for a... Ta -da. I said a bundle. Like a, a bundle. bundle of money. A bundle of money. Bundle. A valuable person. Thank you, person. Kate. That's the yes. nicest one in a, in a that's right. group of bad no answers. Hostility. That's one of the nicer ones. What do you say? Shut up. <laughs> that's a... You missed the whole point of that. Who? The Godfather. Do you remember what he did? Remember The Godfather? Did you see the oh, movie? Yeah. Did oh, you yeah. The book? Cut the head off of a horse. And Remember that? The man's... Yeah. What does this lady love? Horses. Brand new puppy Animals. dogs. Right? Animals. So she traded them for a horse. For a horse. Yeah. Well, you love it. Yeah. Unfortunately, Alan Ludden's head was also then <laughs> placed in the bed of the producer. <laughs> And he was sick about it. Now, Betty, tell us the truth in this matter. I answered impulsively because yes. I, 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 too, my mind worked that way. But then I realized that the head was already gone, so I guess that's the rest of the you horse. Are the <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, got the idea, Betty. Okay, Joe, this is yours. Ready? When the psychiatrist arrived at Gloria's house, she said, Doctor, come right into the kitchen. My husband is sitting in the sink. He thinks he's a blank. He's sitting in the sink? He's sitting in the sink. He's sitting in the sink. Oh, there's so many He thinks he's a blank. She was a curse. He thinks he's a blank. That's why he's sitting in the sink. Hi, darling. Hello, darling. All of you are thinking so hard, and it's so... Uh, I know, I know I'm trying just to... Just trust your first instinct. I want instinct. to phrase it It's going to be all right. Life, you know. Okay, uh... Don't try too hard. You're sitting in the sink. Sitting in the sink. Ugh. I want to be clever, but pertinent. There's very you know. little oxygen up here, and that's why they're slower. It's, uh... There is? Yes. You got a good answer. I like a good answer. Sitting in the sink. Okay. All right. Bill got one. I think I... I think I... Oh, I got it. Oh, good gravy, Marie. I've I told you this it. was going to be an eight-minute question. Didn't I? <laughs> I've got it. I've got it. All right, I'm coming. Wait, I'm coming. It's a double <laughs> problem. It's a good one. It's just four of these. What? Oh, uh, that's nice. Uh, are you ready? Are you quite ready? I'm ready, Doctor. Thank you very much. Just went away. Stop that. Ready? Whatever you're doing down there. <laughs> Stop you crazy people. <laughs> She's been married to Alan Ludden so long, she just <laughs> grasps at everything. Joe, are you ready? <laughs> When the psychiatrist arrived at Gloria's house, she said, Doctor, come right into the kitchen. My husband is sitting in the sink. He thinks he's a blank. Bar of soap? 
Bar soap. Get right away, Joe. Not bad. Here. Not bad. All right, Bill. Well, I, uh, this is very hard because I generally bathe in the sink and uh, I sit there a lot. I spent rubber duck because a I play duck with my rubber duck. Next <laughs> Got a few boos, but a brisk yeah. round of applause there. Not bad. Not bad. I heard seven boos for that answer. Yeah, but a lot more people applauded than booed. Well, I tried to get into the sink uh, uh, motif. Yeah. What do you put in sinks? What, strainers, dishes, cups, saucers, right. all that? Uh, uh, suppers, uh, dishes. Suppers, dishes. Yes. Okay. Supper dishes. Thank Bar. you, sweetheart. <laughs> You're a mean bunch. Well, they turn on you. Listen. They really do. Charles? Continuing with a long line of crummy answers. <laughs> I chose Jane Withers. Jane Withers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thinks he's in. She said, Doctor, come right into the kitchen. My husband is sitting in the sink. He thinks he's a bar of soap, according to Joe. He thinks he's a drain. He thinks he's a drain. But he's really a drag. <laughs> uh, according to Charles. What do you say? <laughs> I have a new person here. Yes. She wears a little frilly apron. Right. And he just hops up there. He thinks he's a dish. A dish? <laughs> She's a dish. Certainly. Yes. <laughs> What do you say there? Well, on a bad night, he thinks he's a dish rag. A oh. dish rag, yeah. All washed out. So, got a real tight game going here. <laughs> but we're going to go on with the show anyway. But first, we've got to do a little business. Here we go. Round two coming up. No score so far. Now, let's see. You went first last time. Why don't you go first this time? All right, I'll take eight. You want eight? Mm -hmm. All right, Joe, this is all yours. Everybody plays, because he didn't match anybody in the first oh. round. Fred said, my wife reminds me of my old army sergeant. Every night, when I come to bed, she blinks me. <laughs> <laughs> what can you say in Tampa, say? It's up to you. No! Oh, oh, you yeah. can't say it on the air. No! Okay. Oh, can't say that on the air? No. Oh. This is, a qu this is an army question, right? Yeah, I mean, I it's a very My wife question. reminds me of my old army sergeant. Every night when I come to bed, she blinks me. I... Uh, I uh, what is it? They, I know what the word is, but I can't say Okay, it. that's a good one. Good. All right. Wait a minute. Excuse me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that be none of that. <laughs> Does she get the part in the Bob Newhart show now? Does she get the part in the Bob Newhart show yes, now? She's, yeah, she's got it. Yeah, right so that's the way I can't it is. Think of is that the way you show business what? people are? Everybody ready? Okay, here we go. I can't think of what the word is, but... Just put it in the slot and shut or, up. Or I, uh, huh? Joe, are you... I mean, uh, yeah, Joe, this is yours. Fred said, my wife reminds me of an old army sergeant. Every night when I come to bed, she blanks me. Salutes. Salutes me. That's good. Good answer. He said salute. That's a reasonable answer. I thought soldiers saluted sergeants. That's what I thought. Yeah, well, reverse. I was going for that. Every time I say my old army sergeant, didn't want to come in and salute. Well, that's all right. I mean, you should have said if he was a lieutenant. What do you say, Bill? Well, my wife really does do this, and she drills me. Okay? She drills me. Hey, what was that? That's a good answer. My, my wife is listening. I'm serious. Yes, it's a drill sergeant. <laughs> a drill sergeant. Yes. I th was thinking that he was just a run-of-the-mill soldier. Yeah. Tells you how my mind works. I said every time she, he cop, uh, she reduces his rank. <laughs> reduces his rank. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, no, boo, honey. You give it a thought, and then you'll be cheering That's and later on, and you'll hate yourself. All right. <laughs> every night when I come to bed, she salutes me. According to Joe. What according to Charles? She chews me out. Uh, I point out to you, I know you've never been in the army. That's old army talk. Excuse me, I used to ball them out. May I see yours, please? I started putting drills. Yeah, I see yours. And then I put salute. Salute! There you go, Balls me out. All right, he's looking for the answer. Salute. Well, now, sergeants are the villains, right? They're the ones that yell and They're mean and they yell. Every time she comes to bed, she gives me a workout. Oh. 
Okay. The time just flies That's away. Sorry. Okay. Well, what do you say there? And then she cusses me good night. <laughs> 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 good night. Ah, very good. Very good. So where are we? We're in the middle of round uh, two. Now, Susan, you've got to match one celebrity to achieve a tie. If you match two, you win the game. Okay. Listen carefully. Sam the organ grinder had a bad year. Oh, how bad was it, honey? His monkey died. Well, I'll tell you. First, he had to sell his organ. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. That's a lot. Then he had to blank his monkey. What? Then he had to blank his monkey. First, he had to sell his organ. Yes. Listen, as long as you finish writing so quickly, why don't we have a little chat? Is this your uh, third or fourth season with the rookies? Fourth season. Fourth season. fourth season. Yes. You look so cute in that nurse's uniform. Thank you very much. You are cute, I've decided. But, uh, stay out of my life then. <laughs> fourth season. Have you started filming already? Oh, oh yes. You're yes. well into it. Yes. <laughs> I prompt her with it. Oh, I see. But she does look beautiful in the nurse's uniform. She does look beautiful in the nurse. even better out of the nurse's <laughs> Okay. Susan, That's are you ready? Well. Sam the organ grinder had a bad year. First he had to sell his organ, then he had to blank his monkey. Well, <laughs> I'll say he had to, oh dear, um, <laughs> sell his monkey. Sell his monkey. All right. You're not too thrilled with that answer, are you, audience? Yeah. Okay, she said sell his monkey. She needs one sold monkey to tie, two to win. What do you I say, I like Bill? a buyer monkey. No, I like to keep the monkey off her back. No, I got a... I got... Is that close? Hawk would be that close? Hawk? Hawk. Monkey? How about Hawk? Hawk off her fella. Hey! Never Hawk a monkey. Never Hawk a monkey. Hawk a monkey. What do you say, Brett? Hawk a monkey. I say curtain up. Light, light the light. light. I said sell. Too bad he's yeah. What the rest of you have? What do you have? Eight. 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 Come on, let me see that. Come on down, Susan. Joe, I'm sorry we're going to have to say goodbye to you. You stand by for a moment, my dear. We uh, have enjoyed meeting you. We've got a gift for you backstage. Joe Bauer, ladies and gentlemen. Goodbye, Joe. Now, uh, while he's spinning off, he'll spin this message, then we'll come right back to you. Here we are with Susan Holly. Are you ready, Susie? I hope Good. so. Time now for the Big Money Super Match, where you can win over $10,000. Now, to do that, we have two audience matches for you. And whatever you win in these audience matches, you'll have a chance to multiply by 10. Here we go with the first one. We polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. The girl from blank. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. $250 to match the middle one, $100 if you match the bottom one. Whom do you call on for a little help here? Richard. Ipanema. The girl from Ipanema. One of yesteryear's popular songs. It was a big song of yesteryear. And Charles. Charles? <laughs> what they called Brett. The girl from... Hunger. Hunger. <laughs> you ashamed to go for the cheese? He just joke. made that up. I can't think of another one. Oh, okay. The camera's on. I'm tense. It's nighttime now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You, you got that one, the girl from Hunger. You, you want to call another celebrity or you just want to forget the whole oh, thing? Oh, no, I want to call another one. Kate. Uh, uh Petrovka. What? The movie. What? She Holy means home. that movie oh, with, with the girl from Petrovka. That means hunger in Russian. Oh, Petrovka. I see. <laughs> So you got Hunger, Petrovka, and Ipanema. Do you want one of those, or have you got a better one in your head? I think I want Richard's Girl from Ipanema. Girl from Ipanema. Okay. So that's the one we're looking for. Let's find out if it's up there, and if so, where. Shall we begin down at the bottom and reveal the $100 response? The girl from next door. That guy didn't speak good English, did he? The girl Let's see what's under the $250 response. The girl from Uncle. All right, last chance from the girl from Ipanema. Here's a $500 response. Got it, Richard. Ipanema. Yeah. 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 Now, Susie, you 
won $500. It means the least you'll be playing for is $5,000, 10 times that. Now let's see how much more you can win with a second audience what? match. Here we go, slide it, Earl. Blank Olson. The answer they gave, you know, is five, two, fifteen hundred. Whom do you call on over here? What's that I'm going to call on Richard again. Richard? Lady with the coffee, Mrs. Olson. Mrs. Olson, there's one. And I'm going to call on Brett. Gee whizzikers. All I could think. Gee whizzikers and Olson. <laughs> Johnny. Johnny Olson. Johnny Olson. Yeah. And Betty. Betty, have you got one? Jolson. Okay, A L G, uh, Roger. A L G, that's it. So you got Elge and Mrs. and Johnny. Do you want one of those? I'm gonna go with Richard again for Mrs. Olson. Mrs. Olson, that's what we're looking for. Let's find out if it's up there. May we see the one hundred dollar response? Merlin Olson, great football player. All right, he's with the Rams, of course. All right, here's a $250 response. Johnny Olson. Let's find out if Mrs. Olson is hiding under the $500. Are you there, lady? Yay! Okay. All right, Susie, you want another $500? We multiply that by 10, you got 5,000, add that to the other 5,000. You're going to shoot for $10,000 right now to collect it. You got to match one celebrity head to head. Which one will it be? I'm going to go with Richard all the way. All right, you face me. What does he say about that? <laughs> she means for the $10,000 now. Never mind what she means. Just give me the question. <laughs> Here it is $10,000 worth. Blank teeth. T E E T H. He's finished. Now, Susan, we need your answer. One you think will match his. What do you say to that? Blank teeth. I think uh, false teeth. False teeth. Okay. All right, Richard. Here it is for ten thousand dollars. She says false teeth will match you. What do you say? False. This little lady just won $11,000. Join us next time for more excitement on Match Game PM. Gene Mabern here. Goodbye. Some contestants will receive a Triumph Clock Radio. Wake to the great sound of America with Triumph's colorful bicentennial FM AM Clock Radio from Triumph, electronic division of General Time. And turn your fire... And Riley, Lana Wood, Richard Dawson, and Joyce Bulafont as we play the star studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene Raver. Yeah.
Thank you very much. You're a dandy bunch, and we uh, uh, welcome you from the bottom of our... What do you say there? <laughs> <laughs> Is everyone all right here? I'm all right. I'm a little condition? sleepy. Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to do the tango with you. You want a tango? I do. Well, I'm sorry, we've got to do the show now, but can you meet me afterwards? Where? <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> Not McDonald's there. No, Hello, Charles. Hello, how are you? You're wearing a jacket. Yes. Why is that? No underwear. Because his shirt is filthy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's say hello to Ginny McClinton and Ben Jennings That's over right. here. I know it's right. All right, Ginny. Ginny's our current champ. She's won $600. And she's being challenged now by Ben Jennings. We're going to start with round two. Neither one of them uh, matched any of our celebrities in round one. So you know what kind of a day we had yesterday there. And we'll see what kind of a day it's going to be in a minute or so right after this. Shall we begin? All right. I'll push this button and reveal our second round questions and ask Ben Jennings, the challenger, to make his selection. A B. B it is for Ben. Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Confucius say... He say, ah, never trust doctor or operate in blank. <laughs> never trust doctor who operate in blank. Ben Jennings, you look very you funny. You always told us to trust our first instinct. Trust your right? first instinct. Really? Confucius say, never trust doctor who operate in blank. You think, you understand. understand. <laughs> Don't say nothing now until I say you say. When I say you say, then you say, but not until I say you say. You ready? I'm ready. You lady? Clazy lady, you lady? <laughs> okay. Joyce is wearing her nightgown. <laughs> She'll just come over here from bed. <laughs> Confucius say, never trust doctor who operate in blank. Now you say, Ben. In the dark? Never trust doctor who operate in dark. Oh, Skinny kid give good answer. <laughs> That's right. What do you say? I say rickshaw. <laughs> <laughs> Difficult appendectomy. We're gonna send you back to the <laughs> mainland. <laughs> what do you say? That's a terrific answer, isn't it? Rickshaw, very good answer. No, no. Dark. What's his name? Oh, dark. Dark. <laughs> What's his name? Dark. What do you say, fat lady? Oh, you pick on a thin person? You call a fat lady fat? No, I only say you're a fat lady because you have a beautiful figure. I know, that's what you said the last time we were in Encino. <laughs> well, where? Uh, Mitch Carlin took out my gallbladder, you know. And he took me straight to the hotel lobby. Never trust doctor who operate in hotel lobby. Oh, that's very good. <laughs> it's Never not as good as doctor. dark, but... No, dark, very good. What do you say? I say, Confucius say, must come up with right answer once in a while <laughs> to know that lights still work on game shows. <laughs> 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 Confucius operate as Kenneth said, Bennett. Bennett. <laughs> Confucius say, my eyes are bad, but to get the point... <coughs> Uh, do not cough when he make a joke. When he make a joke. In the dark. Ooh. You sit next to Point Killer. Very interesting. <laughs> what do you, you say? Walk away. <laughs> who operate in sleep. Operate in sleep, okay. <laughs> so, boo. Boo. Don't boo her. She nice lady. Don't boo that lady. What do you say, man? I'll go ahead, boo her. Confucius say, never trust doctor who operate in brank. And Ben Jennings say, in dark. Did you say brank? I say brank. <laughs> never trust doctor who operate in brank. How was educated in your country? Yes. Doc, not correct. Darkness. Darkness. Yeah. Very good. Very good. <laughs> well, Can I sit someplace else? Speaking of operating in darkness, <laughs> now we come to a. <laughs> I'm so a Joyce Blura from from Joyce Blura from the front. From. I said because of accent. I said don't trust Batu who operate in rice fields. Oh. 
You must see doctor as soon as you possibly can. <laughs> You're very sick, Preferably lady. in darkness. <laughs> yeah. That's two for oh, you. Dear. You need two. What am I doing this for? You need two to tie for you to win. There. <laughs> At the presidential ball, John Adams made this announcement. John Adams is speaking. Okay. George Washington, George Washington, come to the blue room. We just found your blank floating in the punch bowl. <laughs> George Washington, is he over here? George, are you over there? Wherever you are, George Washington, come to the blue room. <laughs> yes, I put it right in the of slot course. there. Did I finish down there? I'm Charles, finished. We're finished here up we go. Here. Okay, now we call on Ginny McClinton. At the presidential ball, John Adams made this announcement. George Washington, now hear this. Hear ye, hear ye. Come to the blue room, George. We just found your blank floating in the punch bowl. Teeth. Your teeth floating in the punch bowl. <laughs> Avery, what are you saying to that? You saying well, that? Uh, I know it was not his real teeth, it was his false teeth. Yeah, yeah. And when I think of George Washington, I thought it was his bridge. His bridge? That's teeth, isn't That's it? That's his teeth. Right, there it is. There's one for you, Jimmy. Need one more to tie. Brent, what do you say? George Washington Bridge. Yeah, no. Oh, 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 you got it. I'm glad you're here, George. Uh, uh, you remember the one about Confucius? Remember how that one? Did you get that one yet? I got that one. Okay. Yeah. Right. I know what it is. What? Of the sugar. Yeah. <laughs> Blood pressure. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. All right, Brett, you're up. Ah, uh, she does operate in the dark. Doesn't yeah. She? Good gravy, Marie. I say every once in a while I like to get with the little kitties, you know, because a lot of them are fan mail comes from the little ones. So I said you're wooden two feet. Wooden two feet, so they got a tie score. <laughs> Charles? A little bridge work for the lady, and she wins another game. Confucius say men who have no enamel or porcelain <laughs> must regard two wooden teeth. Wooden teeth. Yeah. So that wins the game. Yeah. 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 This little nurse is making a lot of loot, huh? That's good. Ben, it was a pleasure meeting you. Are you going to stay around in California for a while? No, I'm, I'm going right back. Oh, you're going right back. Oh, no, don't oh, do that. Ben, Listen, have on. a nice trip. Sweet it was a pleasure meeting you. Hey, we got some prizes for Ben backstage. Thank you, Ben. So long. Now, while he's spinning off, we'll spin this message for you. Then you come back and see how much money she's going to win. This little old nurse has won another game. She's got $700 now. She's going to try for over $5,000. Now, tell us, where you going to UCLA nursing school? No, I just graduated She's getting from... getting her master's. Well, you're getting your master's at UCLA. No, sir. No. <laughs> All right. Now, wait a minute. I'll, uh, let me she's try and remember. She's from Alabama. No, she's three. from Alabama. She's here studying... She's a stewardess. She's, no, she's not a stewardess. <laughs> no. Straighten us out. Oh, <laughs> Are you from Alabama, I'm right? I'm from Alabama. Let's... I just graduated with a Master of Science in Nursing from the University of Alabama in Birmingham, and I was here doing a summer practicum at UCLA. A summer practicum? Mm -hmm. Really? Well, some are. <laughs> yeah, some are and some aren't. <laughs> All right. Have you finished your practicum yet? <laughs> yes, sir, I am. You finished All your practicum, practicum and then we got you, right? right. Okay. All right. <sighs> That's the most Listen, uh, Ginny, <laughs> we polled a recent studio audience who were here for their winter practicum, and uh, they got their best response to this. About blank. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. Then if you match the next one, you get $250, and if you match the bottom, you get $100. Whom do you call on? Avery. Avery. About face. About face. Up, up. Um, Brett. Did you say about face, sweetheart? He said about I face. I say about time. About time. Okay. Richard. Uh, Richard. About practicum. <laughs> <laughs> about turn. About turn. About turn. About turn. About turn. Hup, hup, hup. You want one of those? About turn, about time, about face. About face. About face. Okay. 
That's one she opens under the $500 response, but as usual, we begin at the bottom and reveal the $100 response. About town. That's what I meant when I said about town. About practicum, yes. No, about town. Oh, I see. Here we go, looking for about face and the $250 response. About time. Brett gave you that one. All right, last chance for about face, the one that Avery gave you. Here's the $500 response. You got it. Congratulations. Go kiss his mustache. Very good. Congratulations. You're up to $1,200 now, Ginny. Listen, how is it kissing him with the mustache? <laughs> well, it tickles on your cheek a little. It tickles on your cheek a little? <laughs> how is it without a mustache? Is that That's better? much better. Oh, thank you. You want to try me now? Well, let me see now. <laughs> All right, you then. promised me, Gene, you'd give that up. It does tickle, doesn't it? I swear. Hmm. Listen, what do you say we just postpone this? No. <laughs> Now listen, you won the $500, you're going to play for 10 times that amount now, or $5,000, but to collect that amount of money, you have to match one celebrity head-to-head. -head. It's time to choose one, Ginny. Richard. Okay, Richard. Now... It's because I gave her about turn. Yes. <laughs> and because you don't have a mustache. <laughs> All right, for $5,000. Blank Cutter. C-U-T-T-E-R. Blank Cutter. Or Blank Cutter. Blank cutter. Now, he's made up his mind, and we ask you to make up your mind, Jenny. What answer do you want to give us which you think will match his? Blank cutter, C-U-T-T-E-R. Meat. Meat cutter. You don't like that answer? Why are you groaning? That's not a bad answer. It's the first thing that occurred to me. I don't know. Meat cutter is not bad. We'll find out uh, right now. If she collects the $5,000, Richard, she says that will match you. I don't like a thing of it with glass. Cutter. Glass cutter is a good one. Yeah. You know, there are a number of good ones here. What, what did you have in mind? <laughs> what is that? Rug cutter, cookie cutter, grass cutter. A lot of them. All right. Huh, quiet, quiet. <laughs> Now, Ginny, you've got the 1,200, and you're going to meet another player right now. And let's welcome Dionza Brock. When it's time. Okay. Hello, Dionza. You know Ginny McClinton? How are you? Oh, uh, fine. Good. Dionza, that's a very pretty name. Thank you. you. Want to tell us a little more about yourself? Well, I'm, I've lived out here for about a year. I'm from Farmington, New Mexico, and I went to school in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I like food and people and life. Good for you. Well, we've got a lot of life here, haven't we, folks? You know your occupation, you should become a cannibal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> food, people, and life. <laughs> got it all in one. How do you like it? Well done or rare? Well, we'll start Sorry. this game in a moment or so, ladies, but right now we've got to do a little business with America, and this is it. Here we are. We were just doing a little fashion show during the commercial break there, and now we're ready to carry on here and wish both of you ladies the best of luck and ask Dionza to make her selection. B. B it is. Everybody plays, and this is it. The flight instructor said to the student pilot, Congratulations! You're the first pilot to ever fly a 747 in New York City and landed on the blank. Congratulations. You're the first pilot to ever fly a 747 in New York City and landed on the blank. I'm finished. Good. Once more. The flight instructor said to the student pilot, Congratulations. You're the first pilot to ever fly a 747 in New York City and landed on the blank. <laughs> to New York City. To New York City and landed on the... <laughs> well, why did... <laughs> Why don't we get the newsreels cameras? <laughs> oh, go back over to my place. Okay. We are all ready. I'm standing on my tape. The hook of tape on the floor here. This is my place. 
Joyce said, go to your place, and this is where I place him. <laughs> Avery. I can't do it. <laughs> Avery? I always got him shaped up. I thought you were funny. All right. We're going to shave now. your head and ruin your career. <laughs> It's the really worst answer he has ever you know, given, like and it will, everyone like will agree as soon as you see it. Quiet! <laughs> now, Dianza, the flight instructor, said to the student pilot, congratulations. You're the first pilot to ever fly a 747 in New York City and landed on the blank. The Statue of Liberty? They like that one. Did you bring a lot of friends with you? Yes. <laughs> Where are the friends of Dianza? Oh, yeah. oh, they're all Wait, over the place, aren't they? They're in the back <laughs> row and the second row and all over. Okay. And that's uh, your boyfriend there? Mm-hmm. The fellow with the... Uh, Ex-boyfriend. With the uh, blonde roots. <laughs> okay, Avery. She wait says, until you see Avery's answer. You're I can not hardly going wait. to wait. believe it. Avery, you well, have you a glazed look. plane got up in the air. How? Well, it landed on the grass. It landed on the grass? <laughs> Uh, let's hold a shot on him until and see if he swallows it. Should we hold a shot and see if he swallows it? No, let's not be that cruel. <laughs> well, then, uh, get off him. He's going to swallow it. And then we'll have to stop the Oh, come on now. Brett, show us your answer. Uh, Panda Brett, now stop that. Come on uh, over, hon. Panda Brett, move that camera over there. Do what I tell you to do. I'm the star of this show. I tell you, you move that camera. I say, you move that camera. Move that camera. Move that over camera. There. When I say, you tell when him, I say move lady. the camera, I want you to move the camera over there. You're so strong. <laughs> All right, Brett, show us your answer. He ate it. Brett. You know why I like doing this show? Why? Because I'm a very organized, rigid person. <laughs> and I like the kind of scheduling that goes right. on. Right. <laughs> the discipline. And the discipline and all that. Now, Charles is on dignity. Hello, dear. I'm on what, baby? <laughs> I said the same thing as the chick next to me. Hi, sweetheart. I said on the moon, if anyone boos, I'm going to... Isn't a bad answer if the guy was an inept pilot. That's reasonable, right, Lana? Well, I have an inept uh, answer. You do? Is, is the Eiffel Tower in the New York? The Eiffel Tower is not in New York. No. Nope. Is you missed the it. Umpire State Building? Yeah! The Umpire State Building. But it doesn't make it. Oh, it's Statue of Liberty. The flight instructor yes. said to the student pilot, Congratulations, your first pilot to ever fly a 747 New York City and landed on the Statue of Liberty, according to Dionza. What according to you, Sir Richard? <laughs> <laughs> if it says grass, I'm quitting. <laughs> well, it's for you, Avery. <laughs> Stop there! Is that your favorite flavor? <laughs> I said Empire State Building. You said Empire State Building. Oh, we were so close. <laughs> That's right. That's close. You had the right idea, Dionza, but we haven't scored a match yet. Now, what do you say, Joyce Blower the Frog? Uh -huh. <laughs> I say I'm afraid to show my answer. Now, get ready Good to boo, because this may bet. be another winner. It's another booer. All right. It's All a, together it's now. It's a mooner. <laughs> another mooner. <laughs> the audience is expressing their hot to hostilities <laughs> we will pause for this commercial message don't boo the commercial now <laughs> boy get the other audience John listen got to quit here now we'll see you next time all right and we thank you you were just splendid oh, every what you. may I remind everybody to yeah. watch you and yeah. a beautiful lady on Tattletales right after this program. It's called The Helen Rayburn Show. The Helen Rayburn Show. <laughs> Alias Tattletales. Yes. I'll be on there next week. You're going to be on there next week? Yeah, if I can find a guy to go on with. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be on there. Listen, must are, watch it. Are you auditioning? 
Well, I will. Okay. Grab me. No, 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 no. <laughs> be sure to watch Helen Rayburn. She'll be on immediately following match game 75. Gene Rayburn here. Goodbye. <laughs> This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 75. A Mark Goodson, Bill Tubman production. Stay tuned for Title Tales next over most of these CBS stations. Get ready to match the star, Dick Gautier, Brett Summer. Charles Nelson Riley, Melinda Fee, Richard Dawson, <laughs> and Betty White as we play the star studded Big Money Match Game PM. And now here's the star of Match Game PM, Gene Rivers! Thank you, Johnny Olson. How'd you do? That's it. You have come to us from near and far, and we are honored by your oh, presence. No uh, pearls. Hello, dear. What? No pearls. No pearls. No, just a basic black and a little touch of color up here. Oh, very nice. I was just saying, this uh, sweet lady, Melinda Fee, she comes to us from uh, The Invisible Man, right. right? He comes to us from where things were rotten. Yes. Right? And he plays Robin Hood. Yes. And uh, she comes to us from the Mary Tyler Moore show. Why did you skim over Charles and me? Because well, we come from hunger. <laughs> <laughs> and that leaves Richard. Where I'm from Newberry. From? You're from Newberry. Yes. All right, let's get on with it and say hello to our two players here, Michael Gazin and Sandy Anding. Hey. Hello, hello. Hello. Now we want to find out something about each of you. And we'll begin with you, Sandy. Please tell us about yourself. I am married. I've got three little boys, and I work part-time. Okay. That's it. We're happy to have you here, Sandy. Thank you. And we wish you the best of luck, and you, sir. Uh, I live in Newport Beach with my wife, Fran. She's a high school English teacher, and I'm an attorney. You're an attorney? Yes, I am. Okay, don't try any funny stuff here now. <laughs> All right? Okay. I wish you both the very best of luck. Now, I, I remind you that you're trying to match as many of our celebrities as you can, and the winner goes on to play the big money super match, which can pay off over $10,000. Sandy will ask you to make the selection here. Do you want A or B? A, please. A. I thought it blew a fuse there for a second there, but it didn't. Okay. When Betty White's husband, Alan Ludden... <laughs> oh, this is going to be a brunch. It's going to be a beauty. When Betty White's husband, Alan Ludden, answered the phone and heard heavy breathing at the other end, he turned to Betty and said, it's blank. Oh, I've got it. You've got it. Me too. I got a good one in my head, but I can't say it. Oops, I spilled your drink. Oh, no, you didn't. Oh. Take the top off. I... <laughs> now, wait. Oh, well. No show and tell till I tell no, you to. No, I won't. And now, Charles is ready. We come over here, call on Sandy Andy. Now, you watch this show, don't you? Yes. Good girl. And you know about our little regulars and semi-regulars. And, and when Betty White's husband, Alan Ludden, answered the phone and heard heavy breathing at the other end, he turned to Betty and said, It's blank. It's one of your dogs. Aww. Some of you are mildly amused by that, aren't you? And some of you think it's pretty rotten. Well, I don't know. We'll find out now whether she's going to match any of our celebrities or not. Dick, you're up first. Well, Gene, it's time to say goodbye to all of the Goodson Todman things because I said she heard, she said it was Mark Goodson. Mark Goodson. I want you to do tattletales tomorrow. <laughs> All right, Brett, you're up. Poor Dick. <laughs> I feel sorry for Barbara, don't you? That's yes. his little bride. Yeah. I said, good gravy, Marie, it's your mother. Your mother. 
Now, Charles, your turn. Just the truth. It's one of your boyfriends. One of your boyfriends, huh? She wishes. She wishes. She wishes. <laughs> Where does it say Brett has lines? That's it. Yes, that's it. <laughs> Betty White's husband, Alan, let answer the phone, heard heavy breathing at the other end. He turned to Betty and said, it's... Honey, it's not your dogs. It's your mother. Your mother. I'm Sandy's looking for the answer. It's I'm one of your dogs. What do you say, Richard? Well, he has, you know, he doesn't know what passion is. Oh, no. He he heavy breathing, he thinks you're asthmatic. <laughs> he does. <laughs> so he listened and he said, it's for you. It's for you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Betty, the honest truth. The honest truth. And for a lady who works part-time with three little boys, she works full-time. And... I should have done something dog-oriented, because, of course, that's the, I said your mother. Your mother. <laughs> that, that could be a match if you think about I, it. No, it could No, no. <laughs> no. Pull it. <laughs> All right, Michael, you're up. You're ready. ready. Uh, listen to this very carefully. Nancy, the newlywed, said, on our wedding night, my new husband gave me a real surprise. Ooh. When I went to bed, I discovered his blank underneath the covers. <laughs> Would you like to I file that? No. Nancy the newlywed. <laughs> On our wedding night, my new husband gave me a real surprise. When I went to bed, I discovered his blank underneath the covers. Gotcha. Hello, dear. Do an answer now. Do what I tell you to. <laughs> Can't you remember that? Oh, you finished. We Why finished. I finished hours ago. Okay. I'd just like to read it. All right. Okay. Everybody's ready now. Michael, we come to you. Nancy, the newlywed, said, On our wedding night, my new husband gave me a real surprise. When I went to bed, I discovered his blank underneath the covers. His mother. His mother. <laughs> He felt a little insecure, do you think? And I've heard of security blankets, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> yes. What do you say, Dick? I don't know what kind of weird freak all your trips in the urine. Yeah. Right? It's really strange, but I said... Mommy! 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 I am surrounded by weirdos! Right? At the risk of repeating myself from the hangover from the last question... I said his mother. I said his first wife. <laughs> his first wife. <laughs> All right. Now, Melinda. Well, Michael, I was going to say his mother, and then I thought that would really be kinky, so I said his pajamas. His pajamas. Oh. Now, they were his favorite pajamas. You've got to give him that there. Richard? I object. <laughs> I said that uh, under the covers was his girlfriend. <laughs> Great little dancer. That's a real surprise. It certainly there. is. Now, do you, have you made up your mind, Betty? Yeah, the it's cards two. in there, I've got a couple of old ones that would do. Your and, mother and, and Nighty Night. And... <laughs> I said his best man. His best man. Surprise! Oh, hello there. Okay, hello there. so in a round one, two for you, none for you. Round two coming up, but first, this. Pay attention, dear friends and gentlemen. Just rearranging the furniture a little bit here and ready to go on to round two. All right, now let me see. Uh, you're in the lead, so you will go first this time. You want A or B? I'll take B. B it is. Here we go. Let's see, you matched two of our celebrities last time, Dick and Brett, so the two of you lay out, and the rest of you respond to this. Tex said, they call me the lonesome cowboy. And Slim said, and you'll stay the lonesome cowboy until you change your blank. <laughs> All right, everybody ready down here? And everybody ready? A Charles up there, so... We come over here to Michael. Michael, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Tech said, 
They called me the lonesome cowboy. And Slim said, you gonna stay the lonesome cowboy until you change your pants. <laughs> No, well, I, let's see. Charles, you're up first. What did you say? I said underwear. Yeah! Miss Belinda, honey, what did you say? Well, I said, being the prim and proper lady I am, just change your clothes and wash them. Change your out. clothes. Anything else? Huh? Uh, leave her alone. They weren't booing you. No. Oh. They were boo booing the judge. They were booing the judge for not matching that, but... But you can boo in anyway. Give her a boo. Make... <laughs> She's all right. <laughs> Nothing. That's, we're sick of it. <laughs> what was the question again? Tex said they call me the lonesome cowboy. Slim said you'll stay the lonesome cowboy until you change your pants, according to Michael. Very, very good. Any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> Show and tell. Oh, don't get testy. Show and tell. I said underwear. Underwear. Miss Betty, honey. It's about as distasteful a group of questions and answers I ever heard in my life. <laughs> I couldn't bring myself to say underwear. I said undies. <laughs> okay. So there is your second round question. And now, Sandy, we've got this one for you. You've got to match two to tie, but three could win a game for you. Are you ready? Everyone plays. Jack said, I just got a cut-rate heart transplant. Instead of a regular heart, they gave me a chicken heart. That's uh, terrific. The only problem is I can't stop myself from blanking. Got it! <laughs> ready? Here we go. Sandy. Are you ready? Oh, yes. Okay. Jack said, I just got a cut-rate heart transplant. Instead of a regular heart, they gave me a chicken heart. Now, it's terrific. The only problem is I can't stop myself from blanking. Clucking. She needs two cluckings. She needs clucking? Two cluckings to tie. Three clucks will win. He's a chicken cluck. Two clucks to tie. <laughs> three clucks to win. I gave her a... Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> okay. I'd never like to let people down, and there is a choice. Was your eyes just clucking or cackling or... <laughs> At this moment, we have a tie. Charles, if you go, up, 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 she wins a game. My voice couldn't go that high. <laughs> I said laying an egg. All right, we still got a tie score here now. And you got three more celebrities to choose from. What do you say? Well, I, I didn't remember the word clucking at all. Isn't crowing like clucking? Yeah. 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 We're thinking about it. No, it is not. No. Anyway. <laughs> that's the judge. A crowing is your basic male noise. Yeah, that's right. Clucking is a well, female noise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Richard. If you're a boy. I've been going out with lizards. <laughs> Sandy, you stand by for a moment or so there. We've got to say goodbye to Michael Gazin here. It was a pleasure meeting you, sir. Thank you. We've got some gifts for you. Michael, Thank you good much. luck to you in your legal career. Thank Michael you. Gazin there. While we're spinning him off, we're going to spin these messages for you. I was just wondering where this lady lives. Where do you live now, lady? In where is that? It's, it's right by Granada Hills in Northridge. Oh. You watch the show a lot? Oh, yeah. And a girl? Listen, it's time now for the Big Money Super Match here, where you can win over $10,000. To do that, we've got two audience matches for you, and I remind you, whatever you win in these audience matches, you'll have a chance to multiply by 10. Are you ready? Okay. Okay, here we go with the first one. We pulled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Admiral blank. You got it. 
Now, the answer that audience gave most often is worth $500 if you match it. If you match that middle one, you get $250, and the bottom one gets you $100. Three of our celebrities are permitted to assist here. Whom do you call on? Brett. Admiral Bird. Bird. Good. Is that a good answer? I suppose. I don't know. Why are you looking like that? <laughs> Richard. Present. Admiral Blank. <laughs> What did you say? I'm sorry, I was I sleeping. I say, Admiral Blank. Oh, that's very good. Anything else you want to say to me? <laughs> oh, of course. When uh, Richard draws a blank, he says, oh, present. Well, oh, here. I was not drawing a blank at all. You're drawing a blank now. Well, of course. Now, right, quick, quick, quick. Give me an answer now, quick. I can give you a million of them. Sure. Halsey, Perry, I can give you all those. No, give me I'm one. I'm trying to think of a good one. Oh, I see. Admiral <laughs> Color Television. <laughs> that might be a winner. Don't think I've ever drawn a blank. I will now, just a second. <laughs> now that, uh, that is a blank. Are you kidding me? Is that your answer, Admiral Color Television? I happen to think Bird is the winning answer, so I'm now giving another choice. I see. Just a second. Oh, <laughs> now perhaps you recognize me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got one more. Hey, Charles. What do you say? The Admiral and the Lady. What? <laughs> Watch it get very popular. TV. You want to see it get popular? Go get it tomorrow. It's a filthy book. <laughs> All right. So you got the Admiral and the Lady, Admiral Color TV, and Admiral Bird. You want one of those, or have you got a better idea, I'll Sandy? Take, I'll take Bird. Okay. okay. Admiral Bird is the one she's got. One okay, that Brett gave. Sandy, but remember what I told yes. you, please. Yes. All right. Here we are looking for Admiral Bird, and let's go finding him now as we get on our boat and look down there under the $100 response. Halsey. Did I mention him? You mentioned him. Worth yes. every penny. Right. <laughs> Admiral Byrd, sir, are you under the $250 response? <laughs> All right, audience, what do you think is under Just the big a one? Second. <laughs> Admiral TV? <laughs> now, don't embarrass me. I don't want Richard to be right on this thing. Lady Admiral says. Perry, that's not Nimitz. bad. I am prepared to wager for charity, it calls. A dollar? A dollar. I'll bet you a end. buck. Let's I'll bet you a buck. I don't, I don't I care. I don't care any money on me. I'm a... no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make change for the little lady. No, you won't. Get your head out You made so, change the day you married you Ellen. <laughs> you must have killed enough time now. God. Unless you have a dollar, sir, I'm not wagering. Earl, are you in there? Right here. It's worth 50 cents to me, Earl. Earl? <laughs> If it comes out Admiral Color TV, you're in a heap of trouble. <laughs> I can stall a little if you want to change it. Hi, <laughs> Earl Sider. Go! saw in your nails and get out of here, Earl. Earl! God bless you, my boy. <laughs> okay. Sandy, you won $250, which means that the least you'll be playing for is 10 times that amount, or $2,500, okay? And now, we gotta do the next one, right? Earl, are they all changed? Okay. We polled another studio audience, and we got their best response to this. <laughs> Fool's blank. Ooh, I've got Whom do you call on here? My dear, I see it vision here. <laughs> Richard. Paradise. Fool's oh. paradise. Don't worry about that applause. Right. They and sneered when Dick. I gave them TV. Dick Godier. Fool's gold. Yeah. Fool's gold. Yeah. And Betty. Betty, oh. what do you say? I love those other oh, wait two. Wait a minute. Fools da, 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 da. No, no. no. Fools. Rush in. I know, but it's a rush in or fall in love. Fools fall in love. Fools rush in. Fools rush in. Fools paradise and fools gold are the three. Sandy, do you want one of those? All have gold. Fools gold is what you're looking for. Sandy, you All right. Fool's gold is what we want. Let's find out where it is and if it's up there at all. Is it under the $100 response? Ta -da. Fool's rush in is oh, one that Betty gave you. All right. Nice. Oh, that's I wish we got the idea, Brett. Come on. <laughs> Fool's gold, is it under the $250 response? 
Fool's Paradise. I have a duplex there. Two out of three. (laughs) Admiral TV. All right. Here it is. The $500 response. All right, now you've won $500. We multiply that by 10, which makes $5,000. We add that to the previous $2,500 you've won, which gives you a pot of $7,500 to shoot for. To collect, you've got to match one of our celebrities head to head exactly. Which one will it be? Brett. Stand right here, if you would please, Sandy, and face you me. You know, those I'll new get... pills really are working. <laughs> Brett, are you ready? Uh, you know, yes. Here it is. It's worth $7,500, and it goes like this. Blank Falls. F-A-L-L-S. Blank Falls. <sighs> She's I've breathing got... hard. <sighs> you know, I'm 39, and it's hard for me. Yes, when? <laughs> At least. <laughs> All right. Now, she's made up her mind, Sandy. We ask you to give us a response which you think will match hers. How do you fill in that the blank? Blank falls. Niagara. <laughs> $7,500. She says Niagara Falls will match you. What do you say to that? I feel so awful because you know that lady who killed her uh, mother and father, took an axe, Lizzie Borden took Lizzie an Borden axe took and an gave, axe, her mother gave her mother 40, 40 wax, wax when, when the, the job, job was neatly was done, done. She gave, gave her, her father, father 41. 41. Well, she never got married, so she never got to go to Niagara Falls. <laughs> $8,250. Join us next time. Bye! Some kisses will receive from Feathers, the Rotary... for cars, motorcycles, and snowmobiles. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game TM, a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. to match the star, Nick Gautier, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Melinda Fee, Richard Dawson, and Betty White as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 75. And now here's the star of Match Game 75, Gene Ray. I think I'm in love with you, Betty. Oh, John. Thank you, friends. Welcome. You are all welcome. Thank you. Yes, ma'am, you have a question? No. Show the audience your lining. I got a little peek at it. I didn't even look at my lining. Oh, yeah. Would you like to see my lining? 
I'm not a flash or anything like that. I never do this. <laughs> Is that the way flashers do it? Yeah. That's the way I do it. They do it like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Gears of training. Oh, <laughs> did you see that? Now, wait a minute. That or is this. Oh, All right, look at that. There's the lining. I have a woman coming twice a week and clean. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yes, uh, no, 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 okay. Well, no do lining. the best you can. Do the best you can. <laughs> She's not doing too bad. All right, shall we have a go at it now? Sure. Yeah. Let's say hello to Katie Heinz and Mike Lurie. Katie's the current champ. She's won one game. That's a total amount of cash of $200. She's an undergraduate at San Luis Obispo. Right. That's a nice name. Uh, Cal State, right? Cal Poly. Well, Cal Poly. Yeah. What do you study? Uh, journalism. Journalism. Broadcasting. And broadcasting. Right. And you want to be one of those? Right. I want to be a television broadcaster. You do? Yeah. Do the news and, and the weather and all that? Yeah. Yes. If I can. You can. Yes, you can. I know I can. Listen, okay. Katie, <laughs> no you problem. can do anything you want to do. That's right. Because you're young. You've got youth. You've got vitality. You've got everything. <laughs> and I want it. No. Now, I'm she's being busted. challenged here by <laughs> Mike Lurie, right. who's a happy yeah. fellow. He is. Most happy fellow. Yes, I am. Jim. And uh, we're in the oh. middle of round one. See, he's still smiling. He had his first round question, zip, zero. <laughs> but he's smiling. He's okay. We'll give you your first round question in a moment or so, but right now we want to give you this, especially you. <laughs> now we're ready to go on here. Here we go, middle of round one. This is all yours, Katie. Listen carefully, everybody, please. Sheila said, Sheila said, Yes? I couldn't afford to get my nose fixed, so I sent away $3 for a do-it-yourself nose job kit. <laughs> was I disappointed? All I got was a rubber nose and a blank. Rubber nose. That's right. <laughs> Sheila's Sheila. a little butch, isn't she? Sheila said, I couldn't afford to get my nose fixed, so I sent away $3 for a do-it-yourself nose job kit. Was I disappointed? All I got was a rubber nose and a... Uh, really an inspirational piece of literature here, isn't it? This one isn't easy, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> okay, Rob. <laughs> You think things were rotten then. Boy, did you see the end of the show here. <laughs> uh -huh. This lady, oh, so what? while we're cares. waiting, here's the lady for there. You see, those of you who are addicted to daytime television and never tune in at nighttime, I just want to point out that this pretty uh, gifted lady is seen on The Invisible Man at nighttime. But if you don't tune in nighttime, you wouldn't know that unless I told you. Okay? All right, Charles. Okay, ready, Katie Heinz. Right. Sheila said, I couldn't afford to get my nose fixed, so I sent away for a do-it-yourself nose job kit. Was I disappointed? All I got was a rubber nose and a blank. A tube of glue. A what? Tube of glue. A you tube know, of glue. Put the nose on. Okay. okay. She said a tube of glue, which is quite good. A tube of glue, I see, I see. She didn't say a tube, she said a tube. A tube, a, a tube, tube of glue. A tube of glue. That's Swedish, tube of glue. A tube of glue. <laughs> a lot of glue. Glue fiber, husband, saying the hunger, the frond, saying a corona friner. It's a corona clona moon, it's Hey, I got an answer here if you're interested. What? What do you got there? I said tube of glue. Tube of glue. Hey, Katie Hines, that's one for you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, one tube yeah. of glue for you. What do you say? <laughs> How long have we been doing this show? Two years? <laughs> Too long. <laughs> Almost this three years first, now. Well, this is the, probably the first bad answer I've given. Huh? <laughs> that I, I said, I, she got her a, a mustache. You know, like they send those little things and they... <laughs> it doesn't ever come off. No, they did oh, that to me once. I, that never, I couldn't Jean get it off for three days. Charles? <sighs> <laughs> a strange answer, but adorable. Well, we'll be the judge of that. A rubber nose and a rubber scissor. <laughs> That's worse than mustache. All right. Do it yourself. Nose jump. Gip was high disappointed. All I got was a rubber nose and a tube of glue. And a jar of glue. A jar of glue. <laughs> Bravo, 
bravo, bravo. Yeah. First time. First match since that's, you've been with us. That's right. We're and now let me explain how she got that match. <laughs> she copied me. <laughs> <laughs> Bottle of glue. Bottle of glue. Oh, Betty White, what do you say? I haven't had a right one yet this week. I'm still a maiden, as they say. <laughs> um, That'll be the day. Uh, <laughs> we're made in Japan. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And it's right. Right. Uh, no, a tube of glue. Let me ride from you. Uh, a uh, nose. I didn't stick to that tube of glue. I said a pair of scissors. Yes, scissors, 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 scissors. Let's hear it for Betty. Yeah. No. Oh. Leave that girl alone. Thanks. She's mine. Well, you're okay. welcome, Joe. Where are we here? Middle of round, uh, end of round one. Score is three to nothing. In favor of the champ. Go to round two. Mike, what is your selection here? A, please. A. <coughs> All right, Mike. Everybody plays because he didn't match up in the first round. One bootlegger said to the other, "Hey, this bathtub gin really was made in a bathtub. There's a blank floating in the bottle." <laughs> Well, what do you think of that? <laughs> Did I hurt? No! <laughs> All right. Very good. <laughs> Did he hurt your feelings? Mm -hmm. Poor girl. I'm still hurt, Gene. Oh, I see. Where's it hurt? <laughs> Show me where it hurts. There, hurts there. Oh, it hurts there. <laughs> hurts there. It hurts there. Now the good news. <laughs> Is everybody happy? Is everybody happy? Okay, okay. everybody ready? Yeah, okay, here we go. Mike Leary. One bootlegger. You know what bootlegger is? You're kind of young. You, you know what bootlegger is. I remember what they are. Right. Yes. That's why he's so happy. <laughs> <laughs> One bootlegger said to the other, Hey, this bathtub gin really was made in a bathtub. There's a blank floating in the bottle. A bathtub stopper. A stopper floating yes. in the bottle. Okay, Mike. He says a stopper floating in the bottle. What do you say, Dick? It's really hard to smile when 3,000 people are booing you. <laughs> um, I was going to say, Robert, no, I said a bar of soap floating yeah. by. Isn't that right? Yeah, that'll do it, Brett. Poor little devil, there he is, happy as a pig in blank, and it's just, he just battens you. I said a bar of very good French soap. A bar of very good French soap. You used up three cards for that, haven't yeah. you? Is there a paper shortage? Yeah, there is a paper oh, shortage. No, it's just that CBS, you know, oh. it's little. Um, you're going over the budget if you use three cards. Uh, what do you say, Charles? Rubber duck. A rubber duck. <laughs> now, Mike, you got to match three remaining celebrities to stay in the game. Let's see what happens here. Melinda Fee. Oh, well, I was going to say stopper, but I said a cake of soap. A cake of soap that makes Shady win the game. Soap and soap. Here we go again. All right. Mike, what can I tell you? We've got some loot for you, some gifts together. Don't start turning a thing till I say goodbye to Mike Lurie. Goodbye, Mike Lurie. I had a nice time. Thank you, Gene. Thank, Thank you, you, Mike Lurie. Oh, bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. bye, happy. Say hello to Grumpy and Duck. <laughs> and Bashful. And everybody. Now. Katie, you've got $300, and you're going to have a chance at over $5,000 here. You come back and see how much she wins right after this message. <laughs> okay, here we are. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, you've been here before. You know how it goes, so let's get right to it. We polled a recent studio audience, Katie. We got their best response to this. <laughs> Call me blank. Now, the answer they gave most often <laughs> is worth $500 if you match it. <laughs> 250 if you match the next one. $100 for the bottom one. Right. Whom do you call on? Brett. What about Call Me Madam? Ah, uh, that could be. Okay, there's one. Okay, uh, Richard. Call me irresistible. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Okay, Call Me Irresistible. Air with this. Is that it? Call Me Irresistible? The song? Sure. Was okay. that, isn't that the name of the song? No, it's Irresponsible. Call Me Irresponsible then. Oh. But call me in the morning. <laughs> call me irresponsible, okay? Betty. Up. Oh. Call me up. 
You frightened me there for a second, so... You got call me up, call me irresponsible, and call me madam. Now, you may have a better idea, Katie. It's entirely up to you now. Make a decision. How about up? Up? Call me up. Okay. Call me up. How about up? We'll find out right now. You know, one never knows on this show. Never. Call me up is the one she wants. We'll find out if it's up there, and if so, where? Is it, I ask you, in all fairness, under the $100 response? Call me sometime. Call me. Yeah. No. <laughs> call me. No, call, call me irresistible. Call me. <laughs> call me up is what we want, folks. Let's see if it's under the two hundred and fifty dollar response. There. Call me irresponsible. You laughed when I sang to you. Call All right. Me. Last call chance me, for call me up. You think it's going to be madam or up? Madam. Madam. Really? Madam. All right. Slide it, Earl. Yeah, it is. Madam, it is. Why did you trust me? I bet she's so oh, well. young, she's never heard of call. Have you never heard of Call Me Madam? Have you heard the show? You heard it was that a, song I sang. It was sang a big to Broadway musical called Katie? Call Me Madam. You never, you remember that? No. <laughs> How old are you, Katie? Nineteen. You wouldn't remember that. <laughs> when was that on Broadway? Oh, long before I was born, dear. Sure it was. <laughs> All right, Katie, I'm sorry you didn't win any money, but you got another chance because you're going to meet another player right now. Let's welcome Sedalia Jones. Okay. Sedalia, you know Katie? Well, Sedalia, we welcome you, and we ask you to tell us a little bit about you, where you're from, and all that sort of thing. I'm from Los Angeles. I'm a programmer analyst during the day. I go to school at night. I have two little boys and a husband. We've been married 12 years. Okay. And what do you study at night? Math. Math? Yes. Are well, you going to continue in the programming in the computer field? Yes, I am. It's a very interesting Good field. Girl. Good luck to you, Sedalia. We'll push the button and reveal our first round questions, ask you to make a selection. B. B. We go again. Don't get them dirty. I certainly will. <laughs> Are you warm enough, dear? I must say. You know, about a month ago, you remember the, the time somebody in the audience said, those are beautiful socks. I'd like to get a pair for my husband. And I said, I don't think you can buy these anymore. And I took my socks off and I gave them to the lady. You certainly did. And some kind lady here brought these to me. She said, I saw you give your socks away and I thought you'd need another pair, so I brought these. Right. But these have toes in them. Right. Yes. By the way, I gave my undies away last week. Yeah. <laughs> Don't want any mail, don't want any visitors to the studio with boxes of underwear, and well, none of that stuff. Yeah. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Now, listen yes, to I this. Do. Now, here, I have a little limerick for you. Sedalia, listen here. An animal lover named Blair oh. said I used to be wild about Cher. She gave me her cat, her snake, and her rat, but she won't let me play with her blank. <laughs> Once more into the breach. I'm done. I'm done. He's done. You oh. say he's so quick. <laughs> Sedalia. Used to be I wild about Cher. She gave me her cat, her snake, and her rap, but she won't let me play with her. Oh, once I saw it written down. The rhyme scheme is Blair, Cher, right. Mayor, Dan. Okay, you got it. You got it. Those two are ready. Everybody ready downstairs? So we'll come over here to Sedalia Jones. Well, there once. <laughs> <laughs> An animal lover named Blair said, I used to be wild about Cher. She gave me her cat, her snake. <laughs> what? 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 My what? fault. Just a minute. What? What was that? Be quiet. <laughs> well, you got the little orchestra, little orchestra in, in here. The little orchestra. I'm sorry. <laughs> They're rehearsing. Teenage. We're going to do Dinah right after this. Is Dinah Shore next door? Tony Orlando? What's going on? <laughs> An animal lover named Blair said, I used to be wild about Cher. She gave me her cat, her snake, and her rat, but she won't let me play with her... Hair. Hair. Yes? <laughs> I used a lot of restraint. I did not say pear. Oh, you didn't. I didn't. Uh. No. <laughs> Well, I said. <laughs> I said. You've blown the joke for him, though. <laughs> oh, I said here. Here. Oh, I said. I said. Brett, what do you say? 
Well, I didn't even think of pear. <laughs> I just well, came right out and said hair. <laughs> pear. That's people today. Charles, since she's a math major, two plus two equals hair. Okay. Great for Sedalia. Melinda V, my dear. Uh, well, I'm along with everybody else. I said hair for Cher. Okay. Hair, Cher, Blair. All the rhyme schemes are there. Now, Richard. You've got to have hair. <laughs> oh, you really, really. That was not perfect. <laughs> the only thing that I... Could have been. Uh, first of all, I'm disassociating myself with this entire company altogether. But the only thing you have to remember, it was an animal story, right? Right. You're batting around. So her hair is that kind of a hair. Hair. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Now, Sedalia, you can't do better than that, and it's most unusual for a round one question. So you just lay out while she does her first and second round questions, and uh, she'll the best she can do is tie you, and we'll see how that turns out after we see about this. Pay attention. Here we go. Shall we carry on? All right. Katie Heinz, it's all yours. At the side show, the India rubber man got engaged to the fat lady. And what happened? Instead of giving her a ring, he tied his blank around her finger. <laughs> That's the Indian rubber man? The India rubber man. They're part of circuses and carnivals, you know all that. And the fat lady is also part of the circus. See? Instead of giving her a ring, he tied his blank around her finger. You know, the India rubber men, they were very limber fellows. You got the idea. Have you got the idea? Yeah, yeah I think You've so. rejected it. Huh? <laughs> I reject all my organs. <laughs> Very good. My I would do that. I play it safe. Yes. Splendid. <laughs> okay. Charles is not quite ready. He'll be ready in a moment or so. That is not ready. Okay, now we are ready. Katie Hines at the sideshow. The India rubber man got engaged to the fat lady. Instead of giving her a ring, he tied his blank around her finger. Himself, his body. His whole body. Well, yeah, he tied himself around okay. her finger. She's fat. All right. right. He's, He's limber. How fat is she? How fat is she? What'd you say, Dick? I, what did I say? What did you say? Oh. You remember what you oh. said? I love this answer. No, I said he tied his finger around her finger. Tied his finger around her finger. That's good. That makes sense. Okay. Let's hear it for that, folks. Stretching a point. No, no. He wanted to be led around by the nose. <laughs> tied his nose around her finger. Oh. Oh. She loved it, didn't she? You like that one, Vic? I <laughs> thought it was swell. <laughs> Charles, what did you say? In Indian, we say, which means that's a crummy question. <laughs> so I have a crummy answer, Lachinya. Leg. Leg. Katie Hines said, tied his body around her finger. What do you say, Melinda, my dear? Well, out of all the parts, I chose finger. Finger. Okay. Rubber man, rubber yes. finger. Right. Okay, tied his finger around the finger. That's a good response. My second choice was tired. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Betty White. Do you want to know what my first No, thanks. <laughs> All right, now, cool it. Is there any chance of sitting someplace else in this game sometime? You know, sometime, yes, we can move you around a little bit. Strangely enough, I said Lachinia, but I didn't even Lichinia. know I spoke. Leg. You didn't hear you hey. spoke? Hindi. That is. He's speaking Hindi. Pure Hindi there. Where are we here? End of round one, six to nothing to score. You're gonna have another shot at it, but right now we want to have a shot at you and this commercial. Now I guess we're gonna have to wait until next time to see how this resolves itself. Oh. Six to nothing to score here. You got one more shot at it to achieve a tie. And we thank you, ladies, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time, as we will all of you celebrated and gifted and beautiful. Do we get to people. come back tomorrow? Yes. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> Well, we're out of sync, so I'm not quite sure when it is, but you will come back. Gene Rayburn here, Match Game 75. Join us next time. Goodbye. Come on.
Hudson, Bill Todman production.